I heard that they they released a little uh, a little white text on black background apology. <laughs> I suppose to rewind a little bit, people don't even know this is a thing, which I think is hilarious. It's like so. Well, yeah, I didn't know this game was like coming out until it essentially came out. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, <laughs> so I can't give you most, if, uh, why it has the most absurd recommended or in minimum specs I've ever seen, and it's this random fucking yeah. golem game. So uh, rewind like years, and when I found out this thing was even remotely like started up in terms of production, it was like you're gonna play as golem running around, I guess Mordor, and it was like why. Of all the Lord of the Rings games you can make, I mean, I'm not going to say that there's no potential there. Sure, there is something. Just if you wanted to make like a stealth game, you know, having Gollum be it would be appropriate. You know, there's something oh, why there. Why not play as Frodo and Sam? I guess you know. Why, why not? What's the controversy around this? Oh well, we're getting there, right? So that the, they they okay. they do that as like the they're outset. They're like we're just gonna make a Gollum game. It's like okay, and every once in a while there's been updates, and it just looks terrible. Like not not just looks terrible, but like the whole situation looks terrible. And uh, I just I keep it I've been keeping an eye on it with a friend, and we we've been going back and forth sharing things about how funny this game looks, and how it just don't, I didn't realize it was coming out so soon. I thought we had another like, a year or something. Um, <laughs> and uh, it comes out well before it comes out. The requirements came out uh for for PC, which um, Rags, you read them out a couple days ago. Do you remember what they were? Yeah, let me yeah let me grab them real quick. I think they're in this uh, chat up. <laughs> Scrolly, scrolly, uppy, uppy. Give me a second here. It's um, a miracle in terms of gaming. A lot of people have heard about it already, but we will elucidate some of the grander events that relate to it, because it's feckin' funny. Hmm. Um, I'm not even sure who right. made it. I uh, Daedalus? Is. I don't know who Daedalus is. I do not know what this company. Uh, yeah, this is like know some shitty third-party job. <laughs> Di Daedalic um, or Daedalic uh, Entertainment, GB. Daedalic. Daedalic. Yeah, I've I've never heard of them, but. Uh... All right, here I I get them for you. All right, so behold, this is insane. Let us let me draw your attention to if you want to play this game. At 1080p, frame rate of 60, at medium settings, then um, it is recommended that you have an RTX 3060. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Which is fucking nuts. There is no way that you should need a card of that oomph in order to play a game at 1080p, 60 FPS on medium setting in 2023 Something. as well because like part of this is that if you look at the game maybe it could be justified by like a huge complicated blah 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 this is a little goober running around in caves and this is this this is like with ray tracing off like with it on yeah the recommended is like an rtx 4070 it's yeah it's it's nuts it's... like i wouldn't like i have a 4090 i wouldn't touch this game i'm like <laughs> no there's just no way I'm not I'm not doing this. This is madness. And the funny part is, I think the you know you got the Cadet Run Crisis. Maybe Cadet Run Gollum will become a new. Can I run Gollum? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it got to this point, right? But so this is already a thing, and it's like whoa. The, the implication here is optimization is fucked. Like they've not done enough work to really. Uh, the, the, to say the bells and whistles aren't sorted out would be an understatement. Um. So it comes out, and uh, is it the worst reviewed game of the year so far already? That's, that's the... I think it's the worst one. I think the PS5 one is the worst, and the PC one is the second worst of the year. I think that, or it, or it might be the other way around. I can't remember. It's, it's looking bad. I saw, uh, you know, clips and different pieces of review. It's uh, it's filled with bugs, definitively incomplete, and uh, the missions. You're like Gollum. I think I don't even know if you're in Mordor. But like one of the missions I saw um, skill up trying to explain it. It's like you have to go and find eggs and then put them into like a thing and then find different materials to make the eggs grow until you finally hatch a bird and then the bird will be your helpful like, you know, 
Navi this, type thing. You know how Gollum this would never like do. The, this sounds like the the mechanics of like an Atari twenty six hundred game. Like the simplest. Why would Gollum possible. give? Why would Gollum do that? <laughs> I don't why fucking know why he do anything. Would, like, hatch birds and shit. Well, I read some of the some of the reviews and like you know like you're used to playing role playing games with complex moral decisions. So Go Gollum doesn't always need to do this. You are given moral decisions, like for example, squash the creature or let it live. They don't actually impact the plot or your character particularly because your character, as I understand it, doesn't grow or gain new skills or alignment. So it's just, yeah, do you kill animals for fun or do you not kill animals for less fun? And that is that is storytelling, apparently. My favorite one, I think for the optimization thing, I was reading one of the reviews and one reviewer was trying to get through it and it was crashing like every five seconds. They went into the settings and found a specific setting for something like Gollum hair animation. Yeah. And if you turn that off, it makes his hair look slightly less greasy, but your game will run 40% <laughs> better. <laughs> But is it worth not having the grease? Dude, don't don't well, yeah, integral yeah, to his character. I think it was definitely worth it for that just slight extra hair movement that you'll get. Like absolutely, his not so luscious locks. So uh, the game is awful, and if not the like actual running of it being the biggest problem, it's just terrible. Like in terms of if it was working fully functional with no bugs, it would be awful too, right? They've got like uh, big issues to say the least. Now, the team behind it, uh, they've followed suit with a lot of, you know, the standard sort of approach that terrible modern gaming has, where they release a giant wall of text right on cue. And uh, a lot of people noticed very quickly one of the things of this. Like, this is already bad enough news, seeing something like this, right? But if I just read the out... Lord of, the, the Lord first, of the Ring. That does, yes. Yeah, dear players, we'd like to sincerely apologize for the underwhelming experience many of you have had with the Lord of the Ring Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> I, keep, I keep adding the there by ch it's Lord of Ring. It's so bad. <laughs> How did Lord you of fuck Ring? That? <laughs> oh, I thought it was Lord of the Ring. It's I keep instinctively yeah, adding the the. It's Lord of Ring. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Lord of Ring Gollum. Do you think when they realized that was there, they were like, oh, fuck, we can't repost this? Like. <laughs> They must just they be might, like, they... we, we, are, we are digging ourselves deeper with every passing minute. <laughs> the devs decided the to, like, point. instead of retyping it all out, they just reposted the image, but they got, like, a little, a, like, a doodle line from paint, and they yeah. marked it out and added, added a little squiggly S in red or something like that. <laughs> like uh... a little, uh, a little the above with, like, a, an arrow pointing down into the, like, where, where it should go. It's so fucking probably... funny. And and it's so sad too, right? Because like everyone's just talking about how in my day games used to release complete. That was fun. It's like yeah, you still get some games that release completed, right? That Zelda game, mm -hmm. that's complete. Yeah, that uh, those those remakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Resident Evil, Dead Space, and Ragnarok, they all came out complete. Well, I mean, patches and stuff, wasn't there? Well, Usually. I can forgive patches if you've got something they didn't expect, something. Like a great game breaking bug that someone found, or like a duplicate. I think the the Zelda got a patch recently to stop people from duplicating items. You know, that's that's kind of part of the course, especially with millions of people playing a game. But um, when your game doesn't even fuck, like you're updating it so you can add a campaign, it's just like, damn, dude. Um. So yeah. You know. It's uh. God, do you remember early access? That's still going in there. That's just like. I was just yeah, thinking, that's still a thing. it's like that that quickly just became standard instead. Uh, I guess at least with the early access stuff, it's like labeled as such as like work in labeled progress. Labeled as true. Know. Didn't uh, there was another wall of text that came out for The Last of Us, right? Oh, uh, it's because um, I think there was like recently a Bloomberg report that uh, the TLDR, as I understand it, was. They'd been working on it for a while. Bungie took a look at it. They had concerns. So now the project is uh. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of in a weird place, apparently. Which is the um, um uh, the multiplayer, yeah, multiplayer, yeah, that they've been working on for a while. Um, but yeah, so who knows if that's what's what's going on there? But yes, mm -hmm. they also posted the the text thing of like, but I guess that's as different. It's like yeah, we're still working on it in another game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens on that front.
Well, you had you had a couple relatively recently that came out full of bugs and, and issues. Um, so Cyberpunk didn't right. No Man's Sky have like a huge amount of potential, and then it was just crap on launch. But both yeah. of them sort of recovered because you know, even though they were terrible on launch, you could sort of look at them and say, "Well, I see there is some potential here. It's just, if it worked, it might be okay." Whereas, I, I think, from what I've yeah. gathered from Gotham, no one so far who's played this game says I can imagine it being <laughs> no. worthwhile. Yeah, even what's if the it good version I, of this game? I think No Man's Sky is one of those. It one of those legendary redemption arcs where like they actually just like yeah. knuckled down and like went radio silent for like six months and then just released a massive patch that fixed like you know 90 percent of and the they're issues still updating it to this day and i think that game came out in 2016 but i'm pretty sure they're still actively updating yeah they went their stuff. yeah they went ham on it they just kept updating it kept adding shit kept fixing shit kept listening to the community <laughs> I mean, to be fair, they did kind of make this problem for themselves because oh, well, it's like they started promising insane stuff that they could never possibly deliver. The I'll always recommend the uh, Internet Story video on it for like getting loads of context. But you're not you're not wrong. There's there's loads of mistakes they made along the way, but they've done I think the best they can. I'm not sure what else they can do at this point. Um, which yeah. is good. Hopefully, the Gollum team will show similar resolve, the and we Gollum will get team <laughs> team Gollum. <laughs> I, well... I can't wait to play the Lord of Ring Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, Lord of Rings sounds like a I don't know the name of a gay porn movie or something or a sumo movie. Oh yeah, it's it's maybe just a like a movie. you know you get those knockoff movies like the Asylum release things like Titanic Lord of Two Ring. and stuff like yeah the Lord of Ring, Lord of Ring. <laughs> like done on a budget of like five hundred bucks. I could see it. The cheap Chinese knockoff yeah. film that's poorly translated. So I guess anyway. they got the license from. Um, to make a Lord of the Rings movie from someone, so I suppose, you know, obviously it's an officially licensed Lord of the Rings product. That's uh, something. Do you think they just got the rights to Gollum and uh, like like nothing else in the world? Oh just... yeah, that's right. That might be a thing because that's like with Rings of Power, with Amazon's money, they were only able to get the rights to like some appendices of whatever. Uh, Thirty pages, um, yeah, appendices versus. So yeah, thousands. that's why we. Look, we ain't seeing Morgoth, guys. I I don't think it's happening. All of you Morgoth fans out there, you you might not get to see him. Like old Gothers. Well, it'd be like Gollum sneaking around like or unnamed Gothers. dark like desert land. <laughs> you can't see Mordor. I think they have got Mordor. I think you travel all over Middle Earth. I get. I think they've got some location rights. I don't believe you're going through like you know the the dark land of Blordor or somewhere like. You're that. You're not going to <laughs> Bilbo's house with Ian Holm there. Oh boy, really I sure do one. love being a hobbit in the Shire at my house. I sure, I sure miss my friend Gandalf the Grey. There's lots of potential there. We'll, uh, we'll check in in five years from now, see if Gollum team have come through. Uh, who knows? I have faith. Hang anyway, there, Gollum team, don't give up. We are we, gathered we, here it's today. It's like Gollum made a game, maybe. To, Gollum uh, is the developer. Hell yeah, I can see him making some games. See what, a, see what his imagination can bring it's just us. It's like smacking fish against the keyboard, <laughs> trying to code. No, that kind of explains how we ended up with this, then. Uh, you know, not not a bad try for the first. Anyway, we, 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 uh, we're here to answer a simple question that has been plaguing the world of, um, I don't know, Star Wars for centuries, or rather, as long as Andor has been out. Um... There's lots of this. This is one of them uh, kind of controversial topics because Andor was enjoyed. We we are five Andor enjoyers right here. Um, it was enjoyed by many, several people, but it was also not enjoyed by many to the point of uh, abandoning it as they started it up or close to. And so there became a question of whether or not it is considered Star Wars because whether or not it's good. It's kind of a conversation that got moved past because everyone either says, yeah, it is good, or I don't know, I didn't think it was that great, but I didn't watch all of it. And so it kind of feels like the goods have it. But is it Star Wars? And, you know, it's a it's a fair question kind of in the same vein that gets asked in, like, uh, how many... Hey, drink it. How many Indiana Jones movies are there? Three. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> little Platoon. How many Star Wars movies are there? Seven. Yeah, I'm including Rogue One. Oh, all right. Yeah, no, see, fair enough. Yeah. I feel like chat might have different answers on all of this. I don't think oh, anyone... You know, it's it's good to ask that question to a bunch of people, because a lot of the times you, you might get... I guess if you want to get you know, super purist, you could say two and a half. 
and then maybe you could expand <laughs> that to six and then someone might throw in you know like rogue one or a lot of people might stick to six or they might say they might say six and andor some or people might me, just say I three just, they might say only the well, sequels I just count, yeah that oh yeah that's true there's people actually, out there who might say that there, as i was running through that joke in my head i actually forgot the sequel sort of existed <laughs> wow holy fuck i think i actually forgot the sequels existed for a second <laughs> Well, let me this bring is my back. job, and I forgot about it. <laughs> oh my goodness! How many uh, Jurassic Park films are there? Oh, one, There's one. Because one. <laughs> I, I would say three, and I hate two of them, but I would still acknowledge them as Jurassic Park films. Well, you know what? That okay. kind of gets us uh, into a position where we can start figuring out the the answer to that question. But instead of doing it like we 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 could do, where we have us all discuss it extensively first, we can have someone else set the stage for us. Can we not? Yeah, I suppose so. I think we have that kind of power. Yeah. Why so not? this is a this is a video called "Why Andor Isn't Real Star Wars," and um, it's made by a gentleman uh, in November of last year. And he's Actually, got a follow-up. This, um, uh... this is not my first encounter with this conversation. I do have a little bingo sheet of oh. arguments like this. Well, uh, which is oh, like, okay. Doesn't feel like Star Wars. It's Can boring. Can you post it for us? No one asked for it. I've written it down on pen and paper because I'm really old-fashioned, so yeah, I can't. What's up? No old-fashioned bingo sheet does it like that. That's not how bingo started. Bingo <laughs> requires that you do five things in a row. You can't just make a list unless they have to be five consecutive ones on the list. Oh, yeah, you have to have like a grid. A grid system. That would be easy enough to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's 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 what that's what we call bingo. Well, so you just said I have a checklist. Just say checklist. Don't say no, it's bingo. a bingo thing because you can play bingo with a checklist. If you rearrange a bingo board, you can turn it into a checklist. You can and you only put it into in the a sense of you have to get how do you know, consecutively up and down. Yeah, how do you know when you've got bingo other than the? Because you do the grid. Isn't bingo like you do the grid and then if you get well, yeah, but you get the a grid, down, but you put a list. You get That's a line a in any one but direction, right? If you right? rearrange it, it becomes bingo, and then you do like <laughs> I, if I, if he does three, that's a line of How, grid. The thing in three. is, it, th this is what I missed generally... about <laughs> It's like we started off talking about Star Wars, and now we're getting well, into a deep and meaningful conversation about is... bingo. It's generally considered against the spirit of bingo to rearrange all of the things in such a way that you can manufacture for. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I think Old Platoon cares that much. Is you Noble arrange the board before you begin? All right. I'm, I'm genuinely tempted to go and turn this into a bingo game live so I can just prove our point, but look. Our together. seven viewers who are above the age of seventy-four are going to be really <laughs> upset at your at your. <laughs> Your butchery. And she's like one guy listening right now. I was like, they better be playing that bingo properly. Done. I've been playing bingo for 47 years, and that's not how the game's played. Oh, there's a good and suggestion. And that's Agnes over there, and she's got like seven cards in her 18 stamps, and everyone fucking hates that there. bitch. But man, she's a. She makes good she's, cookies. Oh, she's very good cookies. That's why people keep inviting her. It's like, well, we might not win bingo, but. Those are some cookies. pretty good cookies. So mm, Agnes makes a mean batch of cookies. Are you guys ready for uh, whatever this may entail? I would obviously on the list. I assume it's there, a little platoon, but it'd be on mine. Would be uh, doesn't contain lightsabers. Yep, that's mm -hmm. that's definitely on the list. No Jedi. No one asked for it. <laughs> Which Main uh, character dies? We already know what happens. No force powers. Um, yeah, that's definitely gonna uh, be there. No, no Jedi, no Sith, no lightsaber, no Force, no Yoda, no Boba Fett, no <laughs> Sarlacc pit, no, um, no goofy ass little puppet, no. Um, you just like name no every Lando. single creature in Jabba's palace one by one, really no slowly. <laughs> from. Make sure, yeah, you no, got his middle name right. No ran salacious B crumb. That's it. B crumb. Oh, nice. I, it sounded right. Mm -hmm. It sounded right. That's that's what they say. Yo, salacious B crumb. And he's like, salacious B crumbing. Or actually, he says, because <laughs> that, that's just how he talks. <clears throat> it does sound that's like the him. salacious. Okay, the uh, gotta give a warning. Speak. The way this video starts is very um, 2008 ish, era wise. But this right. was made in November. Yeah, well, some oh, people... so it's like a movie Bob video, kind of. Yeah, so um, you know, like have a you time have traveler. you mouse over your volume control? That's all I'll say. 
In fact, All I'm right. gonna lower it right now ahead. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay. Ow. Woo! Someone pause it to spare us the, the incredible tunes? Why would you do that? No. Do you remember all the, the videos back in the day that would just begin with something like this and had dubstep and yeah. shit? Yeah, really yeah. loud dubstep, yeah. zero, zero, 009 yeah, sound remember. systems, YouTube I library. Remember. Ideally and make then... it up as obnoxiously long as possible <laughs> as well, like at least 30 or 40 seconds of just pure intro. Oh, well, he's then cut it down cut for us, to so. Guy in Room. Cutting Guy in Room? Come on. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, yeah! yeah. Guy right. in Room. It's it's just like, yeah, there's this bombastic, super cool kind of intro. Well, that's the thing, right? You'd be like, I don't everyone. think that really grabs the vibe of, uh, you know, the Him? video. You, you don't, why, uh, why not go for something a little more <laughs> chill instead of... What what do you with an intro like that? What would be the suitable video? And it's like a guy in fucking full decked out like robot It'll suit like in, 30... with lights shining everywhere, being like, "Hello and welcome to my thirty four year old guy in like a Twitch setup video." And he's got a whole bunch of nerd cred behind him and neon lights, and he's like, "Hey everyone, You'd what is the neon, up? Yeah. It is me, the nerd way, coming at you with another video this time." Um, it's not what It'll it's not what's up, isn't it? What what is what is going on, isn't it? So please don't say coming at you. I hate when they say that. They always say that. Coming at you. Coming at yeah, you. Right. No. Live through the power of the internet. No. <laughs> no. What? Definitely not that one. No. Not that. But hey, we got uh, Doctor Who, Spider Man, yeah. X Men. True. Um, yeah, we got the uh, you got the TARDIS. Um, Ooh, Funko Pops. Comic books. You got the comic books mm -hmm. on the wall. I would They're say not, certified um, nerd. So definitely. maybe getting some. Wait, uh, it, I trust yeah, yeah, his yeah, opinions now. Yeah. We got Star Wars. We got a Funko Pop. I, it's okay to have a couple. You know, it is okay, but because two. someone may have, have bought two. it for you, and it's like Just okay, clear, okay. I got two. I have, I think, it's one, and it's the Mister Freeze one, and someone did buy it for me. It's not my fault. I didn't, I didn't Oh, that's either. a good one to have. I have it is a good one to have. Brimstone and Palawa Joko. So we've yeah, got see? A, there's a couple that a couple that I have there. You know, you can have a couple. But once you start hitting three, mm. oh, okay. Yeah, watch, careful. watch it. Becomes a watch habit. it. As soon as you can that's make a pyramid out of them, we might have like, uh -oh. some problems. Yeah, yeah. A little while ago, I put out a video uh, talking about how Andor. Uh, was doing so poorly on Disney Plus that Why still Disney confused put it by his own free TV. There. I don't know. Um, did, Andor probably did do poorly, right? Unfortunately. Poorlier so, than yeah. they thought it would be. Poorlier. Um, well, poorlier than they needed it to be, I'd imagine. Well, do, we, do we have figures for it? No, but... Which is kind of its own. Yeah, going from the general enthusiasm of promotion yeah. of the whole show, right? It's gone from being like, Andor to being like, yeah, we'll get a season two some, sometime. Well, I, I, and oh. I guess it would be more so that I'm pretty sure it was, like, definitely not the plan that Season 2 would be the end, but Season 2 is the end. And it's like, why is that happening? Probably because mm -hmm. not enough people watched it. Not yeah. enough people. Uh, yeah, I guess well, not many people watching uh, it, which is... Uh... You know, if someone wanted to uh, uh, honest, like, do you think it's because it's bad? It's like, no, I don't think it has anything to do with it being bad. It's to do with how horribly delivered it was. It came after Kenobi, Maybe. Boba Fett, and Two Seasons of Mando. It's which, just, uh... it's to do with the rest of Star Wars being shit. Yeah. Um, that's Do we need much to state, I guess, at the beginning, our what our opinion is on Andor for anyone who doesn't know? Um, well, I think a lot of us think it's good to great. I think it's correct? really good. Yeah, I think it's really good. I think it's the best Star Wars content since, I guess, The Empire Strikes Back slash a few parts of Return of the Jedi. Um, it's like, it's really good. Um, what a fucking shame. Yes. But, um, uh, yeah, we're, we're very pro Andor, I am, at least. Well, and we've even talked about how uh, even we weren't, we didn't watch it as it came out. We had to be told to go back and watch it. I had to get recommendations from several people. because, And it's not because it, it was a shit show. It's because I just fucking burnt out on Star Wars. Burnt out on shit Star Wars, to be fair. Um, yeah. Like, I still remember us watching that first episode and we were like, oh. 
this is a thing. That yeah, doing. no, we were surprised. I remember when we, this this Mauler and, and Platoon and I covered it on Open Bar one evening. Uh, I think we'd seen, like, the, the first three episodes dropped. Get it, you got friends. And, yeah, like, pretty much every time we covered a Disney Plus Star Wars show, it was just laughing at how comically mm -hmm. inept and ridiculous it was. And in this one, it was like, wow, we were starting to pick through some interesting character arcs. There was there was interesting stuff to discuss. You know, it was, there was this weird dawning realization of, Wow, they actually they put a bit of thought into this, and there's quite a lot to work through. Yeah, you we know, were really surprised. This. Like opening scenes with several characters had a lot of characterization, and it was consequences of like an original action, which was with you know when he kills the two guys. A lot of things spring from that. It's really we cool like, huh. scene, yeah. It's just it just felt weird because we were so used to everything else. And I was even going to say like uh you know why why would you watch Mandalorian almost religiously compared to dropping off of Andor? It's like, well, that's the thing. Mando's like cringe, and we, we do enjoy a bit of cringe. We find it amusing. It's We're like, cringe connoisseurs. It engaging. Um, Andor was good, and then we just like had stuff to do and just fell off, and we we're like, oh fuck, it's just like a TV show that's waiting to be watched. And you know that combined with people who didn't want to watch any Star Wars anyway, goodbye with the people who don't care about Andor because why would you care about Andor? I understand that as well. And it's just like, yeah, the show just had fucking zero coverage almost. It's really sad. Is there rules? So that, that slight aspect of it being fundamentally closed-ended. So it's not it's not something you need to watch to understand any subsequent Star Wars thing. We already know. with It's the argument you often hear. Well, we already know how it ends. We've already seen right. Rogue One. It's yeah. not got a huge amount of open space in front of it. It doesn't mean it can't be really good in its own right, because I agree. I think I think it is. But unlike something like The Mandalorian or certainly any new Star Wars sequel film, you sort of need to watch those to understand where the universe is moving to in the longer term, whereas Andor is just kind of, well, if you're really interested, you can see it. You don't have to, though, to understand Rogue One. It's true. Um, though I'm hoping by the time we finish Season 1 and 2 of Andor, Rogue One will be better for it. We will yes. be able to watch it and be like, ooh, that's, that's better now. To get more eyes in front of it. Now, Disney was saying, you know, it wasn't because it was doing poorly. They just, you know, thought since it's the holidays, they would put it out there. So, you know, people who might not have seen it will uh, watch it and then move on to Disney Plus to finish watching it. I mean, Disney are never going to say that anything's doing poorly. Yeah, they'll never say <laughs> they're never going to go like poorly. It's it's like if if they don't say what the numbers are, the numbers weren't good. I mean, come when on. they're asked for an, a, a, an assessment of Echo when that gets dropped, I'm sure they'll say like, "Well, it actually uh, it did break several records." I'm like, wow. It overperformed expectations. We won't tell you what those are or We've what had it did. All kinds of reviews saying it's one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. So. Wow, I, like, I like the creative ways they go to do it. It's when HBO says of Velma, it was the, the most watched HBO original animated content ever released on HBO Max. It's like, qualify, qualify, yeah. qualify, mm -hmm. qualify. Yeah, the 17 asterisks that come along with the, no, it was great, it was great. You know, and what would great. you say if they if it came out and they just went, yeah, it was bad, people didn't watch it? Yeah, we're not doing that again. <laughs> we, Ooh, we could, I would, a, it would be so refreshing though to just get a studio that was super honest about all this stuff and be like, "Yeah, we we fucked up there." Like you sucks. guys didn't like that, huh? <laughs> oh, well, okay. We'll we'll write that down in our notes. No you more. Do the, the white text bad black background. We're sorry for the inconvenience we've caused. We're sorry yeah. that our work didn't live up to the expectations of the audience, etc. We had no idea you guys would fucking despise it. Oh, and someone just said, uh, chat, rip Willow. Yes, Willow has been torn off Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah. That um, is right. Did, did no you see one of the like writers 26. behind it, like, just losing his mind about it? John <laughs> yeah. Gaston. Yeah, he went to Twitter. He's like, no, 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 guys. <laughs> Season 2, this was back in March. He was like, no, 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 no guys. It, it's not cancelled. We just said the actors can go off and do their own other stuff, and we're not going to be, like, We'll team up again someday, the maybe. Year, so... And I mean, it's so bad that less than five months after the last season is we're removing it from our streaming service. No, 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 it's, it's fine. It's not canceled, though, right? I mean, there's there's hope for a season two. Well, there's this uh, one of the writers on it was a guy called John Bickerstaff. And there was an article from Forbes saying it's your last chance to see how bad the new Disney Plus Willow show is before it's gone for good. And he just That's replied the to them saying, <laughs> he replied saying, uh, hey, Forbes, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of that uh, Simpsons moment where Homer's trying to get the uh, the pig, and it's, it's like the pig being Willow in this case, and it's like getting hit by mud and water and all these different equilities. He's like, it's still good, it's still good. Yeah, you can still watch it. It's still there. Uh, 
I did find Willow highly entertaining, though. It was one of my favorite things to watch, just for the quite abominable. I don't, I don't think I've so ever. Bad. It was. Stunning. I don't think I've gritted my teeth so much in a TV show like ever. It was so insufferably annoying. Like I just find all the characters so, oh, so twenty twenty two. I, I, I just like, giggling yeah. all the way through. Couldn't believe his acting. It that was really, really shocking. <laughs> How dare he? What do you mean? <laughs> I wish I knew more no, lines because it's he's fun. A, he's a nice guy. You he's, are a Laura nice Dannon. The <laughs> you are a Laura Dannon. That has ever lived. You're the chosen one. Here to save the world. <laughs> he's, that sounds I'm like sorry. it's got too emotion in there, Rex. Right? <laughs> too much emotion. Yeah. You gotta bring it down a bit. Slightly. <laughs> you are a Laura Dannon. You're a nice guy, I'm sure, but fuck me, you cannot act. It's worth the shit. <laughs> or he can, but he knew what he was or doing. Or you can, or you, you knew what you were here for. <laughs> I don't want people to confuse this with my actual famous role, so I'm gonna make it really shit so people don't associate it. Well, he did Will say he was channeling Mark Hamill's chest. Luke Skywalker from the TLJ era, which you can kind Oof. of see in, in the complete absence of hope in his oh. performance. Absence yeah. of anything looking like a human being. He's just like, I'm just dead. It's all over. Yeah, that's, that's not why they did that. They did it because it's, it's doing poorly. <laughs> no real Star Wars fans are watching this. Oh, Whoa, cringe, no but all real right. Star Wars fans are watching this. Well, I watched it and I, I guess, you know, all things considered, I guess I would consider myself a real Star Wars fan. No, fake. Um, do you consider yourself a real Star Wars fan? <sighs> what does that mean? What do you, what are, <laughs> what are you, you can't ask me the question because I asked you the question. I am a fan of those three movies that came out ages ago. I'm a fan of the prequels. I like some of the things that Disney have done from that IP called Star Wars. Does that make me a Star Wars fan? Yes. I think I'd have to go with yes. Uh, though I hesitate because of what Star Wars is these days is a horrible mess. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not a fan of that, but that isn't all of Star Wars, right? Right? I guess. Like, yeah, I guess it depends what you mean. What do you reckon? I mean, I... Uh, you, would you consider yourself a fan uh, drinker? What about you? I would consider myself a fan of Star Wars. Am I a real fan? Mm. It's hard to say. I mean, I'm kind of in the same position as you. As, like, I like the OT. Really good. Got fond memories of that kind of enjoyed the prequels for what they were and you know felt really disillusioned by the what disney have done with it but then i, I don't have that encyclopedic knowledge of all the expanded universe stuff yeah. and you know every obscure tv show that they've put out i just don't have that so am i a am i a real star wars fan or just a casual i don't know well we watched Andor, like... so i guess we ruled out I guess so, yeah. It just seems like a pointless argument to make on his behalf. Like, if this is a, if this video is predicated on Andor's not real Star Wars, like, get into that argument. Don't start talking about, like, how successful it was with the viewers. That's that's not important. Um, I mean, I don't necessarily blame him for mentioning it. I just wish that the, uh, he would probably, he would include, I have a feeling we're going to be heading toward, like, it failed because it's not real Star Wars. We're just like, no, come on. The factors that involve the failure for this are a lot more. It would... Coming off Boba Fett and Kenobi, why would you watch any Star Wars after that? Like, I don't, I don't blame people being like, I ain't gonna fucking watch the, the Andor show after those two. I actually like Boba Fett and Obi Wan Kenobi. I don't even care about like Cassian Andor. But the thing is, That's like, right. it's all and it's backwards. not like Disney cares if real Star Wars. They don't want, a view's a view. A subscription's a subscription. They don't care if real Star Wars fans watch it or <laughs> it's just random people I, tuning in to see. I think at this point they'll just take fucking anyone. <laughs> Well, let's, let's yeah, you know, let's anybody. Real, get the real test going. How many of us are real Willow fans? And we saw Willow, so, you know. Oh, me. I, I love it. <laughs> I am great. a big Willow fan. Yeah. I love every every couple Willow. of weeks, I watch the, the original movie. Weeks? Man, <laughs> you, know? you have big gaps between it. Oh, yeah, I, gotta, I do, yeah. It's a daily drug for me. I, I have to it enjoy the a... afterglow of it before I get on to my next <laughs> fix, you know. This is a more charming time. I watch it in slow motion. <laughs> I mean, why would you watch a show about a side character no one really cared about from a meh movie? Um, oh. Because the story in and of itself can be something worth appreciating, and it can be well-written. I mean, his, argu be... his argument is, is not unreasonable, right? Because I we all felt the same way. It's like, why would any of us be interested in Andor? Well, if I you remember... Know, we know how his story's going to end, we, we, you know... 
he's not a particularly interesting character based on the movie, so there's not a huge amount to draw us into this one. Yeah, so the, the, I think when we enough, talked about it before it released, we would mention this as a reason why it's probably not going to get much engagement. It doesn't stop it from being good. It stops it from dragging people in to see it. This is the opposite of something like Boba Fett and Kenobi. Like, a whole show about Boba Fett? A whole show about Obi-Wan Kenobi between the OT and the prequels? Like, there you go, I'm hooked in. And then it was shit. It's like, oh. So I guess what this portion of the conversation is, is about hooking people in with premise. And it's like, yeah, this wasn't the greatest hook. I don't really deny that at all. Um, but it's also, it's a slightly paradoxical argument to say, well, I'm a real Star Wars fan. Why would I watch anything that doesn't have the most immediately and obviously recognizable people in it? Like, why would so, I be interested in the backstory and the world building of parts of the galaxy I haven't already seen? I'm a real fan. I only uh, want to see characters I already know. I think Disney has unfortunately sort of trained its audience in a way to expect certain things and want certain things. I think you look at like the Mandalorian and the kind of show that that yeah. is, and you're like, oh yeah, this is this is shit. And, and yeah, this is what that's... people sort of expect now. True, and you know the sequel trilogy polarizes the audience. You know, having seen icons destroyed, people become sort of reflexively defensive of icons, and they don't want any departure from. The known and the familiar it's a kind of reactionary element of the fan base which i don't particularly like or agree with but i just yeah i just don't really like being told that i'm not a real fan by somebody who has an incredibly limited idea about what star wars production scope could possibly be and that's the thing at this point i would prefer it if they said new movie coming out brand new characters different part of the universe and it's this era that's vaguely between two things that you know happen but has nothing to do with either of them you're like wow all right I'm more on board with you creating completely original stuff in this universe at this point, because you've absolutely fucking butchered almost everything that I liked about it so far. The irony is, like, this, like, Andor, for as much as uh, it, it's tonally quite different from, from everything else we've seen from Disney+, Plus, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't contain the familiar Star Wars elements that we'd look for, you know, like, all, we've, all the things that Platoon and, and Rags have listed. It's far better connected to the Star Wars universe, universe than any of the other shows that yeah, we've seen. Yeah, because enough. it actually yeah. like references things going on across the galaxy. You you actually get a real sense of like what the state of play is in this world. It's almost like it has a world that it builds. That's what none of the other shows bothered to do. Also, well, is that the hot take that not only do we believe this thing is Star Wars, that it's more Star Wars than most things Disney have made, if not all things Disney have made. It's a be I it's believe better. It's more of a real sci-fi this... world than most things. Yeah, it's better connected to the Star Wars world than anything else that they've they've created, TV wise at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. You can even you can link it to like individual little lines. There's the line in I think ah oh, is it is it a New Hope or is it Empire Strikes Back where they explain that the Imperial Starfleet can't be everywhere at once. The Empire can't be everywhere, so the Rebels strike them where they're not. And, you know, that invites the question, what does the galaxy under Imperial rule look like when the, the Empire doesn't have the resources to manage and administer and, you know, enforce law and order in that particular region of the galaxy? And Andor answers those, you know, they seem like really slight little world building questions, but actually it's packing in an awful lot of depth to something that was previously just sort of invited and you could speculate about it. The old expanded universe showed a lot of it, but that's no longer in existence thanks to Miss Kennedy. So um, Andor actually is doing probably more than any Disney Star Wars show has done to rebuild all of that stuff, and I quite like it for that. And rebuild it in a way that's actually believable as well. Mm. Like it kind of makes sense, the, the structure. You know, you've got these like low-level corporate security guys who just handle the day-to-day -day stuff and you know, it's only when things get really serious that the, the, the Empire actually shows up um, physically to deal yeah. with it. That's yeah. pretty cool, because it feels significant when the Stormtroopers show up. Oh yeah, it actually elevates them to a meaningful threat as opposed to just the goons of the Star Wars universe that they've become. But yeah, the, the private security thing was honestly one of my favorite things about it, because it's, you know, it's yeah. a very historically and psychologically astute show. There's clearly a lot of work that's been done sort of researching the, the sort of the takeover of previously peaceful countries by sort of tyrannical fascistic regimes and the kind of person who always existed there who is elevated to a position of power or, and authority tend to be these these low level sort of inconsequential little grunts who've suddenly been given 
absolute power over their local districts. And then it brings out the absolute worst megalomaniacal tendencies in them. And Andor sort of shows all of this. It's it's kind of, yeah, it's it was just really fascinating to watch multiple times, in fact, because like the more times you see that stuff, the more little bits of character that you pick out from it. Unlike Mando, where the more times you watch it, the more glaring the whole scene. <laughs> yeah, the that, first, uh, that first scene with Cyril was actually like, very uh, persuasive in terms of like this is not like anything I've seen from Disney before. Like whoa, yeah. Um, and you've got that that great sort of dichotomy between the ideological sort of convert in Cyril and the the sort of physical grunt type person who really is only in it for sadistic reasons. And that that clash in personality when Cyril comes there all sort of bright and starry eyed with no real idea of how the imposition of power actually works, and he's stuck with this sort of burly Scottish. No offense, drinker. Um, Burly <laughs> Scottish, uh, very physical man who um, who shows him sort of the the darker side of power. That's that's very effective. Well, and I love the the guy he's reporting to, who's like this. He's just been there for so long, knows how to get by without making too much noise, put things in the right place, and just everyone can keep on going and be happy. That sort of uh, it makes everything feel a lot older and uh, experienced. Mm. Convince you this is a real thing that's happening in this world. A lived-in world, you know? Yeah, it's, it's just... And if... Could that not be what Star Wars is? Could it not feel that way? But hey, we'll, uh, we'll, let, we'll let him get some more points on here. What, what else we got? But, needless to say, I got a lot of comments uh, saying how I was wrong, how it's the bestest show ever. It's the most Star Wars show ever. Really good. It's Pretty even good. more I Star mean, Warsy than yeah, it's The really Empire Strikes pretty, pretty Back. Good. I'm not saying it's more Star Wars than not, Empire Strikes Back. I'm not <laughs> saying that, but I, I mean, think you might be making a bit of a straw man here. I yeah, think there's I, some. I, I think you get some strong Empire vibes from it. I can't see many but, people uh, ever saying that. Most people who like love Star Wars love Empire. It's unlikely. Empire people Strikes Back is. It's got like 40 years worth of time to develop this. You know, this love <laughs> thing. Yeah, this love. It's it's just been marinating in classicness. For that long, it is it it made Star Wars, it just took it into an incredible direction. It, it's, I mean, I I don't even know how to say if it could ever be unseated. Maybe, but I doubt it, especially at this rate. It's it was well, very difficult to unseat something like that. But uh, anyone saying it's better than Empire? I I mean, you know, it's bold, but not impossible. That's what they it's the said. only thing they that has a chance is... at this point. Except I just I, I don't I don't hope, I need it to I don't need it to like draw that comparison like it doesn't have no. the better empire in order for me to consider it a worthwhile thing to watch. <laughs> no, absolutely, okay. that's the thing. It's clearing all of Disney as people say that's a pretty fucking low bar, and it's like, oh yeah, okay, I'll just say it's good then. That obviously clears all of Disney. It's like, oh okay, yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it easily the best thing Disney's done in terms of the Star Wars. Yeah, and also better than, this guy. Yeah. Uh, Tell us what a real fan is. You know, if you're gonna, if you're, gonna that's a strong that. statement. Yeah, no. If you're gonna make a strong statement like that, then uh, let us know what what is a real fan when it comes to Star Wars. What separates the real fans from the fakers or the 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 trenders or something like that? You know, just the just, that's the kind of thing you should let us know. It's it's important. Better than the Empire Strikes Back. Well, I was confused as to why these people would love a show so much still confused <laughs> and then i was watching another youtuber today hmm? and That's he brought step. up an article from uh game rant from back in september when the show first aired or before the show aired all right okay. and it all made sense oh okay tony gilroy doesn't understand Star Wars. Uh oh. So that's the showrunner. If anyone didn't know. Uh -huh. Let's oh, see well, where this he goes. Doesn't understand Star Wars. I, I wonder what that show looks like if he does. Uh, it'd probably be shit at this point. Well, if if, if someone Star said Wars, Favreau and really. Filoni understand Star Wars, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, because they like they do. I guess. I like, guess. Filoni and Favreau. You know, I guess they understand Star Wars a lot. Um, and look what it's produced. I mean, those shows are Star Wars through and through. You know, Mandalorian, Boba Fett, 100%. They're very Star Wars, and they're crap. They're awful. So what does it even mean to understand Star Wars? Maybe maybe Star Wars needs 
you know, fresh eyes and a new perspective and a new take. Because boy, we just can't keep we can't keep going down this route. Well, I'm I'm curious. Mean? What did he say that disqualifies him from being a Star Wars uh, understander? Yeah. Uh, sorry, pretender to the throne. What were you going to say, little Putin? Off. Uh, oh no, I was just going to say like uh, not even necessarily a fresh perspective, but somebody who has whose love for writing is at least fifty percent of their love for iconography would be a good start. That's a new perspective. Uh, that is, wow. Well, <laughs> I guess it kind of is actually. Well, Where's Boba it's Fett? An old, it's an old perspective that's being bought back as opposed to a completely brand new thing to the franchise. It was there um, three thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's um, yeah. Mm, yeah. Let's read a yeah. bit of the article ourselves, shall let's we? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. I love Leroy reading. Leroy didn't mince words when he flat out said he, that he's not a fan fan of Star Wait, Wars. Wait, no, I want, the, I want the full quote. What do you say? Well, I'm, I'm more than happy to tackle something out of context. I just want to, uh, you know, because we can imagine some stuff on top of it, but I want to know what it is. Like, because not a fan fan, yeah, no, it's like, that could mean not, a lot of things. Yeah, because what? Because the thing that this guy said was not a fan. He said not a fan fan. That that's a funny sentence. Now, well, I mean, considering our <laughs> conversation earlier, right, where I was like, oh, I'm I'm not too much of a fan well, of you know a lot of what Star Wars is now, but I'm also a fan of it. Well, so my my first read of not a fan fan. If somebody said that, would be. Yeah, like, I like it, but, like, I'm not, you know, like, it's not, like, the, my most favorite thing, like, ever in the world. Like, I'm not obsessed with it. That that would be my impression of somebody saying not, a fa like, that you're a casual enjoyer of something. Yeah. As opposed to not a fan, which kind of tells me, like, oh, so you don't, like, you're not very familiar with it at all? Or potentially that you don't even like it. And, and none of it precludes you from being able to write a really good Star Wars story. No, that's true. Like, it you know, if, you're, if you're talented it and you've got good yeah. ideas and you're also willing to do the research so that you can make sure it doesn't conflict with the world, then there's nothing to stop you being perfectly good at this. You don't have to like love it as the best thing in the world. It's okay. This may indicate that while he enjoys it well enough, it's probably not on any of his top five lists. Though he didn't elaborate on this meaning. He even went as far as to admit he consulted Wikipedia, the online encyclopedia for any and all Star Wars lore. Good. That's oh, like, good. That's kind good. of so good. Like, yeah. Okay, good. so is he expected to know like the most obscure details of Star Wars lore just off the top the of his head? The fact that he looked it up, that he looked up stuff. Like that's that's cool. Like he double checked his references. Listen, okay, I, like I'm willing to bet Ryan Johnson did not consult Wikipedia when he wrote TOJ. No, fuck that. See, because if you're if you're sitting there with the director, right, or whatever, and they're like, "Oof, I'm gonna have to check Wikipedia," and you're like, "For what?" And he's like, "Which was what was that guy's name? The one, uh, the one, the main guy from the original ones, Luke Skywalker. Uh, that's it, Lucas. It, Luke, it, yeah, Luke, Luke, Luke. You'd be yeah, like, yeah, oh, one, you yeah. have to Wikipedia that. Uh, that's that's." That's not reassuring. However, <laughs> like, if he well, says like, "What's name right?" You know? you know, what's the name of the fucking shipping containers they use, and like blah 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 blah. Like, and what 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 are we? Because I need to refer to it in this in this dialogue, but I don't know what they're called. Like something like that, I'd be like, "Yeah, that's totally fine." I would even extend this to like, you know, can you name all of the Jedi on the Jedi Council? It's like between the five of us, we could probably name some of them. We ain't I mean, naming all of them. There's Yaddle and the of fucking course, useless ones. Of course, so, there's yeah. Yaddle. Yes. Kyari Mundi, other f weird Yadi head Mundi. creatures. Um, Plu Kuhn. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Oakloon. <laughs> Oakloon. I don't know if his first name's Poo. I, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> if I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't mean to just call him. I can, Poo. I can give you Yoda and Mace Windu, and then I'm all right. <laughs> and so Anakin's yeah, if, on the um, council, but he's not the rank of master. Doesn't have the rank of master. From what I've heard, yeah, that, that's what I've heard. heard Kit Fisto, of course. Yeah. Fit Fisto, yeah. If you're still on the council, uh, I can't remember. yes. Why not? Why not? Shock T. Why not? Ooh, long um, neck what's one. What's the guy with the really long neck? Yeah, yeah. Max Rebo. Hell yeah. Max Rebo. The... That guy survived the Jedi purge. He was out getting pizzas. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, he, it, oh, yeah, and yeah, ironically, he hated being the, the guy who had to go out and get food, but it saved him. It's a robot yeah. chicken joke, I, I assume. I was about to ask about if anybody knew the deep lore, if they were just, just pretending to know the deep lore. Rags, yeah, um, you know the robot chicken meme? Oh, 
No, I don't think so. I might have seen it years ago. But... He went out and got pizza, and then he worked on the uh, on the Death Star in the uh, in the cafeteria. Oh, oh, I had no clue. <laughs> oh yeah, that's one I must not have seen, or it's just been so long. I've I've forgot. A sense of disturbance in the Force. You didn't give us any crackers. <laughs> and then he just had them, like a bag of biscuits and then walk away. Everybody Does anyone who orders pizza yeah. do they eat the crackers or is that just like a symbolic gesture? Why pizza with like people biscuits. order crackers with their pizza? What, yeah, yeah, like crackers? the like the cheap saltine sort of things that they just sort of like give you to eat. And you're just like, oh, does anyone ever actually have this? They give you those with pizza? I've, I don't yeah, know. Maybe like it's just I'm a, maybe it's like American thing. Pizza. I don't know. Some people just do. No, I've, I've never, I don't think I've ever gotten a pizza and they're like, here are some crackers with your pizza. Like, <laughs> that's some crackers with Chinese. Well, you wouldn't say that to them. Yeah. If, if, you know, but. What a, what what brand, um, what what chain are you thinking of? When you yeah, like, I, don't, I don't know. I just think like generally. Right. They're all, they're all calling you mad. Except for a couple. <laughs> I'm not saying I agree with it. No, they're questioning no, like, whether it even yeah, happened. I think it does happen sometimes. Dream, you don't right? sound very Normally, confident, Rex. <laughs> it, it can happen, yeah. but generally what you get is you get the pizza, and then it has, sometimes they have like peppers, a couple green peppers maybe in there, like on the side. Well, crackers. If you want those. And I... they have two packs, one of which is like even more fucking cheese if you want to put more on the top. Or like the little red pepper. What? See, I, I, yeah. I, I do consider yeah. myself, I consider myself a fan fan of pizza. In fact, I had pizza before I came on this stream. Oh. And I, I will I go so far as to admit that I'm currently Googling this and looking up to see <laughs> crackers and pizza. That gives you crackers and pizza. I haven't found one yet. Crackers and pizza. I just the idea of like, like a takeaway It's thing. like, oh, we got to throw in some other shit. And just <laughs> throw in some what we got. I don't know, a pack of crackers. <laughs> Fuck it, throw it in. Like what the? I, what are you talking about? <laughs> like that you get like a a box with extra cheese. Like I've never, I've never. No, no, you get like, like packets of extra, cheese. I've never like parmesan no, never, cheese, I, and that's nor yeah, like parmesan, parmesan, no, Jean, Jean what, cheese, unmelted yeah. cheese. Yes, like dust, pizza. like cheese dust uh, in yeah, packet, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you yeah, sprinkle okay, that yeah, on top of it. If your fat what? fucking face doesn't have enough cheese mm, on your pizza <laughs> already, you can I, sprinkle I, more I, parmesan what, cheese dust wait, on so your. Pizza. Help me out here. What what does that look like? You get the pizza, like you want extra cheese for that pizza. Well, generally, what they do that makes more sense because you have the. The crackers. The box. The crackers. Yeah, but... well, you have you have the pizza box with a pizza inside of it, and sort of the packets are sort of put inside the space between right. the top of the box and the bottom of the box where they meet. What, like by default, or you got to pay more for that? It's been default to my experience. I that so comes that, with okay, that's, that's, that's foreign to me. Then yeah, I've never. It is. It's made in the box, right? Incredible. With a hot pizza as well. Isn't Maybe it it's an American thing. Or, like, All right, I'll sweaty. drinker. God damn it, thing. I'll say it again. The box <laughs> has the pizza inside of it, and the design of the pizza box is such that the top of the lid fits inside the bottom part, right? So when it closes, there's a little gap between the bottom and the top, sort of where they meet. And along that, that little space, that's where they stick the packets in. <laughs> Some this is not an right. unusual thing. This is not sure, an man. enchanted sure, magical sure, thing. Sure. This is what they do. I'm not saying that I approve of it we, or that I think it's a good thing. You. I believe That's everything you said. Yep. This is back I believe that, that you believe it, Rex. This is what they do. Now Rags knows how it feels when you explain that in Australia there's a toilet and a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> now he knows how it feels. Now Except you know how it feels. Yeah. Anyway, Andor. Okay. Oh, yeah. I hit play. Man, these background noises. So you have a guy, <laughs> okay, who admits he's not a fan. Ooh, careful there! No, he said no, fan, no, fan. Not a fan, fan, fan. Nobody says he might be a fan one. He might be level one fan. Nobody says they're not a fan, fan. When all they mean to say is they're not a fan. Obviously, he means something else. Presumably, yep. the words are on the screen in front of this guy as he's speaking. How can he not remember what he just read? Uh, I would say that it might. Oh, I don't know if I want to jump the gun yet, but it's like, damn, man, feels a little uncharitable. Um, I would say so too. Like, because again, when somebody says, "I'm not a fan fan," like that tells me, oh, you like it. You're just not, but you're not like super duper. Like, this isn't like your favorite thing in the world. You're not like yeah, really, okay. really yeah, massive. Right. 
Well, uh, it means he well, doesn't know even more than the that, Star right? Wars like, lore. He doesn't maybe. know anything about Star Wars. No, it doesn't mean he doesn't know anything <laughs> about Star Wars. Also, because he looked it up in Wikipedia. If uh, he's gonna know, he knows all the stuff everyone knows, of course. Like, yeah, it, he knows the normal stuff, but, but even if doesn't. even if he fucking looked up Wikipedia to find out how to spell like Yaddle, for example, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame him. I'd be like, yeah, good, good, double check, good stuff. You know what I mean, like. Why? Why shun that's that? That's a good thing. To become, that's the first step to becoming a true a fan fan. Yeah. Is learning how to spell Yaddle's name. I think that we should not discourage any fucking showrunner from considering looking up facts about the actual IP on a fan made Wikipedia. Are you kidding me? That's like one of the that's a godsend. We need more of that. Well, let, I mean, basic research, yeah, should absolutely be encouraged because, as you know, Mahler, uh, what's his mm -hmm. face who direct Sam Raimi who directed. Uh, Doctor Strange, multiverse of madness. He didn't. Uh, he didn't watch Wandavision. He never finished Wandavision. No, Michael Waldron didn't watch Wandavision. Michael either. Waldron. Well, both yeah. of them, as far as yeah. I know, yeah. Both. Of them. Oh, but it Jesus was recent. We found Christ. out about Michael Waldron definitely not doing it right. And um, also, we've, we've been finding out more. Apparently, Elizabeth Olsen just stopped like reading rewrites of the scripts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and um, the actors from America Chavez try to defend Michael Waldron by saying the, his script was torn to pieces and reshot all of the time and stuff. It's like, and yet he's coming back for Secret Wars. So like, I don't know, man. <clears> like, if you're gonna come back and keep working for Disney, then you gotta you gotta oh, and, own and the nature of the way that that it's work not was like created, right? it's not like it was a series of incredible scenes that were out of order. The individual lines were cringe too. So what was, are you gonna tell me that they tore the words up and rearranged them like individually? Actually, I don't buy it. Mm. Doesn't know Star Wars well enough to at least you know go on his own. That he has to consult. So I'm gonna be honest with you. If I was show running an entire Star Wars TV show, I don't think I would be able to do it from memory alone. I could probably get away with it, but I wouldn't want to. I yeah, sure. I would be should reading be that Wikipedia like a fucking Bible. Hell yeah! You should be willing to double check and just make sure, like, that you've got all your stuff straight. Don't just rely on your own memory. Like, hey. I I don't know why we're shitting on somebody for like doing research. Well, we, we the people rightly shot on Ryan Johnson for not doing research. Yeah. So now again, have have one or the other, but but not both. Well, it seems the complaint is the fact that you have to even look it up is bad enough, which is b bizarre when you don't know what he was looking up. What if he was looking up like really obscure shit? Like, what is the name of this specific ship? Or, like, um, what, what, are, what are some, like, key locations in, like, this one planet that people might not have heard of before? Like, I don't know. It just seems pretty normal. Yeah. yeah. You can't devote all that to memory. And if you yeah, did, like, like, I don't know, man. The show is what? being re is, is The show, Andor, is being made by someone who doesn't like Star Wars. No, but he said nice. Whoa, you like, didn't say... You didn't say that, didn't say that and I'm sorry, but you watch Andor, you don't conclude the person who made Andor does not like Star Wars. Sounds no, like they kind of love not. it, actually. And I, and I love assume... the way that they see Star Wars, too. Mm -hmm. That the people with him in the writer's room, you know, the, the, people, you know, the people surrounding him and stuff... They probably don't like Star Wars either. That's not a real you assumption. You don't like, need to make that assumption. But, but why, yeah, why not, have we, he even said yeah, probably? Like, it's like, where have you got this from? It's just, you put, like, that's, you just, where'd that come from? Like, that's <laughs> not, that doesn't logically follow. One guy said that he's not a fan fan, which you concluded means he's not a fan and doesn't understand Star Wars. Therefore, the people who were also writing with him probably also don't know what Star Wars is. That's not like, you see, like, there's no logical connection. <laughs> like, that's like a non -sequitur. Looking for an excuse to shit on Andor, I guess? I don't know. It's getting weird. I have precedent for this. Right, a okay. Couple weeks back, mm -hmm. another producer in the Disney conglomerate, uh, Nate Moore, Marvel uh, producer, said that they don't hire writers or directors or anybody who actually enjoys the source material, who likes it, so this isn't precedent that because that's Marvel flag. and this is Lucasfilm <laughs> and they are separate even though they are both under the Disney umbrella they have different leadership. It, uh, yeah, uh, the, this is this is such a stretch. Bag. Yeah, they would is... rather hire people who don't like the source material. Yeah, oh, well, they made a mistake with Tony Gilroy then because he didn't say that, did he? 
It's, wanna hire it's people. Such who... th it's such three four. Th it's do you guys three four three? Where they're like, yeah, we we hired people who hated Halo. It's like <laughs> that's just excellent, guys. Good job. Awesome. That glad that's paying off. No, uh, <laughs> no way. I'm denying, by the way, that there are people in Disney who seem to not either either not give a shit at all about Star Wars or actively yeah, hate it's it. It's just a product to them. Yeah, I'm sure that's the case, but. I don't, I don't see why we're saying that about the people who made Andor. This feels like a reverse argument where he's like, Andor's not good, but I can't say that, so instead I'll say the people who made it hate Star Wars. I'm like, okay. You didn't draw that from the show, though. Who don't like the property. All their quotes. So they can come in and not write what the character actually should be, but they take... Uh, well, what, what does that the do with Andor be? that is filled with lots of characters who are, like, original? Yeah. What should they I'd be? Curious be? What Endor characters are well, incorrect? It's just like, what should Luthen like? Did they bring so, Did they bring him in to write him how he should not be when they made him? <laughs> like, you know is it, does Luthen need like a Mandalorian or, helmet and jetpack? Or is he specifically referring to Andor and Mon Mothma? This Mon is the Mon way. <laughs> is that, is, are those the two characters he's he's talking about that he feels were out of character in Andor? Or is this, I guess, maybe still on the Marvel point? I guess we'll find out, hopefully. The character strip everything away, and then they fill that character in with their own. Yeah, this I don't see how this bias. has anything Who? to do with Andor. With they Andor, filled in the character that... with their own agenda and biases. Please just just tell me what ones. Give me an example. Also, who doesn't? I can't think of the thing was right. The, the only two I can think of are Mon Mothma and Andor. Andor. Mon Mothma in, yeah. in you know the established cinematic canon, excluding the stuff that Disney has done away with, has about three lines of dialogue. At the end of uh, Return of the, or toward the end of Return of the Jedi, and a couple of lines of dialogue in Rogue One. That's it. There's actually not a huge amount of character to remove from Mon Mothma. She has a position. That's the role she serves in the plot. She doesn't really have a huge amount of material currently written for her mm -hmm. that forms a part of this information. So, like this show is building toward the depiction of Mon Mothma as we see her in Rogue One, and then as we will eventually see, or it will change our perspective perhaps of her as we see her in Return of the Jedi, but it's not taking anything away from the established depiction, what like I'm aware it, of. Like, it shouldn't be controversial to say Mon Mothma's greatest moments in the Star Wars canon as it stands right now is in Andor. Obviously. Hmm, easily. She's, she's one of the best she's characters pretty great. in that show. She's a really excellent character. She's definitely top tier. That's where you get what kind of forever. What? what? So, what? Kind of forever. That was a leap. <laughs> Wait, what? I got to theorize that the people surrounding Tony Gilroy and Tony Gilroy himself no, don't this like is Star not, Wars. This is just like not a logical. Just like just theorize it, I guess. Yeah, like I, yeah, but theorizing implies that there's like like a something to work with. <laughs> You've got nothing. You've got a producer for Marvel said something that was lame. And then, like, and... you just sort of applied it to a totally different production. And it's also worth keeping in mind as well, right? Like, that Andor doesn't have a lot of the uh, the same people sort of it's involved in terms of producing it. Because, like, uh, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, I don't believe that they were, like, involved, like, really at all. It's totally separate from them. Mm -hmm. and um... They're writing this with their own biases and their own agendas attached. It is such as I'm the thing about it is I'm fine with that because most humans do. It's it's how it infects the work, right? And how it makes it mm -hmm. break apart or how it strengthens it. I need to see because there were values from George nice. Lucas poured into Star Wars, right? Certainly mm -hmm. the prequels Neo T you, you can you can derive uh messaging in those films. But I think that they're done in such a way that it, it's in line with the world and the characters and stuff. And then you can get it really clunkily and bad, and it's like preachy and stupid. Just tell me where in Andor that it all fell apart. How did it all get broken by a, a writer being shit? You know. I mean, you have the, I have these arguments with people occasionally when I'm doing anything on sort of old school, old school Star Wars. You know, when you say that Star Wars is not itself political. You can read Star Wars politically, but Star Wars itself is not preaching political manifestos at you. Um, and people will say, what are you talking about? George Lucas was clearly writing a metaphor for Vietnam and the American Empire. So yes, that's, that's your read into it. That's how you read art politically. But Ronald Reagan also invoked Star Wars against the Soviet Union at the time. The communists and capitalists alike liked Star Wars and they could both read their own preferred metaphors into it. The same thing sort of holds true with Andor. Andor's a bit more tricky to 
like completely separate from the politics of the thing because it, it is overtly revolutionary. I think what it does quite well is, is it does abstract sort of the political revolutionary aspect from you know, identifiable political trends in the modern day. Again, it's, it's not doing allegory in sort of a political party political sense. Um, so it's not really cramming biases in except insofar as you think that fascistic empires are bad and should be opposed. That's the thing. I think that the allegory to be drawn from Andor are both enjoyable and uh, interesting to talk about, but fundamentally, I saw the whole show as just sort of uh, a look into fascistic systems, how they rise, maintain power, and how they fall, what it takes to mm. topple them. I found that really interesting. I found the ideals from individual characters and what their goals are and how everything... Like, so many different individuals within this entire system getting shaped to complete opposites or dying as a result of a very strict principle or someone like like two of the characters i would pick right like luthan is just one of my favorites easily someone who basically burns his own soul in order to make a difference in stopping the empire but then you have um that guy from episodes i want to say four five six who plays himself the uh sort of a heroic character who has a tragic backstory <clears throat> with his brother having died and blah 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 and it keeps him going and stuff but then we find out later that it's all a lie because he's relying on the sort of aesthetic of fighting against fascism when really he just wants money. Hmm. So what an interesting character to have in there and how, how true that would be to real life that some people are just trying to get their own shit sorted out. Um, you know, so yeah, if someone was to say like, yeah, but that's preachy, I'd be like, tell me how. I I think this, you could make that argument if, say, you you had a system of government in the Star Wars universe that was previously portrayed as like relatively stable and good and uh, and fair, like democratic, uh, and and Andor tried to flip it and and recontextualize it as like an evil empire uh, that had to be str like struggled against and uh, and overthrown. That would be preachy because it's like you're trying to completely reshape the the world in order to fit the sort of whatever political manifesto yeah, like that arguing you have. Luke your, wasn't your a hero desire to... or something and crazy yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's like, would do you know, you're trying Anne to apply this to, like, the modern view of America or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah we've, we've got to overthrow all of it. But, like, no, this is an existing empire that we knew was evil anyway from the OT. You're, you're simply given expanded detail on how this revolution against them began. That's fine. It's, it's not... Uh, if it's anything... Not, um, they're but making the empire, a li they're adding a little bit more humanity in there, with a lot of workers who are just normal people, trying to get jobs done, they, maintain they, laws. I think they, yeah, they refer to it as the banality of evil, I think. Yeah. This is seen, it's like, because it's like, even the most evil of, of um, empires and, and everything, like, it's ultimately just composed of normal people who have lives, you know, they have to do all the same things that we have to do day to day. How does that work? How does it look? You know, how do we get to see things from their point of view? It's good. It's, it's interesting stuff. Tony Gilroy's worldview disguised as a Star Wars story. What's his worldview? Just tell yeah. me, yeah, give me an example of what's right? wrong. What is it? Because his yeah, worldview makes for good Star Wars, whatever it is, I guess. I don't know. This is this, is like, it, this whole thing is based on one quote from the guy where it's like, oh, I'm not a fan fan of Star Wars. <laughs> and it's like, he's just gone off on this crazy well, like rabbit like, hole of like complete like, supposition. Five words in quotes, and then just some broader descriptions of what he was referring to. And then it's like, yeah, Andor is just Tony Gilroy's worldview masquerading as a Star Wars show. Can we please expand on that thought with some references? Well, because yeah, half the quotes from like, was the speculation. Of yeah. Example. Show, yeah. us, show us some scenes. Show us some footage. Show us. That'd be show great. Here's why it's wrong. Yeah. For any of this, that'd be nice. Here's what he did. This why this is why it's tainted by his worldview, and this is why it's wrong. It just but no, it's, it's easier for me to just sit here in front of my webcam and just give you my thoughts without anything to back them up. I think describing them as thoughts at this point would be generous. Yeah, opinions. <laughs> I guess what we've got here. So that made me think maybe. about these fans, the ones that are you know commenting. Maybe they never liked Star Wars either. Oh, don't pull that card, oh, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the people well, who like I Andor are people who don't like Star Wars. Like, uh... I don't know, man. If you were in charge, it makes me think that we wouldn't have gotten Andor, and man, that would have sucked. 
Explains why they keep saying that this is better than The Empire Strikes Back. Maybe they... I don't know who's saying it. I just don't... It's not a sentiment I've seen very often, if at all. I just don't see that. Seems to be... Yeah, People so saying it's the best pay. thing I've, since Empire I've seen, but I've... I've I, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I could absolutely see why someone would say that. I think you could put some gas into that. And... Just, yeah, this is this I is like the know. definition of straw man and right here. It's just like yeah, I've, I've perhaps seen one think it's comment to this effect somewhere, and I'm just gonna apply that that opinion to like anyone who supported this show. In his head, he's like, people out there saying it's the best thing Disney of all. It's like, well, that's kind of reasonable. Uh, best thing since the prequels, like, oh, that could be considered reasonable too. Fuck. Best thing since Return of the Jedi. Well, the Ewoks and some of the Goofies. You know. Best thing since Empire. Yeah, there you go. Now they look crazy. <laughs> Didn't like Star Wars, but when they see Andor, which apparently is nothing like Star Wars. What do you mean you apparently? apparently they, they, did you watch it? What do you mean apparently like, it's nothing like Star Wars? Is he saying, well, it, is he drawing that from the quote? I think he's, yeah, I think he's appealing to Tony Gilroy saying that he's not a fan fan of Star Wars. So, which therefore means it is apparently not Star Wars. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. What's the through line? They can like that because it's nothing like Star Wars. It all makes sense. No, it, it all really makes sense. sense. No, it really does not. Andor is written and directed by people who don't like Star Wars, for people who don't like Star Wars. I uh, and you pull this. Just uh, saying that. It's just, really logically, it's so well it's just funny, right? Because if he was here right now, I'd be like, "But I like here. Empire and Andor. Now what?" Mm -hmm. What happens well, to me? I, you, which way, Western man? I mean, like, what do you mean <laughs> now? Pick you one, gotta have both. You know? Uh, Seems like he's afraid of this as well. This to conclusion that he's reached, he's like, yeah, I nailed it there. <laughs> Based on a quote. Five, <laughs> no, five words of a quote. And What's then the thing? he said he looked up Wikipedia. I'd go back to it, but uh, there was like three pieces of quote, and two of them weren't even quote. There was speculation on what the quote meant, and then the other piece was like, he also said this before about this. It's like, it's barely anything. <laughs> You've got like barely anything from Tony oh, Gilroy. Right. It was like it was a conclusion you already drew, and then you found one reference that for some reason you thought like, that's the thing. That um, you had away with it. I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like, I guess it, it, it's not as fun if you just said I don't like Andor. If you just, if you just say that. It's like, well, I well, want yeah, it to, I want it to mean more like than that. It. I want it to go further than that. Sure. I mean, there's a part of me that wonders, does he mean he hasn't seen it with the whole apparently line? Because um, hmm. if he hasn't yeah. even seen it, right? Because if, if he hasn't seen it and he's making these very strong statements about it, then you'd be a fucking fool to do that. Well, I mean, because references is like you need you need examples of what you're talking about in the show that you can point to because oh, like well. being really vague is not helpful, especially if you're talking to people who like it, like. What specifically would you be referring to in terms of it being like you had the characters, you stripped them bare of who they were, and then you inserted the traits that you wanted to fit your like, like whatever your perspective on the world is or your agenda as a writer? Like, what do you have as a point of reference to support that? Or are you just going to throw it out there? Because again, it's just perplexing to somebody who likes it, which presumably is somebody you're trying to appeal to, right? Like people who like it. Because the people who don't like it, they already agree with you anyway, right? I, I, he must know this is incendiary. He basically just said, like, you only like it because you're not a fan of Star Wars. It's like, oh. Right, which, um, again, is really, that's really lame. Um. Listen, if you want to like Andor, that's fine. Thank you. But you're not a Star Wars fan, I'm not right? taking that away from anybody. <laughs> Please. Okay, but enjoy the show. Video, enjoy, but... and, and enjoy Andor. <laughs> Where's that big old butt? Come on, give us that butt. That butt. <laughs> give us a show us that butt. Do it. But call yourself uh, Andor. Oh, he hey, said he said but so it. fast. He went but. Oh yeah, he was. But call. It's like uh, he said he that was the that fastest butt call I've ever heard. You know? Yeah. Do you think he was thinking about that saying like nothing means anything before the word but? <laughs> so he was like well, gonna get out real quick. Yeah, like you're just thinking about but, you don't want that butt to be really strong. You gotta be like you gotta you gotta soften it, dampen it up a little bit. But call yourselves Andor fans, because <laughs> apparently you're not. Star Wars fans. So, if you like Andor, you're about, not a Star that, Wars that is, fan. That is a pretty funny sort of sentence, isn't it, when you strip away a lot of it. If you like Andor, that's okay, but don't call yourself a Star Wars fan. You ain't a Star Wars fan wow. if you like Andor. You what can't if I like, like all both. of it, though? What am I? What mm. am I? <laughs> what does that make me? 
Well, what what does he say to somebody who it's just like, yeah, I like Dan, or he's like, <laughs> really? And then just did like sort of a Star Wars trivia quiz and they got 100% right. <laughs> then what? Well... It's like, well, you know, call yourself an Andor fan. You must have gotten all of that from Andor, I guess, somehow. Like, how do you, how, do, how, how does he square away somebody who like earnestly, passionately likes um, basically everything from Star Wars, including Andor? Like, they're not They've even. They've gone they're, mad! They're even the kind of person who likes the sequel somehow, but they also oh, like yeah. Andor, you know? I think he's um, he's using the word apparently a lot, I think, to avoid it sounding like it's his perspective. He's basically even saying, like, this is just the result of the Tony Gilroy quote. Oh, so some nice weasel words then. Well, I'm, I'd be curious to ask him, like, do you believe I am not a Star Wars fan if I consider myself a fan of Andor? No, I'm just saying apparently, based it's on just the, the logic just that I created. I'm, I'm just using it's purely just, deductive problem. logic here. I, it's not up to me, really. I just look at the facts and I make my assessment, and, I mean, the cards fall where they may. It's just mm. it's it's, uh, it's a problem are. when he gets a bit trigger happy with apparently because when he's <laughs> describing like whether or not it's good or not he's like well apparently it's not a very good show you're just he's like the kid well apparently the it's not that a very good show and apparently <laughs> yeah. uh, you can't like them both as far as I know I, think, I just think it would be really funny if he hadn't even seen a single frame of it and he's just purely speculating <laughs> on all of this stuff. This is a man, I'm you know sure what, I like it. it. This man, this man's a gambler, all mm. right? This man likes to take risks, all right? This, he's a risk taker, this man right here. He's willing to, he's willing to, mm, to, just to take that risk. It's probably, you know, he throws caution to the wind. He, something gets into his head and he goes for it. He doesn't piddle around with details and facts and information. That he slows doesn't go to Wikipedia. Down. He's this this ain't a Wikipedia watcher looker. This man is balls to the wall, high octane, pedal to the metal, opinion assertion having. This is this is a proper YouTuber right here. This is the twenty first well, uh, century. We don't have the time to fuck around. Quote Kathleen Kennedy, I don't think, I just do. Oh. That's um, a great quote. I think yeah. It's also every time you pause it, it looks like his face is realizing that his mouth is speaking bullshit. He always looks Slightly surprised and perplexed and confused by what he's just said every time you he's pause. He's maybe just freewheeling, like he didn't even know what the point of this video was when he started. Well, the rolling. camera seems to be pissing him off. That's my impression. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? One thing I want to say: it's a very, it's a good camera. He has a good camera and a good mic, which is far more than I could say about a lot of people who sit. Yeah, in front you know of what? I'm going to say thank you to the guy who made this video for that. I appreciate yes, that. Thank you. A lot of people don't you pass are, that. You've managed to do with your. 781 sub channel what movie bob could not do in, in thousands of subs and years of patreon <laughs> you're gonna say decades thousands on the of internet. years <laughs> thousands of years Probably. Probably. yeah move i can believe that movie bob is some primordial force like some <laughs> warhammer chaos lord he's like the something. it clown he's he's just the yeah, negative yeah. force of Always the universe existed. Yeah. be a huge andor fan be the biggest andor fan you can be okay all right all right i'm gonna enjoy star wars all right. Oh shit! Great. Oh. Can we do, do that too? I want to ask Mark. Yes. What is? Yes. Yeah, what does he think Star Wars is? Well. I, I want to know what his starting premise is. Like normally, pro forma argument, you begin with, let's say, my my thesis is people who like Andor don't like Star Wars. You begin by saying this is what Star Wars is to my conception. This is how I believe it is constituted. This is what makes it up. This is what Andor falls short of. This is why, therefore, the people who like Andor cannot be said to be Star Wars fans. I want to know what he thinks Star Wars is supposed to be to begin with before he goes around saying that people who like Andor are not Star Wars fans. I so mean, the, the, the problem is, doing ask... all that stuff that you're talking about, Platoon, that would require, like, research and scripting <laughs> and time and effort and editing. And it's like, why do all that when you can just sit in front of your webcam for five minutes and just... And as, uh, yeah, so as we know as well, because he, he, would, he would defeat himself. If he did the research to make that argument, by his own argument, he would not be a fan. So he well, can't do you, it. You can see how this video came to be, right? He saw that quote and was like, ah, he's not even a fan of Star Wars. So no wonder people who like Andor like think it's so good when Star Wars fans don't, because Andor's not even Star Wars. It's made by I was curious uh, of just, more, just out of curiosity, like what's his like uh his upload rate? You know, is uh, is he putting out like several videos a day or is it pretty uh have a look? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I know that this seven minute, three second video took him seven minutes and Got. three seconds to make. I'm just, well, One there day... was a tiny bit of editing there, Rags, where he put in that quote. <laughs> yeah. That, that must have oh, taken yeah, a few true. minutes. Oh, yeah, that's true. 
and also that wasn't even a screenshot. He manually typed that all in. Yeah, That's some, yeah. that was that is his create that is his artistic he creation. He formatted it and he highlighted the relevant section. That's true. That's a uh, the man cares. This is There's a no real, fade transitions or anything. No, no little uh, no little so three, 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 three videos, three videos per week. High octane lifestyle. All right, okay. you know. That's you know that's a pretty you know decent that's a good upload schedule you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and couple uh, couple uh, you know one every couple of days you know on the seventh day he rests and, <laughs> but hey let the yeah. uh, let let other people comment let let, let real Star Wars Star Wars fans comment mm. and let me know well, what let you guys real think. Star Wars fans comment okay so uh, like, do you real Star Wars if you, <laughs> if you like the... crew and you disagree with me don't comment on my video <laughs> yeah. if you agree with me. <laughs> What's interesting is that there is a um, there's a comment here that he has loved that says Star Wars ended after Return of the Jedi. Anything made afterwards constitutes leeching off of the original six movies. Mm, careful with that. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, you caught it. You caught it. Let's My... check our let's check our thinking on this one, gentlemen. Wait I don't know second. what that means. I don't know what that means. But wait, wait uh, maybe maybe there was three other movies that were made before the Lucas before the, the Lucas Vault. We just don't the know Lucas about Film it. Vaults. Only real Star Wars fans know about those other three movies. Only okay. the OT is good. All oh. six of them. <laughs> First fans think I'm off the mark. Or are you guys? Or or, or uh, are you with them? Are you with them? Know in the comments. Are you with, with them? them? <laughs> Those traitors! Do we learn nothing from Andor? Gosh. Subscribers, you guys are awesome. I tell you that every time because I mean it. You Thank guys you. are great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not Thanks, a subscriber, man. but I'm, you know. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> <laughs> so loud. <laughs> I love it. All right. So. It's, it's safe to say there wasn't a huge amount of arguments in that one. No. Nope. But he made no, a follow-up no one. Oh, okay. God. Now, now he's going this, to give this, us... Is this the real meat of the sandwich, Mora? This one's called My Case Against Andor. Why uh -huh. it's not true Star Ooh. Wars. Might explain. Nice. So all, right. all of you were like, oh, he's not going to give arguments. Is he? He's like, no, he will. And you are going to be red in the face when you realize that maybe you'll be concluding, oh, maybe Andor isn't Star Wars. Huh? My body is ready. My pizza crackers are prepared. As you can tell, time has passed because his uh, his beard has grown out a little there. Uh, That's true. That's true. And he has he's, he's got, got a, a different TV. shirt on. Mm -hmm. Oh, his TARDIS is gone. No, it disappeared. His TARDIS it it went to another time and place. The TARDIS wow. is <laughs> it's traveled through space and the universe, and now it's having an adventure. Oh, where did it go? I would say it is time for us to understand the argument now, because he's that was that seven minutes was him presenting the sort of the title of the essay, so to speak. This is the essay. Okay. This is the okay. definitive. Ooh. Why Andor isn't Star Wars video? Ooh. Let's get into it. Sweet. That's uh. All right. Oh no, he changed it. it. Oh. What happened to the? I missed He's it. He's a changed People man, Mahler. He's evolved. Just that this cold opening changed. there to lure us in. <laughs> better because it's quieter yeah it's quicker i think <laughs> hey everybody steve hello here. hi steve um since the last video i made about ahsoka mm. i brought up andor again okay and yeah. i've made some other andor videos yeah we've seen one of them and i've got a yeah, lot of people bad. saying that andor is star wars as a matter of fact mm. they're saying andor is the best thing since um, the Empire Strikes Back. Oh, uh -oh. yeah, that's, that's, a that's different fine. claim than the one uh -oh. you made. So, what I think is happening with Andor, which is inevitably just that's what was always going to happen, is the people who didn't watch it stop talking about it and stop raising criticism of it because they're less and less familiar with it. You know what I mean? It's like sequels. We all remember why they're so shit. But people who don't yeah, like Andor speak to them. or kind of didn't watch it aren't going to bother, like, in the average conversation to be like, no, Andor shit. They're going to be like, yeah, Andor. Yeah. But the people who like Andor, they will raise it every time it's mentioned. Andor is really good. Okay. Andor's really okay. great. Okay. And so if you casually, in the middle of a video, are like, oh, that Mandalorian season three was bad. Um, yeah, which, you know, that just means we've got duds all around with that, Andor, and blah, blah, blah. And then someone comes to me like, whoa, 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 whoa. Andor's, Andor wasn't a whoa. dud, you know. 
And so eventually, if you're someone fire. who thinks Andor is shit, you will get a lot of pushback just randomly. And you'll just be like, what is going on? Why are people being so nice about Andor? And it's like, well, maybe hmm. check it out. Me and, uh, me and Drinker have been trying to push it on Az and Gary for forever, <laughs> basically. One day they'll break. It. They might One really day. Like it. I say nay nay. Oh my. Nay nay. I, s I say Sounds and or smack. and Rogue One mm -hmm. are not true Star Wars. Okay. Now, I have two points that I think make my case. Two whole points. And we'll prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. I was kind of hoping we get more than. I thought we were going to get more than two, but that's all right. Hey, you know, <laughs> the amount of like points five you have or ten, at least. is how good the points are, guys. Stop poisoning the well. This is disgusting behavior. Maybe within the point, there will be like five supporting points. You know what I mean? Like first it's point. True, they can have <laughs> first points, points are like. Because <laughs> one, only true Star Wars fans would would uh, <laughs> understand what this is, and it's not Star and Wars. Two, and two, Andor isn't true <laughs> Star Wars. So there, I mean, yeah, like. Exactly. I nailed I mean, it. <laughs> following basic logical structure and argumentation, it is, while not a sound argument, a valid one. So, that is something. We are progressing towards you know, it's a good video. No doubt piece by piece. that Andor is not true Star Wars. Just just to refresh my now, memory, in the last video, was the claim that Andor was not true Star Wars or that Andor wasn't Star Wars full stop? Oh, um, it wasn't true. Did... Star Wars is, it, I think, it was almost, if not the direct, the exact implication. So, so the last one was called "Why Is It Real Star Wars?" Ah, this Real, one's right. It's not true Star Wars. These are different He's things. Evolving. He's evolving. He's evolving. His thinking. You see, there might be a subtle difference that I'm not keen on, but I'm sure he's going to explain it. I'm sure. Why would he make a 17 minute video that doesn't explain it for the Andor That's fans true. that are watching this? Hello. Hello. I'm not hey. trying to stir up trouble. I'm not trying to make some uh, oh, click baby. Oh, you got in trouble you, here, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to get Call you. Call me Dr. Trouble. I've I... got a prescription for some arguments. I'll be honest. If someone said, could I convince you that Andor is not true Star Wars? I'd be like, mm, I'll give it a shot. I'll see if you can. Maybe. I doubt it. No, it's not been unknown, right, for us to do these EFAPs. And the, the guy who's getting the video made about him will hear about it and will come on. I, I would genuinely be interested to have this guy on. Just sure. Absolutely. Out with him. Seems... I would just fully recommend yeah. Andor. <laughs> to him. Assuming he hasn't seen it, maybe he has. I mean, he's made this video. Surely so. he has. That would be like the um, that would be the, the that would be the kicker here, so to speak. Oh wait! Apparently, he's in the comments. Is he? Oh, nice. Hello. We're well, covering. Hey. Hey. him. Yeah. <laughs> so far, not great video. This video's had an I'm excellent here for start. <laughs> Yeah. Video. He said he's got two points. Yeah, I'm excited. Mahler, so I... you and I both know that mm -hmm. if every video we covered had two good points, oh. It would already raise to like top 10. It would be in top 10 territory. It would be in top 10 territory, unironically. Yes, it would. And get clicks and likes and, and, and watches and stuff. I'm not doing that. Okay. I'm simply trying to express why I don't see Andor and Rogue One as Star Wars. All right, that's okay. a bit of a rollback, um, but that's okay. I don't see... That people who like it on fans of Star Wars. Indeed. Let's not forget that one. Yeah, that was another thing that was said. That's true. Other than it being by Disney. Everything Disney puts out so far has just been garbage. So, it's not Andor, best. but I guess that's what we're here to... Hey, know, listen, if he's saying Mando cover. season one and two are also garbage, I'm with this guy, okay? Finally. Setting that aside, I'm making the case as to why Andor and Rogue One are not Star Wars. Oh, and Rogue One. I, 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 sorry, I'm a little bit frustrated there because it sounded before was much more. Can we? What did he just say like 15 seconds ago? Wasn't it like I'm just saying like in my opinion? You know, it's just like my perspective, and now we've just sort of we're like all already back to like a more definitive kind of a uh, claim. Yeah, I man, mean, he's a bold make... person. <laughs> I mean, Bob it for be like, affordabist. Yeah, clumsy language use, I suppose, but yeah. Yeah. We're going to get comments. And I love to hear your guys' comments about this. Oh, I good. love a good debate. We came to the <laughs> right I was going to say. I've got a feeling you're going to get a lot more comments after this EFAP episode. Hey, constructive comments, everyone, okay? Constructive comments. He's a nice gentleman. Yes. We learned that in the last nice. episode of EFAP. Was it the last one, the constructive criticism thing? The criticism guy? All criticism should not be negative. Yeah, he's, he said no negative. 
Except yeah, it, 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 except yeah, when it's I really it shit movies. Pass the Hitler test, but you know. So, after you watch this video, please feel free to leave comments. I will try to respond to as many as possible. It's a spirit. Uh, I'd appreciate it if we can keep them all. Come on, uh, come on, get to the two points. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta so work we in there. Good debate. Stop you can't us. rush good point. You can't rush good points. I feel the way I feel, and you can tell me the way you feel. Sweet. In the last video, didn't so, he say that he wanted real Star Wars fans to comment because yeah. he was tired of so did he not receive yes. enough of those? Um I don't know. The, the the well he said that the reason he's making this one is because on his uh, Ahsoka video, I think people were annoyed at him saying that Andor was not real Star Wars. Let's go. Point number one. Yes. Now, I've made this point in the last video oh, that I... Oh, <laughs> no, 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 not the... No, no. no. <laughs> uh, okay. Made. I'll put a... This is the Tony Gilroy quote. Box thing up there to uh, check that video out. Oh, uh, no, but, apparently no, it's... Different video. It's regarding Acolyte, yeah. okay. Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. The I original... think he's probably right about that as well. Though. Probably the worst Acolyte thing, looks yeah. like it'll be shit, but... yeah. Trilogy, Star Wars is a timeless story. From the okay. moment it came out in theaters till this very second, you yeah. can watch any of those, episodes four, five, or six. And Oh, poor prequel fans. <laughs> Left out in the cold. <laughs> prequel fans. They resonate with everyone. Well, I mean, you know. I, I, most I, don't, I don't want to nitpick, but sure, most people, sure. Yeah. Yeah, the vast everyone majority. loves these yeah, stories. Sure. George Lucas took the best. Of... I can see. Wait, I can see where he's going to go with this one as well. It's like if, if he's going to say the, the OT, but I didn't love a so I didn't love uh, Andor, and so that proves that it's, no, it's not, not universal. A timeless classic. It can't be timeless. <laughs> Mythology and religion and storytelling, and he put it all together, and he distilled it down into. Dare I say the perfect three stories? Yeah, really? see, okay, so I like mm. the OT a lot, but mm. <laughs> all three of them perfect. I don't know about that. The thing is, as well, like if his argument is just going to be like, well, Andor doesn't cover the same breadth of um, you know intellectual universal themes that uh, the OT covered, like you can make that argument, but then it's not designed to do that. It's it's exploring a specific facet of the Star Wars universe. It's not trying to be this this grand epic that encompasses everything you know it's seen from the eyes of like a, a limited group of characters doing a very specific task like you're you're very much made to feel like these are small pieces of a much larger puzzle and i'm and that's I, uh, fine. like i i'm wondering if that's where he's gone but i'm i'm almost holding off in terms of like i want i'm i'm tempted to see what like what he's going to say about and all being different and why that's bad the thing he's about it is, is, he's going to try and make the argument that it's like really clunky, contemporary political allegory shoved into if, this TV show. If he creates um, a sort of way to categorize that excludes basically all of Disney stuff, but includes the OT, I think that'll mostly be fine with a lot of people listening. But it's the prequels that are going to be a catching point there, because he's not including them, I'm assuming. When a lot of people who don't like Disney stuff love the prequels, so I don't think it's going to be a what I would call a... Um, an intuitive, like, sort of agreeable argument. Yeah. Gotta be careful. You gotta sidestep around them. Even, uh, let's <laughs> even we have to be careful when we're mean to the prequels. Yeah, they're, uh, they're quite beloved. There's, there's, there's nothing today that didn't happen then. There's nothing then that doesn't happen today. Hmm? You can watch this in a hundred years I mean, from now. I guess he means like messages or oh like right, like the fundamental appeal concept. of a uh, like growing up, yeah, right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Star Wars appeals just, the OT appeals as a story more fundamentally than any other Star Wars story, probably. I, I don't want to say definitively, yeah. but probably. And it still will be a great story. Unfortunately, we are now getting stories that people want to make for, for a, a modern, modern audience. audience. Um, and when you make it for an audience like that, you now take like modern or... Uh, I mean, I, that's why I didn't pause it, but I'm like, go on. <laughs> like, what, 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 yeah, where do we go with it? That. 
you now take away the timeless aspect. It is no longer timeless. It is now stuck in a box. This is an argument I, I could see. I'm going to need references, though. I need yeah, I to know an example. why. I, yeah, the, the thing is, like, his, his basic premise of, like, how Disney have handled Star Wars isn't wrong there. But I think he's... It kind it's of getting, like, to, to give a great example... These shows, which is already kind of like... We're, we're talking Andor, so let's not talk about these shows. Let's talk about Andor specifically. Because, mm -hmm. like, like, other shows. real easy to shit on, like, Mando and stuff, but... I, I I don't want them all lumped together when we're having this conversation, like specifically Andor. Um, so we need references to Andor, but yeah. To take what he just said and apply it somewhere, I think it actually works. Would be someone like Ryan Johnson. He can't resist having very up to date political social discussions in his films, and they age it like horrifyingly. Uh, Glass Onion especially is going to be a film oh, that if I'm you watch it in ten like years, shit. you'll be like, wow, this is a time capsule. This is fucking look at all these references to shit that I completely forgot about. Um, you get that with like particular music or trends. I, I saw a thread discussing it in MCU projects, like the amount of times they do. Do you remember um, Black Panther where they did the "What are those?" meme? Mm -hmm. and, and people, I don't even know if people know that's that meme. I, I don't know. Was that a Vine meme? Or was that even? Is that newer than that? I, I don't even. I'm pretty sure that meme was already old when the film like did it as well. Yeah, I feel like it was pretty Probably old. Probably yeah. But so when you think how long it takes to get films made, yeah, memes exactly. date in like 50 minutes. Yeah, and so if yeah. you appeal more to fundamental values and experiences, you age really well. So I'm on board, but I mean, I, I know which like I would put movie. Andor in. It wouldn't be the ages does, badly yeah, camp. Exactly. Does Andor appeal to like fundamental sort of aspects of human nature? Absolutely. It, uh, yes. well, again, it's the same. Contemporary references, you know? Yeah, mm. it, it's, you know... Uh, a plucky band of rebels joining together to rise up against an evil empire and try to overthrow them. Like, it's pretty universal stuff. Yeah, I mean, I will say Andor's appeal probably is more intellectual, whereas the OT is more sort of intuitive eternal truth. So the OT focuses a huge amount on the importance of family, loyalty, trust, and the, the inevitable triumph of goodness over evil, basically. These are all sort of like preternatural moral values. Um, and it's incredibly universal for that reason. It doesn't really try to do too much to layer on top of that, um, you know, extensive amounts of world building, say, with, like, how the Empire works and things like that. Whereas Andor is more concerned with the intellectual propositions of, well, empires rise and empires fall. How are these okay. things constituted in the real world? Um, and it's, you know, it, it still touches on very timeless themes. The prison sequence is still the one that stands out to me because that's mm -hmm. almost, it's one of the perfect encapsulations of, Sort of Jeremy Bentham and the um, the Panopticon sort of penal philosophy um, that you can probably find on the screen, and it, you know it actually invokes Foucault's response to Bentham as well when Andor is basically shouting, "No one's listening." That's Foucault saying that you know no one in the Panopticon is a participant in conversation, though everyone is heard. Um, that that's still a universal theme, but it's on a more maybe sort of cerebral level than the OT is, which might make it seem a bit less approachable or universal. But I would still argue that it is a very universal show. I think part of his gripe seems to stem from, like, Andor isn't a space opera in the same way that the Star Wars OT was. It's more of like a, a, politi a political espionage thriller set against the Star Wars framework. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the difference. And like, kind of going back to what you say, it doesn't deliver it in the big, grandiose, uh, emotional moments of, of uh, you know, family tragedies and betrayals and... and uh, epic adventures and stuff it's not that same style uh, and it's almost like you can't reconcile the idea that you can do a, a thriller a, a kind of political action thriller set in the star wars universe and still have it be part of star wars it will work if it's well written but it's like you can't compute that idea and i would even say that um it's got a place to fit in it's like when we join luke in the star wars universe the the rebel alliance is going strong it's there it's been doing different it's like We've come into it, uh, you know, second act almost. Um, meanwhile, like, Andor is trying to argue, like, l this is how it started. This is all the individual yeah, players that pushed the pieces that made eventually lead into actual wars, like huge wars. And that, that place has been waiting to be, you know, utilized, and I'm really glad they did it. You're bringing in modern-day politics. Example. Political I, agendas. What? Identity politics. What? Yeah, identity really, there really wasn't any... An Andor? I don't think there was any identity Where? politics in Andor. Any other 
thing that might be going on in society today. And you're trying to make that your story. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's not going to work. A hundred years from now, people aren't going to, they're going to look back on this and go, wow, those guys were dumb. Why in the world did they even put that in there? What are you talking about? I, 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 I would posit to you, like, as long as they had some knowledge of Star Wars, like, if they'd seen the OT, they could probably watch Andor and get a pretty good insight into into how this all started. We keep referring they... to this nebulous thing that happens in yeah, Andor, but like, I don't know what it is. What is it? Can you give, give me a an character? Example, give me a scene? Give me one, a message or a one theme? Example. Just tell me what it is. Nobody's going to care about a political agenda. Well, this this is a great argument as well because, like, you're appealing to a hundred years from now, so like, there's no way to yeah, even prove or disprove what you're even claiming. <laughs> like, well, we'll just give it a sec. We'll wait and see if it's still viable in a hundred years. We can test this argument. No one's going to care about identity politics. No one's going to care about what it. You know, maybe. I mean, this is the thing. I, mean, I don't know. It's not like it's probably stories you can tell that relate to identity. Well, you know what? Actually, though, Muller, explain yourself. Glass Onion will age badly. How can you verify that when that's in the future? Shit. Well, um, I'm gonna go by everything else that came before it. The references, things of its time, in a very superficial and substanceless way, aging horribly bad because we look back at it, watch them go. Ooh, I forgot that was in there. Ew. Um, I okay. expect that. To be the future for Glass Onion. But you're right. I can only do a prediction. I can't know it'll happen. But I think mm. that film's already cringe. So, like, <laughs> the idea that it'll be cringe in future. Mm. <laughs> the Among Us reference? That's true. Among Us is in there. Did they reference Yeah, but Among that's, Us time, that's a timeless. Onion? That's timeless. Yeah, Among Us is timeless. To Just to be clear. Hmm. Queer coded characters. Who? I mean, what? I. So for anyone who doesn't know, queer coded means that they're not overtly, but they definitely seem as though they would be the thing. And like that you can be will quote date coded. the story. That will date the story. Um, what what I I am yeah, lost. Gay people <laughs> won't exist hundred totally totally years from now. Well, that's what I'm very confused about. Yeah, who are the queer They'll characters in? Because they don't in reproduce. Andor? It's pretty obvious. Mon Mothma, lesbian sister? Oh, is was... that... No, yeah. it was, uh... Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, and then, uh, what was the name of the... She was also with the, uh, with the, the rebel group. Uh... Um... Damn, I can't remember her name. Oh, yeah, I know who you mean. It's the... She was, like, uh, undercover with, uh, with the Empire when they had to do the, the raid on the, the base. Uh, no, she wasn't undercover with the Empire. Um, she was with the group. It was the, uh... Oh, yeah, no, she was in the base during the mission, that's right, yeah. 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 It was those yeah, two her. characters, because I had a relationship. I mean, lesbians isn't exactly, like, some kind of newfangled, what? you know... Well, well, I don't even understand it, it's like, ah, that's pretty political, it's like, what, people who love each other? They ba there's barely <laughs> like, any attention what? given to the fact that they're... But why not? Who cares? Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it's not done in some like clunky as fuck way. It's just two girls who like each other a hell of a lot who are trying to do really important and high stakes missions. One of them Balance is more about the mission. The other one is clearly yeah. interested in maybe starting a life. Mm -hmm. This is all modern day jargon that should not be in a timeless story. Uh. Um... Ma, think, were there you, any you lesbians get, in the OT? <laughs> yeah, Was Jabba the Hutt a lesbian? I don't know. It's um, it it's always it's know, interesting RC to sort of see whatever. as well the the similarities in people who have what I'm presuming are this guy's political persuasion and people on what he would conceive of as the opposite political persuasion and how they basically say exactly the same thing as each other without realizing that they are agreeing with the enemy or they come at it from a very different perspective but they both read these weird little messages in so i was looking up like just as he was speaking um to try and find that this evidence of yeah queer coded characters which he says are, are in there but can't really provide the evidence buzzfeed's counter take is that andor's lack of queerness undermines its entire message right. so like somewhere in between those two positions is probably the truth which is that 
the yeah, there's a couple of characters in there you can read as being romantically attached. That's kind of it. And it doesn't date the production because, you know, gay people are as old as time. Well, that, yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, this is what I'm talking about. It's like lesbian is not a new thing. That's that's quite old. I bring you more examples. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Well, more. I, more <laughs> Shut up. He more. said more. Yeah, He's given us more. Implying, Shut up. Implying that there was even one. And there, there, there are several articles from Bounding in the Comics, which I will link down below. Okay. Uh, here Can is he one of them. Uh, yeah. He oh, did. all right. Okay. Andor actress Fiona Shaw made it abundantly clear that the upcoming Star Wars series will be a political commentary on Donald Trump rather than a Star Wars adventure. That's um, the thing is that's a fucking actress. She didn't write it. Like, well, and, and, and this is actress, cringe, also, what right? Did, what For the record, this say? is cringe. But if you watch Andor, where is this? Uh, like, well, it, yeah, it, like if you never heard anybody make this comparison at all, would you watch and be like, ah, I see, this is a comic to give, um... about Donald Trump. <laughs> the thing is, I don't give a fuck what the actors have to say about this. Actors are dumb as fuck for the most part, and they say whatever they think will make them more popular. Well, and I, I, I'd want to argue as well, like, uh, they do this with good movies all the time. <laughs> they'll say, like, uh, they'll, they'll go back to, like, classics and be like, did you know that was all actually about this brand new thing that I want it to be about? You're like, oh. Yeah. I don't agree. And they're like, oh, okay, well, fuck you, it is. <laughs> Even yeah. if creators say it, you're like, nah, that's fine, you have... That's... I think it was the actress who played Dedra, Mira, the, the Imperial Security Bureau officer, did a, a quote as well, which was roundly sort of picked up on before the show uh, aired, when she was saying it was something along the lines of, you know, this character is, is a strong woman who is in many ways more competent than the men, and everyone's immediate response was, oh, God, girl boss character, and then she appears on screen and she's a Nazi. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, so it's not doesn't really matter, does it? She's very competent. She's also evil, and there are competent female villains. That's a and good thing. She does fuck up here and there, but uh, she the right things happen the right ways, and she's desperately trying to climb that empire ladder. Be interesting to see. That's that's who you're talking about, right? The yeah. blonde lady. Yeah, that's the one. Remember here in the last episode, getting terrified by the mm -hmm. trampling armies of the resistance. It's like war. Oh. Lots well, you know, of lots of interesting behind angles, every. Behind every powerful Goebbels is a strong Aryan woman, so, I guess. This individual says that the uh, current Andor show is a reflection... By the way, the, the animated stuff and the sparkles behind the text is not... Is, it, don't, <laughs> don't do that. I don't know. I think it's fantastic. It adds right. flavor really? rags. It and definitely it adds the, flavor. It's like adding I crackers to a pizza. Flavor. It's like adding you know crackers to pizza, yeah. <laughs> you know what's great, though? is like what he's reading out is completely different than what he's putting, putting on the screen. And no, or actress Fiona Shaw made it abundantly clear that the upcoming Star Wars series will be a political yeah. commentary. Yeah, yeah so like, now listen to what he matter. says. Okay. On the Trumpian world. And how Tony Gilray wrote... Oh. Sure. I feel like my plays. head wants to tilt. The, the, um, by the way, I despise this form of video making where you say things that are different than what's on screen, as Drinker just pointed out. It fucking kills yeah. me because I'm like, do you want me to read it and then let you talk? Or listen or to you? <laughs> or like, what, what, what's more important? If Assuming I only watch your video once, which, by the way, is more than most people on Earth will do, uh, which, uh, which thought shall I attach my attention to? Sean, who plays a character named Marva, spoke with Empire about the upcoming series telling them Tony Gilroy has written a great serilicious take on the Trumpian world. I'm sorry, I completely Scur fucked up that Scurilous. word. I was just Making or spreading scandalous claims about someone with the intention of damaging their reputation. So this is just the result of people on Earth being, you know, they're so subsumed by the, the current culture things that whatever they're currently in, they'll try and argue it's about that to get people like, ooh, or other people being like, ugh. So, um, it seems like... Yeah, despite the the despite the Trump references, it seems to be a really good show. So because I'm starting, to say, to, it's unlocking memories for me because I think that we heard about this too before we'd seen Andor, and it was like, Ugh. like, like, yeah, Ugh, like great, a, yellow be flags are being raised, and yeah. it's more so because it'll mean that they'll have really just they'll, they'll they'll have commentary that is not subtle at all and cringe and and you know there's a lot of things that do it, and you're just like, yeah, great, but then you watch it and you're like, oh wait, I didn't see where, where was this. 
And if they were like, couldn't you tell that part of Gaz, he's Trump? I'd be like, what? Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> now, compare I this really for didn't a moment. I know, I know most of you guys are not familiar with Star Trek, but you know what the Federation is in Star Trek. It's the very nice utopian, like, um, governing body for all of Starfleet. They're the guys who go out to explore the universe. Great stuff. And they've always been portrayed in a positive light throughout Star Trek history. Almost. When Picard when Picard came along, this this is an example of bad writing where they suddenly had to deal with a refugee crisis and they turned into a bunch of xenophobic fascists uh, who who didn't want to have to deal with it. Uh, they were extremely suspicious of anyone who was uh, outside of their borders. That was a clumsy, shitty allegory for you know current day refugee problems at the southern border in America. But that's not what you're dealing with in Andor. It's not awkward like that, and it doesn't intrude upon the story. The story feels natural and developed as it should based on the Star Wars lore that we have and where the universe is at at that point in time. I'm inclined to agree. When you take something that currently exists in the storyline, add to it, but completely change it in order to match something that you want to talk about, feels disrespectful. Well, and just shit, but you know. Uh, there was there was no changes to make the Empire a bad guy in Andor. That was uh, that's already a thing. Wrote John a scurrilous this character story about Trump. Now, so do you have any like basically in, like well, show references? Not what people said yes. in interviews. Outside, I want I want to like, know any references in the show. What would he do if uh, Mark Hamill? said the ot is really about trump and then someone says in response oh. trump wasn't even fucking what do you mean and he's like no it is in retrospect about trump what do you do with that does star wars the ot become shit or do you just dis or do you disagree slash disregard the take yeah you just be like that's retarded this is telling us that they're taking modern day politics and they're using the modern day politics as the bad guys. It's not. It's not. It's telling the you that the actress is doing is exactly what you're doing, which is to read your own uh, political opinions or political opponents' opinions into the show that you're watching. It's really easy to do precisely because Andor doesn't actually preach political perspectives at you. I could, for example, say, well, the Imperial Security Bureau represents the risks of untrammeled intelligence gathering on behalf of a private state nexus. And Mon Mothma, who is literally a Republican, is a brave right-wing campaigner against the state's accumulation of your private personal data. I could make that allegory oh, of that's true. that yeah, if I wanted yeah. to, but Andor isn't actually telling me that that's what it's doing. That It's allowing me to say, well, you know, if I want to apply my own imagination, this is the lesson I can derive from the show. It's not the show telling me what the lesson I'm supposed to take from it is. I think part of guys isn't Trump, he's Hitler, and that uh, Andor is Churchill. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it kind of makes sense. All of it. Uh, the place he came from, that's Britain. Um, friends there, they're all, uh, they're all uh, European countries. They'll represent. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. The Empire. Mm -hmm. Trump. Trump and conservatives, conservatives in these people's eyes are the empire that was never Can we talk the about the story. show please <laughs> i thought no. that's what he meant when he was going to give us points not like you know that like these general loose political it's really, it's related just lame. it's just talking about weird like like people talking like in interviews about shit and like sort of vague political like can we just yeah. talk, about talk about the, the show? show? Why is the show bad? Tell me why the show is bad. Well, Give it sounded like his position show. isn't that it's bad. It's just that it's it's filled with modern Wars, politics. Where they talk about yeah, because an actress in an interview said something. Yeah, it's a has bad take. It's a six minute video. Yeah, okay. There, there, there was no one government or, or or one entity that was taking the place for the empire. The empire was just evil i think evil is not a new concept we've had evil ever since you know yeah so andor is a almost, timeless if, if, story right like, is it not, is it not yeah. a bit of an upgrade to have them be a little more complicated than evil 
Yeah, because generally it's not like, oh, they're just, just black and white, evil and good. It's that simple. People are just evil. They're just devils and demonic, and it's as simple as that. <laughs> Literally you controlled know, by just, Satan. <laughs> controlled by Satan. I guess that's the Emperor. Yeah. I, I guess. He's 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 pretty evil, but, you know, but like generally, I mean, there's, there's, all of the yeah, little cogs people... in the machine along the way are not just, ooh, I'm fucking evil. I just love yeah, being there, evil. I, 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 there's going to be people at every level who are just doing their job day after mm -hmm. day like either Don't because it's, like, boat, it's way out they're trying to make money or they're they're yeah, obliged to do money. it they've been pressed into them. service there's all kinds of things you know the angle of people like d isn't cyril when we first meet him he's like interested in upholding law he's like it should be yeah that that's important yeah it has nothing to do with rebellion and empire it's just someone killed these two guys and i need to figure out who the hell did it i mean, can't just, let them it, escape it, justice the, i can't yeah, imagine the it's there's nothing political about it, really. I can't imagine being presented with that, and then the reaction being, Ugh, I prefer it when the Empire just evil, man. I don't like this whole, like, oh, he's, he's kind of a person with, you know, strong values that believes he's in the rule of, of law. Fuck that. He Make him evil. Thought. Give him horns. Yeah, the like Darth people Maul. decide to have <laughs> a fight. We've had evil. So, none of this is new. And then we have another article from Bounding into Comics okay. where... Um, what are your thoughts? Tony Gilroy himself says that he said he, he, he believes the Mon Mothma character uh, is kind of like a Nancy Pelosi. Nancy what does he Pelosi mean by that, willing though? willing to sell her daughter he into an arranged marriage to obtain funds for a rebellion against... Okay, like, I, that could mean a million things. I don't see it myself. If that's his inspiration, okay, I even guess. If, even if, even if it was like, like, is what, like, again, can we just have references, like, specifically to the show itself and what happens in the show, rather than what somebody said in an interview? And well, and if you're gonna bring it up, please tell me what he means by it. This can't be as simple as there's, there's got to be more to it than that line, right? <laughs> he mentions Nancy Pelosi, therefore, I, I'd be, I would be willing to put money on him. <laughs> referring to Nancy Pelosi as, you know, incredibly shrewd, almost to the point of amoral political operator, someone who is incredibly good at what they do, but what they do is kind of complex and morally nuanced and occasionally devious in service of a higher cause. Um, that's That would be my sort of read into the analogy of, like, the Nancy Pelosi as Mon Mothma character. Nancy Pelosi was a very shrewd political operator, as Mon Mothma is. Um, has to, you know, orchestrate political maneuverings in the Senate, as Mon Mothma does. So she's quite a useful character archetype, I suppose. You can take inspiration from that. That's not to say that he thinks Nancy Pelosi is, you know, God's daughter, or <laughs> that, you know, she, she's this moral uh, paragon of virtue. Well, you know what's crazy? Like that. If the quote continues, uh, Nancy Pelosi is the greatest person of all time, I love her to pieces, and that's why I made Mon Mothma the best person ever and said that that's who that is, it wouldn't make Andor a bad show, it would make Gilroy oh. cringe. <laughs> That's all that means. <laughs> Again, why are you bringing? Do you want the full? Do you want the full quote of that Nancy Pelosi thing? Um, do it. Anyone who follows mm. the canon, she's sort of a Nancy Pelosi character, isn't she? She's kind of trying to do good or whatever she's trying to do, and she's losing. I mean, I don't know. She's a powerful presence in the Senate, but she's facing defeat after defeat after defeat as the Empire is taking over here. She's always presented as very proper and sober and perfectly put together all the time in canon, and it just seemed like that was such a perfect opportunity to say, well, what's really going on behind here? It was, really, it was very exciting to take a sort of still portrait of someone and throw it away and build a real life behind it. Well, the only thing that's going to be disagreeable for people in there is whether or not you believe Nancy Pelosi is trying to do good, but that's, you know, for everyone to fight over. I think the more interesting part of what that quote is, is just the way a person is presented at the higher echelons of politics and what's going yeah. on in their life beneath what it. The, yeah, what the real yeah. life is going on, yeah. Behind the scenes when the cameras aren't on. Political ...figures from today and trying to connect them to a character that has absolutely nothing to do with any of this. I mean, you can easily connect what? any political That's leaders nothing. to other political yeah. leaders. There's going to be something there. But like again, <laughs> tell me how this made Andor shit. You just have references in the ch show again. Like, can you ex can you elaborate on how this like damaged the story, like the integrity of the story? 
The only reason you do this is so you can connect them to modern day politics. No. And try to get no. Every that, that yeah, if you're making a science, like, um, if the you're only making a to connect them to modern politics is to connect them to modern politics. So it's a nice circular kind of a line of logic. I mean, but like it's again, sort of thing you'd get we... in a draft, but you know. But how effective but why, is it um... if nobody knows anything about modern politics after watching Andor? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, if they were, if you have a you know fucking 15 year old who knows nothing about U.S. politics in any way, watches Andor, in what way does it push them to any particular place? Uh, don't be authoritarian. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, come on, dude, kind of, what? I mean, Tony it's Gilbrey, not even, like, left or right at that point. It's just, you know, it's, it, not, it's just don't be authoritarian. Pretty much. Tony Gilroy a, a consulting producer on House of Cards, and um, Frank Underwood is, is, of course, a Democrat, and Frank Underwood doesn't exactly come out of that show particularly well. <laughs> Neither so, did Kevin like, Spacey. No, I can't speak to you, <laughs> but how to to what extent can you really read uh, um, Tony Gilroy's political opinions into the fact that well here he's being blamed for associating a prominent Democrat with a hero figure in Star Wars in House of Cards is he to be to be blamed for associating a a nasty nefarious evil fictional Democrat with villainy I mean like he's he's what he's doing is he's taking inspiration and applying it to his art form as opposed to propagandizing which seems to be the charge level against him. Buddy on the left to come over and watch this show. They want this show to be one big right leaning bash based on two quotes. And, and they can go, they can nothing from, give the it show. An interview, nothing, nothing from the show. Nothing that's actually present in the show. Go, oh, yeah. Like, this yeah. Is, from the this show. is one of this is one of your two just definitive pieces of like proof. That this show was not Star Wars. Tell you what, that bingo card's probably empty, huh? We'll platoon. Yeah, how's your <laughs> checklist going? <laughs> <laughs> it's going it's going well enough however you choose to arrange the words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's good. That's good. That's good. What do you uh, get if you win? Um you give yourself I think a prize. A vague sense of, of crushing disappointment that critics of Andor <laughs> are so predictable. A oh. little bit. That reminds me of Trump. Oh, that reminds me of all those right wingers. Yeah. The, what the, <laughs> the, you right. know the show you need to shit on for that? It's The Boys. Not Andor. Oh, talk about shows that no one fucking talks about anymore. Forget shows that, that are hyper cringe and overflated just because they're edgy. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Did anyone see The Boys Season 3? Drinker, did you see that yet? Yeah, I got through pretty much all of it. I think I had like one or two episodes left or something. Did you feel anything? Nah. I mean, I laughed <laughs> a couple of times, I guess. There you go. Yeah, they're evil. Those people I are horrible. Yes, we are. The, we are the rebels. We are the rebels. So, is it safe to assume he hasn't actually seen Nando then? I don't. I don't. You see, here's the thing. Like, surely he has, but it doesn't sound like he has. It doesn't sound like he has because you feel like if he had, he would just be able to. Like, it wouldn't even be a matter of deliberately doing it. He would just be drawing references to the show. Yeah, like you know automatically, I mean? like he'd be like, like that yeah, stupid like, thing with the guy who did the thing. Like, exactly, he'd be saying that. Exactly. Yeah. You'd be appealing specifically to like moments that happen in the show or characters and their motivations. You wouldn't be just strictly referring to like meta information. None of this should be in a story like Star Wars. None of what? Is references to modern politics? <laughs> well, none of what? People in interviews saying even... things that you, like, that, without any references to the actual substance of the story. If... Well, the prequels isn't weird because he didn't seem to consider them Star Wars, but if someone... Yeah, if it was a quote from <laughs> fucking whoever that said Palpatine in the prequels is supposed to be... Uh, a reflection of Bush. Well, how does he throw away, like, what George Lucas has said? Exactly. About, like, there is a lot of things Lucas said about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. George, George Lucas made specific, like, references to real-world events and how they, like, influenced the way that that story took shape. So, like, what about that? As a, Well, Platoon was mentioned earlier, right? Vietnam was an inspiration. Yeah. Is that okay, or is it not? Are we allowed to do He's that, or not? Has that the story? Has that, you know... He took heavy inspiration as well from Gibbon's decline and fall of the Roman Empire, and the prequels are sort of an attempt to take you know contemporary concerns and map them onto the gradual decline of the Roman Republic, and then present that in a brand new 
sort of totally separate fictional realm in Star Wars, but it's still taking inspiration from past and present. The, the trick to making it non-allegorical, though, is that you try and identify in, say, modern political conditions what the timeless causes of those things happen to be. Like, this is not the first time empires have risen or fallen. You look at the mechanisms that underpin that. What does it say about us sort of universally throughout our entire history as a species and a social species of that? You take the universal aspects of that and you simply use the modern political thing as kind of momentary inspiration to inform the structure of your story. That doesn't make it allegorical. That just makes it inspired or innovative, depending on how you choose to interpret it. I'm now just thinking about um what what hap what about like a historical drama like a drama that is based on historical events is that dated? <laughs> is it dated <laughs> to a story that's like based in the medieval era or like the Viking era, you know, or you know, ancient uh, Rome or Greece? <laughs> Pretty clear that this character was based off of Charles the Sixteenth, which is uh, not which means it's not a very timeless story because it's inspired by. <laughs> I mean, it feels like it's got to be more complicated than that. Completely out of place. Out of place, like. 100%. So, no modern audience garbage in a timeless story. That is point one. That is Wait, why. Wait, are we working I, forwards or backwards when we talk about no what modern... makes a story timeless? I, I don't know with this guy. I mean, I, I, I will say I'm unconvinced by your arguments that this Because I have a feeling this, if... Point one of two that it is not Star Wars, based on the things that you've said. I bet if we went back to some of them, their Shakespeare plays, that there might be a lot of references to modern politics that we just don't quite think of or are aware of today. Events going on, characters who might be in charge, praising of certain monarchs, things of that nature. I, I'm pretty sure that those stories have a are going to have a decent amount of references to... Henry, oh, no. Henry V is, is, is actually crap, because it's very firmly dated around the time period of Henry V. Yeah, so, someone just mentioned Tetris. It's like, yeah, that's, there's plenty in there for the era oh, it takes yeah, place the USSR in for... yeah, the USSR and stuff like that. Yeah. And arguably a lot of messaging about what is right and what is wrong when it comes to the clashing of cultures in that one. But that's okay, well, because we all agree on it. <laughs> to, when it comes to, like, the setting, it was something that Platoon was talking about before. Like, if you were to, like... What I would say at the core of Andor in terms of the characters is you've got a bunch of different people who we have, like, you know, a, a clearly defined, like, traits or goals that they have. And it's like, how do people react when placed in, like, a really stressful situation? And then you get to see the different ways that people maneuver through that. Like, that's much more of an appeal to, like, individuals, right? And, like, character motivations or, like, the things that drive people. And, um, like, to me... That, that strikes me as, like, universal in the sense that you're exploring, like, the human experience. Like, regardless of whatever the, the backdrop is or, like, whatever political sort of um, uh, influences that you'd want to attach to it. Like, what, like what is the story of, like... Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm just, like, what is this story... If you're looking at the story of, like, Luthen, um, and then, of course, you know, like, leading up to his big speech, essentially, about the nature of, like, how he sacrifices himself as a being, like, down to his very core, uh, in pursuit of the goal that he wants. Like, how would this guy look at that and go, ha, ah, see, yeah, that's, like, that's not a timeless story, because, um, one of the actresses in the show said that it was about Trump. <laughs> that's what I mean, ignore the cringe comments about what it is, pay attention to what it is. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Cut out the the Please. because we've said this before, but like it's it's rare to get commentary from actors that really improves the work. And it happened once yeah. recently. So I was looking at an interview people were sharing of um, Patty Constantine talking about Viserys, that he he really worked with what he learned when his mum was experiencing something similar to what Viserys goes through, and he drew drew from that, and that it's an incredible. Like it's all about how much he wants to do for his family. It's going to keep him going, and that you know he would have. It, th that's how much it matters to him, and that's what he's trying to channel. And I think Matt Smith is there, just being like, "Yeah, you know, this is the, these characters have a lot." And you're just sitting there like, "Ah, <laughs> like I don't need to." If any of them had said like, "You know, Viserys is actually commentary on modern Trumpism," you just be like, Ugh. "It's appealing to those fundamentals," uh, but it's rare. You get a lot of people who, like the, the that that thing that was in like loads of my TFA videos, right? The 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 character and actions from good old Gwendolyn Christie trying to talk about the character <laughs> of Phasma, but there is no character, so she can't. And you feel bad God for her. Bless her. 
She tried. She tried well, her best. Yeah, the other half of what she had to say was she's the first female villain, and it was like, oh, shut the fuck up. True. Andor is not Star Wars. First female villain was Eve. Point two. All right, what's the point Which number two? I believe is the biggest point. Yes. Oh, Let's do it. Oh, all when right. you break Good. Star Wars My down favorite points. into its most basic elements. Jar Jar. Jar Jar you is have key to all this. A timeless story of good versus evil. Um, That's point one. You already he said this. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. he's going to say something I else. see where he's going with it. You have the True. hero's journey of Luke Skywalker. You have a great redemption story in Han Solo. In him coming around. You, you have all these other great things going on. But the one thing. Okay. All right. The one see. thing oh, that separates... Go. Star Wars from from every other the animals, yeah. Sci-fi show. You could still be Jar Jar. I don't know. We're still in. It could be Jar Jar. Jar Jar. I have not seen Jar 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 in anything besides Star Wars. Oh. Oh, here we go. Ding 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 ding. You just scored on your bingo sheet there. Yeah. All right. Well. Yep. Okay. Cool. So no real life. You know what's funny is that the Force, as named, of course, doesn't turn up in like Star Trek or whatever, but. What telekinesis? It's like it's in a lot of stuff. And then you'd be like, well, no, not not telekinesis that's drawn from like the universe, as though we're we're parts of it, and that we have to like be in tune or whatever. It's like, oh, that's got to be in plenty of fantasy shit. Come on, well, like, as a mechanic, it's not like some incredible unique thing. Think about um, a new hope. Like the force is used so sparingly in that mm -hmm. movie. Yep, you you could really argue that like. It, it, well, to the point that one of the guys in the uh, one of the Imperials is like, "Oh, that's some bullshit sorcery shit. Like that ain't real." The, the guy, yeah, I Solo says that. Yeah, like yeah. Th th it's the reason why I already know that I'm just going to be like pissed off with this argument. There are many, 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 many people in the Star Wars world who just live their lives independent of like whatever's going on with the Jedi or the Sith or any of that stuff. And like, yeah, maybe the Force is there and it's present and it has some influence on their lives, but like they don't. They're not aware of it. It's not that important to them. Like, it's it doesn't inform them just going to work and getting on with their daily lives. And the notion that, like, that kind of story can't be told about, like, I guess you could say more um banal, normal kind of uh, circumstances, situations, or, like, people. It, the idea that that is, like, necessarily precluded from a Star Wars story, like, I just don't like that. Yeah, that feels, it's, like, like, incredibly limiting. You, yeah, it's, like, you've got to be one of these chosen few who has this, like, innate ability in order to like qualify for being a character that's got a worthwhile story to tell about them it yeah it's such bullshit that's it's almost really necessarily limited. related really, really, to your really, really well and so kind of there are so many counters to this but one of the ones i'm curious about is he has mysteriously left out the prequels whenever he mentions like true real star wars the prequels have more the force in them than the ot does Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's like Drinker said, the the force doesn't show up that much in in uh in uh, a new hope. So why isn't the but, prequels like supercharged Star Wars then? Shouldn't it be right. more Star Wars than the OTS? Well, and then of course I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that the force, you know, like it's like it's not like, you know, the force is an exponential force on how Star Wars <laughs> Star Wars story is. Well, so yeah, the reasonable conclusion must be that it has to simply be present. And then it's like, okay, so what about scenes it in is the OT? And all, though. What about scenes in the OT where it is not present? Well, they, they I mean, scenes, I, I might or? go, I might go cringe. It's present everywhere. It's everything. Oh. It's everywhere all the time. Well, then, yeah, we're fine. It, it's in everything. Us, it penetrates us, or whatever Obi Wan said. <laughs> I am the force, and the force is with me. Remember? Yeah. Remember that? I do. I remember the thing he said. And what happens if, uh, what happens if a force user shows up in uh, and or season two? Does it therefore become, become Star good. Wars? It becomes it becomes real. Yeah, it becomes it yeah, becomes cool Star Wars. Then. I love the idea that like. All we needed was just one moment where Luther you know, pushes a pencil over with the force. <laughs> like, yes, we're Star Wars again. Like, it's got to be more complicated than that, right? Like, he just listed like Han's arc as being, you know, quintessential Star Wars. It's got nothing to do with the force. Mm -hmm. No, but in his mind, this is the number one most important thing in all of Star Wars: the force. That's Which is funny because I would have argued back at him. No, the other things you mentioned are much more fundamental to Star Wars than the Force. Absolutely. Like the hero, hero's journey in the form of Luke, like that's 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 probably bedrock right there. Story. The, force, the Force in and of itself doesn't really mean anything. It's how people perceive the Force and use the Force mm. and react to it, right? Like it's not 
that the force is present it's that luke chooses to be good right that he chooses the light side that he chooses you know like not to fall like succumb to essentially rage and hatred yeah like that you know what it, like it's yeah but it's also it's a stand-in sort of representative for true faith as well which is that you know, once it is a sta- established in the universe that the Force is indeed a thing, it makes characters interesting. Their interactions or non-interactions with the Force are partly what defines their worldview. So Han's cynicism about it at first, his eventual sort of coming to accept it in um, Empire Strikes Back and onwards, um, even without really understanding it and still being a little bit sort of cynical, that, that his relationship with the Force, whether he uses it or not, defines him as a character. The same thing is true of Andor. We know in universe the Force is a thing that exists. It plays out in many different character relationships very, very differently. Um, there's nothing to say that it won't be invoked or referred to in Andor. In fact, I think someone does say, may the Force be with you at some point in Andor. I can't remember if they do. I think they do. They Marvel definitely do. Yeah. So it, it's do. yeah, it still exists in the universe. It's just that you're not seeing it all that often. But as Mauler, you said, you know, you don't see it all that often in A New Hope anyway. It's not supposed to be this all-powerful, ever-present thing. It's a stand-in for belief, something you believe in, a sense that the universe does have some sort of moral purpose and direction, albeit one you have to fight to win. Um, well, it's, that's what makes it interesting. I would argue there's a good chance Andor season two will have it because of the fact that someone probably was breathing down Gilroy's neck, being like, "Why weren't they Jedi in this?" Why wouldn't there's mm-hmm. force in this? We've we've checked out the general feedback, and they're annoyed there wasn't as many laser blasts and colorful oh swords. You'd be like, oh. Filoni sidles into the room and says, "Hey, I've got this cartoon <laughs> character you might want to know. Can you put She's Ahsoka into your show and make it so that she wins the day?" Yeah, I, now 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 I'm starting to almost get annoyed because now that I'm now I'm thinking about like Mando shit. Mando's got like the force and all that shit in it. It was fucking vacuous. Yeah, it's I don't want that to be bullshit. Star Wars. It, it sucks that that's Star yeah, Wars. There's, Where it's, it's like what no Andor has meaning to say behind it. It's way more valuable than anything that's in Mandalorian. There was a particularly, you know, prominent uh, person reviewing uh, good old Andor, and he was annoyed that there wasn't more references to all of those things, and instead uh, more so, like, bricks and the, the cement yeah. used to create buildings. Mm, that, yeah. That's mm-hmm. not very Star Wars. Where's my Force users? Where's my Jedi? And it's like, no, you. It's not fair that Star Wars should have to suffer this way. That Baby Yoda, like blocking out the what even was that? Like a, a a capital ship crashing into an enormous Empire facility, blocking all of the fires. It's like that's Star Wars. It's like no. Oh, then Star Wars. Maybe it should fucking die. Don't make that Star Wars. That sucks. <laughs> This is such a deracinated view of what the universe is supposed to be. The most interesting characters are the ones who don't have the Force most of the time. Um, because it's, you know, it, it implies weakness. They have to rely on other things. They have to rely on skills and ingenuity Dude, and character. I've, I love so, the... Uh, it's, I'm not going to defend it as like feeling? some great scene or anything, but I just love the fact that uh, Boba Fett... Uh, sorry, not Boba <laughs> That's, just, that's addictive. Jango Fett has to take on Obi Wan when he doesn't have the Force. You know that's that's mm. tough. A bounty hunter have to take on a fucking Force user. It's like you guys have magic. It's not exactly fair. Well, remember uh, kind of uh, the one the one thing that we kind of enjoyed about uh, Obi Wan Kenobi was Uncle Owen just making a stand against yeah. Reva. This is like yep. you know, it's just a, a guy with like he's all, all he's got is like a spear or something. He's up against someone who can crush him with the Force, and he makes a stand anyway, and he. Ref- back down and we just all thought yeah nice one uncle and you're pretty well, good awesome. on you man what that's, a how, hero. Uh, that's how the rebels beat the empire was a lot of non-force users yeah. like working with i mean really like a few pivotal force users and in the end just one to like well two i guess we in darth vader but you know like to to destroy the empire it's like a lot of people who don't have the force who aren't jedi like doing heroic things it's not like yeah like i don't uh, this is this is such a strange thing to appeal to to determine what is and isn't Star Wars. Um, I mean, it's a little juvenile. It's like the like there's no uni- Star Wars as a as a as a whole universe. So which is so rich in potential, it can't be Star Wars if there's not a Jedi involved. We'll say when ninety nine point nine percent of all the galaxy is non Force users. And again, a lot they of people's don't count. You can't tell their stories. The fundamental canon that we were given from the OT described that the Force was basically dead in the universe. It's like, Tarkin's nobody's using exact it. Quote, the Jedi are dead, their fire has gone out of the universe. You, my friend, are all that is left of their old religion. That's his exact quote to Vader. That people are not 
really aware of the Force. Or it's, they're not in communion with the Force anymore. The Jedi don't really exist. Except that, of course, now Disney keeps insisting that hundreds of them still do. <laughs> Billions Generally survived do. Order 66. In fact. <laughs> I think, oh, I think there were more Jedi after Order 66 <laughs> than they were before. I'm starting to think that, yeah, they, they showed up to the Jedi Temple and it was just, like, empty. Like, they, <laughs> someone clued them in. <laughs> they pretended they got all the Jedi as a PR stunt. They just forgot to take the younglings with them when they left. Tragically. Yes, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I will say, though, this, this argument, as much as it could be considered strange, it doesn't surprise me at all. This is one I would expect to be on the bingo list, along with lightsabers and mm -hmm. uh, Jedi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, the, fo goes. No. the Force. All right. When you leave out the Jedi and the Sith and the Force, mm -hmm. you no longer have Star Wars. Why? You have why? Why? The Expanse. That, no, no, you no, fucking no, don't. No, okay, this is okay. So this is going to be really lame. Is it? Is his is his argument actually like without the force? The S Star Wars is like any other sort of like science fiction story. That's so wrong. So unfair. I think that's that's, that's, that's like also shit on the expanse. Reductive. It's just I I just it's super fucking reductive. You're like it's saying like, I mean Star Trek is Star Wars if you just add the force. <laughs> You're like no. <laughs> These these are some very unique IPs in terms of the idea that Andor is like the Expanse. What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> like, that's just not true at all. <sighs> what what makes Star Wars unique? He course. even mentioned those other aspects, but now he's like throwing them out. If you don't have Jedi and the, this is the worst mindset because this is what gets us shit like Bad Lord season three and Book of Boba Fett. Look, he's on a Rancor. He's riding forest. a Rancor. That's Star Wars. <laughs> Rancor is Star Wars. You have Battlestar Galactica. You have... Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now... It's just the... But how are those things the same? They well, have the Force, it... and they're distinctly different. There's got a lot of follow-up questions being prompted here. It's like, wait, do you think they're bad? Do you think Expanse and Battlestar Galactica well, no, are bad? I don't, th I don't think he's appealing to... I'm not sure why you keep saying bad, actually. He's saying it's not, not, not that it's bad, it's just not Star Wars. No, the, I think the, that's his argument. The draw you get is that it, the implication is lesser than. They are Star Wars without the Force. So Star Wars is uh, like oh, a package. Yeah, I see, I see. And it's like, well, as um, long as I they're mean, still... It doesn't matter if, they, if they're good. But what I'm I trying to argue is that to it. the logical way that he would have to result this is like, yes, of course they're not bad, because I doubt you would ever take that position. The like Expanse and Battlestar Galactica are bad. Therefore, Star Wars without the Force is... Like, well, a good sci-fi? Like, yeah, okay, fine, but it's not Star Wars. It's like, ugh. It's like, okay. okay. Mm. I, and, and what mm. about, like, um, what was it? The the Han Solo show, right? The the Solo movie. There was virtually no force in that, I think. Well, yeah, but he what, There was the, the blind guy that. and the <laughs> Darth Maul cameo. Need to, you need to have references to things that people like, like, that aren't Disney Star Wars. So you got to look at, like, games, like... Was there any force users in, like Republic Commando, or I mean, you certainly don't play as one. Uh, or the first um, Star Wars Battlefront, I think. Well, there was that's actually Battlefront Battlefront that, a lot but not as of, playable. Not, but, but the thing is, is that there are force. I'm trying to think of like, is it? But the problem is, I know that there are plenty of characters who aren't force users, like that everybody loves, and you can yeah, pull you can't them have their adventures. Games, well, so here's, um, novels, like they're from all over the place. I was talking to Rags about this the other day because I was just reminded of it. Uh, uh, Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront 2 campaign, the original game, um, they could easily turn that into a really solid movie, but probably a TV show would be the, is it the 501st you control? Yeah. yeah. Um, if, uh, and so the challenge now is, could I make that and not have a single reference to the Force? Like, well, it's going to be difficult, because this is obviously like the, yeah, the Order 66 shit, but, you know, just for sake of experiment in your own head, if we dealt with several missions, and some of them, for example, the, uh, reopening of certain factories on Mustafar slash whatever separatist colonies by one of the leaders that escaped Anakin's, you know, killing spree. And he had an army of droids that he's reset up with a bunch of Geonosians and stuff. It's like, no force, just clones, empire against older remnants of the separatists who haven't been squashed out yet. We did several missions like that, several references to how they're having to deal with it. It's like, do you really think Star Wars fans are not going to eat the fuck up out of that? Like, that, if it was good... Don't need the force, all right. I'm okay. No, I'm happy with it. the force. It's good stuff, but you don't need it. It's and just, it's time we learn this, okay? 
It's something. It was. It was the thing that pissed me off the most about Mandalorian. The more it progressed, is I wanted a story that was divorced from like the main saga stuff with like Jedi and Sith and everything, and just more like localized on small stake stories. But they couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. It had to be about like Gotta crazy light shattering shit going on. Oh shit! And someone just mentioned. I completely forgot. Like Vader's the MCU. Vader's in Rogue One. Oh. Yes. Oh yeah. But, yeah, but right, he. Yeah. Vader, but remember, Rogue One's not Star Wars. But it has to be. It's the force. Oh wait, it has to be because he used the Force. He choked oh, someone. Oh, yeah. it's the Force. Oh rip. no! And then the scene oh, at the end. Rip. Yeah, yeah, that is rip. Uh oh. Whoops. My God, and do I fucking love that scene? Oh no. <laughs> that whole way. And scene. the blind guy no. with the Force. You know? That scene yeah. destroys the argument. It's it can't work. But incongruence. There are no Jedi in Rogue One. You don't need Jedi. He said the Sith and he said Jedi well. and Sith and the Force. Yeah, and the Force. So, so, so you only got two out of three. Well. So you need that third oh, one. No, no Jedi There's doesn't references. count. References, references um, to Jedi. Well, Jedi. But Le but, and remember, Leia's in it, and she can use a Force. Oh shit! In Not canon, yet. she's currently yeah. a Jedi of yeah, sorts. Uh -oh. <laughs> what? Uh oh, game over. Oh well. Yeah. Well, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Stargate SG One. You have Star dude. It's so fucking weird to say that like all those other sci-fi shows are all the same because the, the, if you add the Force, they become Star Wars, but without the Force, they're not. Like it's a binary of sci-fi shows. Either you have the Force or you don't. It's like what? Star Trek. I'm actually really sad he mentioned Star Trek. Star Trek has so much of a different character to Star Wars. Yeah, it goes well beyond off, the fucking right? Force. People, that would well, just listen to this off, section again, right? Like, what is Star Wars without the Force? It is Star Trek, Stargate, Star everything else. Star oh, Wars yeah, Wars. when you pile you them up, it gets worse and the worse. The Expanse. You have Battlestar Galactica. You have Stargate SG-1. You have Star Trek. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's Star shit. Wars, like, that's actually minus really the Force, lame. is Star Trek. No. Uh, that'll piss people off, right? No. That's, gonna piss that's such off. like an insult to Gene that. Roddenberry. Just no. I'm not you even know, that like familiar with Star Trek. Created. I'm not that familiar like, with Star Trek either, but from so what I understand, they're substantially different. different. And the big thing is that they're different in terms of character, like the tone of those stories and what they're about. They're so not... different. They're just so di I mean, spaceships, yeah. sure, it's sci-fi, whatever, but like that is such a broad massive genre that it, it really is insulting to Roddenberry to say that yeah you're just Star Wars without the force <laughs> I don't even yeah, I can't be insulting it's so silly like yeah, no the longer it's gone over the, the more the, I do agree with what you're saying more than like in terms of the way that he has broken it down it's just like yeah there's Star Wars and then there's these other science fiction stories it makes it all, sound like, like Star Wars is held above them all because of the force which is like that doesn't even which I is... disagree with so much of what's being said yeah, this is Star like, Wars is so. just the Force, really? Like, come on, Damn. Man. Like the vast, yeah, the majority of what the Star Wars content doesn't have any Force involved. Well, no, he's in not. It, he's so. not saying it's just the Force. It's 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 like Mola said. It's almost like the Force elevates it above everything else. Because because it, it has yeah. what everything else has, but it also has the Force. Anything, it's an, yeah, the if anything, it's like, like an anchor that it has to constant. It's cursed to constantly absolutely, drag fucking lootly. Very cursed by that. But and then there's just the fact that it's like. Yeah, you remove the Force, because I mean, it just logically follows. If you remove the Force, and then you have Star Trek, The Expanse, uh, Stargate, uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica, just it logically follows that you were saying that those four things are, like, very similar, if not yeah. the same. Which is insane. Like, just, the Expanse and Star the Trek? Like... The ex yeah, like, the idea that The Expanse and Star Trek are similar is, like, absurd. They're very different. I'm surprised Drinker hasn't exploded. Are you okay, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> I just, the the insanity of it it's like I just don't even know how to respond to it that's it plain and that's simple that's it yeah that's wow it. Well, plain and simple here. you're looking it's at so his reductive. notes it says well okay we better read this I and guess. our yeah, yeah, because he's Andor... not going. Who, who said this? Who, what is this? It doesn't what matter. Just read it. He put it on screen for us and... to read. Down. All right. Andor, Andor is, the first is live action Star Wars show. I'm ahead of you, so I'll read it. Andor is That's the first perfect. live action Star Wars show to eliminate the need for Jedi Sith or the Force itself by focusing on the day to day problems of an average citizen like Cassian. 
th- this gra- this punctuation what the hell is going on also he, he like, capitalized by for some reason yeah so, okay that's why i got confused i think that it's meant right. to be the force itself full stop by yeah. focusing on the day-to-day problems because when i read that i figured that cassie was like, like a new thought sentence. or something yeah, yeah. Well, that it was weird. yeah and it's like no by focusing on the day-to-day problems of an average citizen like cassie and star wars has become far more gritty and realistic than the mystical force has ever been that's a weird that's a very weird statement and despite there being several jedi alive holy shit <laughs> and despite there being several jedi alive during andor's timeline it must continue right yeah it's good it to. must okay yeah. so let's see maybe he reads this out maybe he reads something else this maybe is the adventure of this video <laughs> even though even though andor has jedi out there in the world Apparently while this show is going article. on what sorry not many I though from like a screen rant article okay someone mentioned that in chat they chose to ignore them okay yeah maybe everything not, that isn't in the show part is, of this narrative yeah. dude it's ignoring freaking... darth vader it's a new ignoring hope. the emperor it's ignoring all this other stuff because and, and... You, what you're you, you can't show everything it can't be about everything as, as and honestly, with thank fucking God aspects. we're not having another Jedi show. Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, well we're about to get one with Ahsoka, right? It's going to be filled with fucking Jedi and Sith. So not, yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm sure it'll be Ahsoka, great. That'll be real Star Wars, yeah. Um, But yeah, uh, A New Hope didn't have any Boba Fett. He's, he's Star really? Wars. Well, I mean, it's it... trying to remember. I have a feeling A New Hope references the Emperor as often as Andor references the Force, which is to say once or twice. I believe the Emperor's name is mentioned in Andor at least once as well, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, so if, if the Force is, or, and Jedi and the Force are, you know, classes being ignored in Andor because they're not present on the screen and they're barely referenced, then is A New Hope ignoring the Emperor by only mentioning him once or twice and never showing him by the same standard? The, the reality is that, like, the show in, an, in, in itself existing, like, cannot ignore them because what the story is about is like a logic, it, it, fo- it follows from the events that happened that were surrounding the Jedi, which is involved with the collapse of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. Like, it's it's necessarily, like, influenced by these events because Andor is a show that does actually recognize where it exists in the timeline and tries to pull references from, like, uh, other stories. It's just it's not quite in the way that he wants, I guess. It's so funny, though, because, like, I think when we uh, found out the idea that Andor's probably not going to have a Jedi in it, we were like, ooh. That was so refreshing. Yep. Finally. Oh, it's so refreshing. Yeah. I just, I'm sick of it. If it, If you'd done it well... I'd be more excited, but the simple, plain fact of the matter is that I just don't fucking care about Star or the Jedi and lightsabers. It makes you feel like shit. You, you, said it, you said it perfectly, Rags, earlier. Like, at a certain point, you have to have a fresh perspective on it. You have to do something different. Instead of just trotting out the member berries, just giving us the same um, simplistic elements that we've seen every time. Uh, just trotted out with no particular context or no thought how they fit together into a larger narrative, just putting them in there because people recognize them. What's the point in keeping doing that? I would much rather have a well-constructed story that might omit some of those elements because they're not needed to this story. Like, that's fine. You can do that. Take the heist uh, arc, right, across 4, 5, 6. If we had, uh, as part of the team, a guy called you know, Jonah Shitto, who's the brother of Glub Shitto, so you got your references in, and he's a Jedi, and during the whole thing, it's him, his job to mind trick some of the people who are at the front gate or whatever, and during the part where it all falls apart, he gets shot in the back, and down he goes, he had a lightsaber, he blocked a few shots beforehand. Does this make Andal better now? No. In this guy's mind, it does. It no. makes it more Star Wars. Well, yeah, that's, that's the correct question. Does it make it more Star Wars? Which to me is just like, what? Why? Why does there have to be a fucking Jedi in every single corner of the fucking galaxy every time? I it's like, like rats. And I think that he's he's reading a much more sort of like rats. The, the ignore thing, like as a much more like malicious thing, where it's just like, well, it's not even really ignoring them. They're oh. just not in these places. Well, I, I, as well, like, remember when I mentioned earlier, right, like, security and, and law enforcement and stuff at these, like, um, kind of outer rim planets that are not all that important. Like, it's handled by local security guys. And when the Empire show up with their stormtroopers, that's when you know shit's getting real. And it gives them so much more significance when they do. You can, you can make the same argument here with things like lightsaber 
Jedi and stuff. The fact that they're not in this particular narrative, they haven't shown up yet. I mean, God knows what will happen in season two. But it, it lends that air of, of importance to them because they're almost like beyond what's going on here. You know, and if they do come in, it's like, well, it's probably going to be a really big deal, as it should be, because they're <laughs> extremely rare. They're meant to be at this point in the history of Star Wars. It's such a fucking monkey's paw thing, too, because you know what? The next big movie in the series of Star Wars movies may very well be Rey training up new Jedi. You'll get your Jedi, and you'll fucking love it. <laughs> you'll get <laughs> it'll all be the great. Jedi you can handle. You'll be missing Andor, because it'll, it'll only get two seasons and it'll be stopped, because it's just not good enough. Not, not got enough eyes on it, unfortunately. They chose not to do it. They chose not to have anything Star Wars-y in Star Wars. Uh, no. no, that's what they have the Empire. I guess they those have the werewolves, TIE fighters just didn't exist. The well, yeah, the little exactly. fucking stormtroopers are in the show. Yeah. Are they Star Wars-y? Exactly. <laughs> like people say, the Empire. Yeah, like, and it's, it's pretty funny, right? Because this is coming from us. We, we've said, you know, like, man, we could have used a few more aliens, I think. That would have mm -hmm. been nice. A few more aliens or a few robot characters. Like, god damn, there are shit tons of, like, Star Wars material. I mean, he looked it up on Wikipedia, like, he to know what to have in there, and, and to, to have that stuff in there. I, I Like, I find it so weird, like, that whole, oh, it's got bricks in it, especially when it's like, <laughs> dude, it's still, like, this is an expansive universe got that's, bricks that's gonna have, like... <laughs> Well, it was it was really cool. Um, I can't remember. It was it was, it was Ferox. That was uh, that was a planet that mm -hmm. Andor lived on. That was a cool planet. That was like a really interesting. I remember place. first thing we thought when he was walking through that we were like, "Oh God, it's not it's not Tatooine and it's not volume it's screen." Not Tatooine. Yep. It, it, it actually like looks like interesting... a place where people have been living for a long time. It looks oh, like gosh. an industrial city, you know, like an industrial city on on a kind of barrenish, but not too barren. Yeah, planet. it's not miserable. Um, it's not great. It's just pretty. Like, okay, you know, I, people live here. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, live. it was, yeah. and and of course the fact that like it felt like a place that people lived in as he was moving through the town because it felt like people were actually going about their lives like it was even simple stuff like seeing the guys leaving um work and then putting up their gloves like sort of clocking in clocking out yeah um the different sort of places to go to like get off world like at uh, repair shops and everything it was like a lot of a lot of great texture that made that place feel like lived in and real and that was awesome to see that and like the and, and in the star wars universe which is like an expansive galaxy filled with like tons of populated planets. You're gonna see a lot of variety there. Like that variety is is welcome. If um if he was to say yes, fine, fine, fine to all of this, but I'm not saying it's bad, just not Star Wars, as you said before. Does that mean Kenobi and Boba Fett they'd be Star Wars? They'd, but be, he, they'd be Star Wars, but, but it, not maybe good. doesn't like them. And it's oh, like but, well, yeah, modern no, politics, no, though. But remember, modern politics—that's the thing. You well, maybe he'd say they don't like. count as Star Wars either. But I guess what I'm saying is, like, they got the fundamental force aspect. Yes. At that point, it's like, what is it worth to be Star Wars, but to also be shit? It's like I don't care. Like, like qualifying as Star Wars by this metric is worthless because it doesn't give you anything. It just gives you like, oh look, the force. I, I like that. Oh look, the baby is. Uh, Beating up the, he pulled a little screw out of the giant robot that was shooting at Mando because he's a Mandalorian. That's cool. Oh, I hate what Star Wars is now. <laughs> As do I. I. Hate what they, I hate what they made it. If you made it good, I'd <clears> still <throat> like it. If it was all Jedi and all lightsabers, and it was full of really cool characters and well constructed plots that made sense, and uh, man, I'd I'd probably be you know still be down for it, but. This... You didn't make that. You just made a bunch of crap. And so it has soured my taste on the Force and lightsabers and all that stuff. Just, I'm sick of it. Very true. And also, uh, Drinker must leave us. Uh, he's, got, he's, got, he's got drinks to be getting to, I assume. That's, that's all I can ever yeah, imagine. Yeah. I, the... I don't want to get too abusive and, and slurring my words too much. So, uh, yeah, it seems like a good time to finish up. Don't worry, I will let you know what you missed. <laughs> <laughs> like the... well, I, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some fantastic arguments. This is where we're going to get into the meat of it. He's going to hit you guys with some points, right, that are going to blow your minds. And I'm so going to end up telling you from your view on the next open we'll bar that I actually know. agree. Yeah. Andor is not uh, Star Wars. Yeah, certainly not yeah. real Star Wars. Not real Star Wars, and we're not real Star Wars fans either. Yep, like because it. we, yeah, we like Andor, so you know we're not Star Wars fans. So you got to choose. 
You got to choose. In any hmm. case, I feel like I haven't done this in a while. Drinka, why don't you tell everybody what you're up to and where they can find you? Uh, you can find me hanging around the nearest bar, I guess. Or a strip club, you know, one of those two. Um, but you, also, you can also find me on my YouTube channel, The Critical Drinker. And on a Thursday night, Mauler and I like to hang out. Talk about how everything time. is going great. Yeah, yeah, well, we're super positive. There's so much to like at the moment as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Like we're we're the, really that, in the season of good stuff. The Lord of Ring Golem, that's out. We could play that. I'm so excited <laughs> for that game. <laughs> I actually want to play it and stream myself doing it. I've heard it's boring <laughs> as hell, but hopefully there's enough bugs to keep you entertained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, links are in chat and description. And yes, uh, join me and Drinker on every Thursday as we talk about everything getting real great and good and awesome. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, gents. Catch you later. Absolutely. Toodle pip. Toodaloo. Bye bye. Now back to. <laughs> back to. Whatever's right, about so to happen this next. This is the definitive. This is the definitive take, by the way. This self-described yeah. definitive video on why it's not true Star Wars. It is, and and I, I think he's I coming toward he's the end of what it. he described was his biggest point as well, which is that there's not enough force in it. But this is, is nuts if he hasn't seen it. Take. Like, is he actually just going off what people have told him that there's no scene where anyone lifts anything? I hope now, not. I needed a uh, disinterested third party oh, no. to help me come up with something. So what does that mean? I went to uh, chat GPT. Oh, what? The fuck and does that mean? I asked oh. it to make me, to write me the plot for a basic generic young adult sci-fi novel. I literally don't care. I have no I fucking clue I, where this is I, going. <laughs> I just don't think it's possible to express how little I give a fuck about anything that chat GPT generates. I just do not care. I, I just, I, I have actually, my curiosity is peaked. What is this going, what point is this going to favor? Is he going to read it out and say it's basically no different than Andor? Because, you know, <laughs> how Andor could with the... no forces, like every other generic sci-fi, guys, I've proven it because I just had chat GPT write one for me. I... I guess we've made chat GPT an authority on, like, storytelling or... Listen, I think maybe you're all jumping you're... the gun. Who knows what he's about to say? This could go anywhere. I am, I'm fascinated that it, the fact that he even brought up chat GPT. What in the world is this going to be? Why young adult? Because when you read young adult novels... It's always one person against this, or one girl against that, or one. So, okay. Here's what. what? what? I don't, I don't. <laughs> That's all right. So let's be let's be very clear. That's just a fucking lie. That's it's always one all. person against something. <laughs> like I would consider The Hobbit virtually a young adult novel, and anything like that. Yeah, that's one person against the whole world, Rex. That's what that is. I mean, like, all of the stories about this, that, and the other thing, I, that's just not true at all. Like, whether it's the Lloyd Alexander just, stuff, or... I don't know, Jesus Christ. It's just funny how casually that's said. It's like, it's always a fucking person against, you know... It's just asserted <laughs> so confidently, and yet it's He's so almost wrong. described storytelling, where it's usually a character going through some form of a struggle. <laughs> at the very least, you get that. Cat GPT. All right. Came up with. The story follows a teenage protagonist who lives in a futuristic society with advanced technology and scientific breakthroughs. The protagonist is a misfit or outsider in their community, often feeling like they don't fit in or belong. One day, the protagonist discovers a hidden truth or secret about their society that leads them on a dangerous journey. So, my guess is that the plot twist is, see, this is Andor, but All right, well, I can tell like it's it's not going to be. Whether um, or not he says that, let us run with that just to see how viable it is, okay? The story follows a teenage protagonist, so... Eh, oh, eh, I, yeah. no. Lives in a uh, futuristic society, it's like, sure, it's got... Well, it was a long time ago, but I get what you mean. Yeah, fair enough. It, yeah. That's true, yeah. but it's also a pretty mundane yeah. environment that he finds himself in, like a pretty a pretty normal yeah. sort of place. Interesting and to call it... he does fit um... in. He's got family and friends, and, you know, he, he does, like, fit in. Like, one of the, one of the big uh, sort of plot elements of the early episode is him trying to maintain his fitting where in where he is and yeah. how much well, stress it causes him 
he is very much not interested in getting involved, and it's it's that he gets dragged into it very much. Yeah, uh, the unwillingly. arguably the, um, his arc for the season is choose between trying to just go with the flow and be a part of the system or to break it. Yep. That's, yeah. Exactly. Um, but then and we, he tries to go with uh, the flow. It does not work. They discover a hidden truth or secret. It's like, well, no. The the inciting incident is he gets in trouble. He yeah. gets in big mm. trouble. He does something. Two people try to rob him. He kills them. Yeah, and that puts him. So it's it's not like a hidden truth or secret. And he knows he knows the empire. Like he knows what it is. He knows how to maneuver through it. It's not like a hidden secret about it. He just doesn't want to get involved. So already, if if we ran with this being C plot twist, this is Andor first paragraph already. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the power of <laughs> ending with on a dangerous journey of self-discovery and rebellion against the status quo. It's like, yeah, sure, that applies, but you could say that about sure. Luke. Yep. So why is it bad? It's like, there's nothing wrong with that. Along the way, the protagonist meets a group of other teens, wrong, who are also fighting uh, against the system. True, but not all of them are true. doing it for the same reason. And they form a close-knit yep. bond? No, they don't actually. Nope. No, they don't. There's a lot of conflict. There's a yeah, lot it's conflict, of conflict and betrayal and, yeah. yeah. And, they, and they're very, very suspicious oh, of each like other. we talked about. There's they all have different sort of drives and motivations you've got like um it was nemec right the who wrote the manifesto mm -hmm. like very sort of ideologically minded and motivated like determined and steadfast devoted to the cause but young kind of like not super familiar with how the world works and then you had uh the opportunist in the group who was just there to make money bullshitting his way through it just to get some cash you had andor who was there pretty unwillingly willing to help out and like and, and actually like help out and um and work with the team but like pretty disinterested in a lot of ways of being involved um uh you you had a like super devoted um damn, yeah luthan got him in it. for the money luthan first got yeah, him in much. using money as a uh yeah it's a job you'll get paid this much money don't worry, guys, yeah. he's cool. Yeah. Mon Mothma's cousin, who was, like, sort of in charge, but, like, quite nervous about it all. A lot of information was withheld from her. She was kind of reluctant to actually follow through in the end. But with the nudging of, uh, of um, damn it, I wish I remembered her name. It was, like, her partner uh, with her nudging, like, because she's much more, like, focused, devoted. Her life, like, her entire life revolves around that mission. It's like you've got a, a set of people who got brought together in a situation who very much did not form a tight-knit bond. There was a lot of conflict there. Well, and we're going to continue on this track, but people have already noticed something about this set of three paragraphs that's very interesting if you think about something else. But we'll get to that in a sec, because continuing uh, the close-knit bond, they encounter advanced technology, dangerous enemies, and a moral dilemma that forces them to question their beliefs and values. That doesn't really happen in the um, in the arc with the, the... If we're going from... If we assume this is now regarding the second arc, right? The 456? It's not like he... The, the moral dilemma the and or faith. I guess you could argue maybe that. it's where it's set in stone that he's got to make a choice and he commits to, you know, not joining. Mon Mothma's coming away. The moral Running dilemma away, yeah. and, but the problem with this is that that's true. is there a story where characters don't face a moral dilemma of some form? It's like this is going to be applicable oh, to and, so and much. Also something that I'm thinking about as well. Andor's like an ensemble show. Like, yeah, sure, Andor is the main character, but there are a lot of POV characters. There's, like, a lot of the story that has yeah. nothing to do with him. Um, I think I'd argue that those are actually the most interesting parts of it as well. Andor is, is quite a blank protagonist, and that's what allows us to spend so much time looking through the eyes of people like Mon Mothma, which this little story, Precy, doesn't really account for. Like, Andor is not, mm -hmm. like, the Paul most Luthen. integral part of this story, which is slightly unconventional but quite He's, useful. Um... That, the way I see it is that he's he's like the story of a normal person getting completely radicalized, and, and you know I mean that in a sense of he goes through some pretty fucking unfair things all at once, and then he realizes something, and that he gets motivated to want to do something. He's at first more than willing to just exist and just carry on doing shit. By the end of it, he's the because Luthen's going to kill him by the end of it, isn't he? Uh, as a because he's like a liability, but then Andor's basically like no no no, no. I'm actually hoping to. Uh, join you in your fight um because when you hit the end of the heist arc andor's kind of directionless he's kind of like mm. he's got his money he's got resources of a kind he doesn't know what to do um it's it's i mean the how you know the the things with his mother and that kind of gets yeah on track it's the it's the whole prison arc that changes everything quite significantly yeah. um and so yeah i you know it, uh, i kind of agree that the he's not even someone that we draw from for significant amounts of substance until, I would say, later in the show. Um, 
a lot of what he goes through in the first and second arcs are things that he's trying to do pragmatically, right? To escape the authorities from having killed two people and to get money enough to be able to hide. These are very, like, pragmatic goals. Um, yeah, I mean, he's searching for his sister as well, isn't he? But that that's sort of the <coughs> the doomed quest that then, you know, when, yeah. when he realizes it's essentially doomed, he then, that that's the moment when he has no cause and nothing to fight for, and then Luthen sort of presents the alternative, which is something that you could, you know, you might not even be fully signed up to by the end, but at least it gives you something toward which to aim. And you might be nihilistic about it, which is sort of way we pick up with Andor in Rogue One, but at least it gives you something, some sort of direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just how he got there. Um... So then the final paragraph is, ultimately the protagonist and their allies work together to overthrow the corrupt government. So uh, Andor dies and all of his friends die with the Empire more than in power. That's the end of his story. But they've managed to do something that will likely lead to the end of the Empire. Uh, they usher in a new era of freedom and equality. No, he doesn't, he doesn't live mm -hmm. to see that. Like, you know, if we're being fair here, like, Luthen is probably going to die. And part I, of, part of his... Certainly. Part of his speech is about how he, he won't be seeing the era that he's trying to create. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the story ends with the protagonist finding their place in the world and feeling a sense of belonging. He's dead at the end. <laughs> 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 Having made a significant impact on this society and paving the way for a brighter future. Yes, arguable, yeah. He, he helps pave the way. Now, um, whether or not that's applicable to Andor is an interesting question. I don't think it really is. I think if we're being generous here, you can yeah. say there's pieces, but come on. Um, parts in the most general however, sense. However, if... if you think about a different story, maybe that of uh, A New Hope, uh, <laughs> and read this again. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a bit uh... ill. Um, the story follows a teenage protagonist who lives in a futuristic society with advanced technology and scientific breakthroughs. Like, even though he's on Tatooine, they've got advanced technology, and of course the same universe Star Wars, so if it counts for Andor, it counts for Star uh, A New Hope. The protagonist is a misfit or outsider in the community, often feeling like they don't fit in or belong. It's like, ding, of course, that's Luke. One day, the protagonist discovers a hidden truth or secret about this society that leads them on a dangerous journey of self-discovery and rebellion against the status quo. He learns about the Force. Mm. So it's an it element does, but, of the universe that he wasn't aware of previously. I mean, it is. That's not the instigating part, though. The instigating part is the death of his... That's parents, true. Um, yes, yeah, so you wouldn't say it led him... Uh, to that thing, but I'd say it's more applicable to Luke than it is to Andor. Mm -hmm. uh, along the way, the protagonist meets a group of other teens who are also fighting against the system. Wouldn't call them teens, but the you know the rebellion, and uh, they are much more tight knit as a bond, and they navigate challenges and obstacles. Uh, they encounter advanced technology and dangerous enemies. That'd be the Empire, and moral dilemmas that force him to question their beliefs and values. That'd be his father. Ultimately, the protagonists and their allies work together to overthrow the corrupt government, the Empire, an authority, uh, or authority figure controlling the society and usher in a new era of freedom and equality. Yep. The story ends with the protagonists finding their place in the world and feeling a sense of belonging, having made a significant impact on the society and paving the way for it. Yes. I'd say that's way more applicable to Luke. It is. Or at least, well, the last bit was until the sequel trilogy established that they didn't usher in a new period of equality and peace <laughs> because nothing actually changed. But yes. yeah, otherwise, it's completely applicable to Luke. Um... So, knowing that, I was just like, alright, so let's see what he has to, to conclude about these three paragraphs. Self-discovery and rebellion, there's that word, against the status quo. Yes. Along the way, the protagonist meets a group of other teens who are also fighting against the system. And they form a close-knit bond as they navigate the challenges and obstacles thrown their way. Asteroids. They encounter advanced technology, dangerous enemies, and moral dilemmas that force them to question their beliefs and values. Yeah. Ultimately, the protagonist and their allies work together to overthrow the corrupt government or authority figure controlling their society and ushering a new era of freedom and equality. The story yeah, ends with the protagonist <laughs> finding their place in the world and feeling a sense of belonging, having made a significant impact on their society and paving the way for a brighter future. Yeah. The OT, it really is. With a Written little by peaking? George Lucas. That's Rogue One. Oh, Rogue that's Rogue One. One. Oh, that's Rogue One. Go back a sec. Um, oh. Uh, oh, consider me cool. surprised. Yeah, I was not expecting that. Okay. <laughs> not expecting that. Well, so that would be for... Uh, for um, It's still more uh, applicable to, to A New Hope than Rogue One. Yeah. It's it's quite applicable to a new hope because now it's uh, the hidden truth about his, well, wait, his because lineage. Because the story ends with the protagonist finding their place in the world. It's like well, the same still applies. 
Well, uh, so running it again there. with Rogue One, it, it would be um, what's her name? I've forgotten. I Jin I Erso. Can't. Jin Erso, Jin, that's it. Yeah, that's right. So, so teenage protagonist. Well, she's not teenage. Futuristic society, but Star Wars fine. Protagonist and misfit or outsider. She's a m bit of a misfit. Yeah. Um, one day the protagonist discovers a hidden truth or secret about the society. N no, she gets drafted essentially. It's not about them finding their place so much as them changing the world around them. I'm thinking just just on the hidden truth point. Is that um, her father's message when she meets Saw Gerrera. She's already been drafted by the point she meets Saw Gerrera, though. Yeah, so... she's already on the, the sort of the road there, so... It's, yeah, it's slightly skewed, but... Um, everyone she meets up with, fucking... She does not... They're not a close-knit, bonded group. Uh, she fights with Andor quite a bit. They, and part of the problem with Rogue One is they don't get to know each other enough before they'll die. Yeah. So, wouldn't call it close-knit. Um, Andor's going to shoot her father while she's off to rescue him, so it's not exactly... Uh... The close knit group who's fighting for, for a no. common cause and goal at that point. And they work together to overcome. Well, I mean, we went all through this with how Andor's story ends in that film. It's the same as Jin, so it doesn't. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Square, uh, peg, round hole. A little tweaking? That's Rogue One. Also a, a New Hope. With a little tweaking? That's Andor. Okay. Oh, that's the plot of Andor. Virtually no okay. tweaking well, okay. at New Hope. Well, so, I was, was going to say, the right, least tweaking right, you need to do right. makes it a new hope. Yeah, it's closer to a new hope than anything else. With a little tweaking? That's the plot of Battlestar Galactica. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> how can, how can you... That's not true. That but if he's... Be... I don't know much about Battlestar Galactica, but that's not true, is it? But if he spotted that, how is he not spotted... Because this is the thing, if someone said, do you really think that describes a new hope? I'd be like, no, not really. But if you're going to get broad, as broad as he's being, you'd have to it's say broad, yes. broad, but yeah. It broadly with a little tweaking, the, yeah. that's the plot of every sci-fi show out there. Oh, this getting, dude, this is getting so that's, fucking weird. How is it? Like, how is? That, how the fuck is this like Star Trek? How is it the Expanse? That, that is, like, that is a. Fuck? That's actually a great point. Sorry. How is that Star Trek? Planet. Star Trek is even remotely. Like, wow. What is happening? Because the, the other implication this is now basically Blade Runner. is the what what George did that was so special is he took that basic template and then threw the force in there and it made the most specialist sci-fi fantasy in history. It's the secret ingredient that just makes it shine, you know? <laughs> the little tweaking, it's EFAP. The little tweaking, it's EFAP. That's very true. So, how can this be Star Wars? <sighs> Come How can on. it be Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek, Stargate, Star Galaxies? How can it be all of those? How can something that doesn't have the main element of Star Wars be Star Wars? Ooh. You can't. It's not. You cannot have a grounded and gritty Star Wars when Star Wars is a fantasy sci-fi show. Um, wait, you can't. Wait, like, sorry, I'm, what was I'm, the sentence? You I'm, can't have a. Fantasy, kind of a you, you can't, can't be grounded a... and gritty if it's sci-fi fantasy. Why the fuck can't you? I don't. I, I don't about, like. I what about Game of Thrones? I don't know That's who wrote gritty the rule. And realistic, but it's also fantasy. Like whoever put this into law, I, I'd like to speak to them because I, I want to know why this this got made as a rule. Yeah, there's tons of grit and realism that goes into like the Lord of the Rings into, you know, House of the Dragon, into these shows that have fantasy and fantastic elements Willow. into them. I mean, Willow you can make is... The argument that, you know, by comparison to a lot of 60s, okay. 70s science fiction, you know, Star Wars itself, original Star Wars, is comparatively dark and gritty because it portrays a lived-in universe under a dictatorial regime, uh, as opposed to sort of this shiny, pristine, spotless utopia that so much sci-fi goes went mm -hmm. in for back in the day. It's already more gritty than any comparable sci-fi of its era. You've got to find... There's got to be someone from back then who said the reason Star Wars doesn't work is because they try to combine, like, a, a lofty sci-fi and fantasy ideas with gritty, down-to-earth, like, understandable brick-and-mortar ideas, which you can't do. They are incompatible. Instead of... There's no Instead of you saying brick and mortar, I almost thought you said Rick and Morty. <laughs> Rick like, and Morty I mean, ideas. <laughs> it's Rick and Morty ideas. No fantasy in Andor. Hmm. There's no fantasy in Andor. For some reason, that's more the most compelling thing he said to me in this, like, this whole two videos, because I'm like, there is sci-fi, but there's a lot less fantasy elements, I would probably agree, but that's... You know, like, what would you guys highlight as the biggest elements of the fantasy in Star Wars? 
uh, the biggest elements of the fantasy of Star Wars? What makes it a fantasy more than anything else? I mean, I mean, the only thing would be the Force, wouldn't it? Everything else is some sort of technology or scientific explanation, but the Force is like the, is essentially magic. Was it spaceships? Yeah, I guess I mean, the, the, te the technology is relatively fantastical next to hard science fiction. But there's no real attempt to explain until you get hyperfueled and all that bollocks. But there's no real attempt to explain sort of you know the mechanics of spaceships, how lightsabers work. It's not hard science fiction. It does rely on a little bit more leaps of imagination and good faith and fantastical elements to allow for its technology to slide. But I mean, I'm not sure that really much. rises to the level um... of fantasy. No, I mean, momentum in space, like stuff like that, lightsabers existing, the forces, you're right, the force is by far the biggest one. Um, but, you know, oh, you mean like, where they talk about like the crystals and uh, you know, I guess together the thing is, it depends, machine it depends and... if yeah, we define like science fiction as necessarily hard science fiction or if there's yeah. room for essentially, yeah, yeah, I mean, Soft let's be real, fiction. like we're, we're, yeah, we're playing with our reality a little bit here just to make it work. Well, and there's a question. Of something like the Rancor, does that does that feel more fantasy or more sci-fi? I, I have no idea. It's hard to say. It's like, well, it, uh, I mean, you know, alternate worlds in the middle of space could have all kinds of creatures in them. Does that automatically make it fantasy? And it's like, well, I guess I've never thought about it. I've never thought about all the tick boxes for what makes something... More defined by what's around it than it's itself. These definitions, almost. like... Yeah, it becomes complicated, and I, that's kind of where I wanted to get to. <laughs> where it's like... Uh, so and or not being fantasy enough is just like God. This feels like why are we here? You know, mm -hmm. why can't we talk about how well written the characters are? How much it supports the overall was, world of Star Wars? When I'm here watching the Battle of Helm's Deep, I'm like, where the fuck's all the magic? This is just like arrows and swords and shit. What the it's fuck? Too gritty. I thought this was fantasy. The Force is sci-fi because of Metaclorians. Oh no. There's no fantasy in Rogue One. You know where there is fantasy? Episodes one through six. Oh, there oh, you go. Prequels got to mention. Okay. Prequels, you the have prequels count. Okay. The Jedi. Yeah, but the, the prequels suck. And the Force. And also They're... the sequels count. And also the sequels are absolutely very fantasy. They're dragging. They're still dragging that anchor, and they suck. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like it's. If if he actually was to say like yeah the sequels definitely qualify way more as Star Wars than Andor does it's like oh I mean there's there is a there is a graveyard and a and 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 even past that there is a a massive you couldn't name all of the movies that are super super fantasy where it's just like you have no idea what the fuck is going on where also, there's just yeah, no grounding to reality. And they do, uh, they talk about kyber crystals and Jedi in uh, Rogue One, and you have, you know, the Forces with me guy. You know, it's not. Yeah, the place where there's not prominent. nothing in there. There are other components at play, but it is surrounded by the Force. Without the Force, not really there would be surrounded. No no. So much of the OT but is not the Force. The Force is surrounded by the mon it's surrounded by the secular stuff. The Force is the parts that have the whole world surrounding it. Like, if the Force disappeared from the Star Wars universe, it would just carry on without the Force, right? But if, but you can't just leave the Force elements there. You'd have to completely restructure the world from the ground up. Well, we, we know plenty of the world of Star Wars has to operate as though the Force isn't even a thing. A lot of them don't even know what it is in the OT. So yeah, I don't even think yeah. it's real. I mean, Han Solo thinks that he didn't think it's he thinks real it's bullshit. when they first met. It's just, yeah, it's an old bunch of old nonsense. Fire to fight against. Hooey. The EU, which Disney uh, decanonized, but they're now reaching back and cannibalizing it so they can have more content because they can't come up with an original idea to save their lives. No, they have well, original they did. ideas. They, did. they uh... tried to do an original ideas. You hate it. You, you. Well, I don't even know if you hate it. You haven't seen it. I guess. I got. I don't even know. They if also, anything, Disney is doing the opposite. They also but have the original to... idea of taking the superficial of what happened in the EU and then you know butchering it. But then they if did he, that with if the he's normal about stuff to too. To go on and make a like a full throated defense of the EU, he will have to grapple with the fact that the EU contains a huge number of stories where the Jedi are not present and the Force is not heavily involved. So. He will have to be more selective about what he's quoting from the EU because 
yeah, th th there are like Boba Fett comics where there are no Jedi there. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the EU which is not tied to the Force in exactly the way that he criticizes Andor, for example, for me. I would make a defense of Andor as saying that Andor is probably the most like the old expanded universe model of storytelling of anything that Disney's put out. Um, one of the, the virtues of it is also one of its pitfalls, which is that you don't actually need to watch it, as I think we said right at the beginning. If you don't like it, if it's not your thing, if it's too slow for you, if you don't like the tone, if it's boring to you, fine. You don't have to see it to understand everything else. That doesn't make it not Star Wars any more than a, an equivalent comic in the EU you didn't like wasn't part of the EU. Um, you, you, I, it's probably stupid to demand consistency of this person, but you know it would be nice. They, you, you go back to Darth Bane mm -hmm. and the rule of two. Mm -hmm. That's dumb, though. <laughs> he Shut up, decided that two Sith were going to be it. And those two Sith were going to manipulate galactic events so that one day a Sith would be able to rule the galaxy. One of those two, because it would be difficult. It you could have three Sith manipulating, or four, or even like a whole bunch of them, because that would be, that would just be. Well, dumb. so uh, I don't know if Lil Patoon or someone in chat knows, but wasn't there like a great culling of Sith on a planet or something? Coraban, I think it was. Yeah. Which, I've, whenever I've heard people describe it to me, I was just like, what? There are things in the expanded universe that sound very silly. I'm going to put it that way. Oh yeah, there, there is a lot of silly stuff in it um there is some good stuff in it as well uh but you know there's a i think lucas tiered it didn't he? he had like a gold star system gold star silver star bronze star gold was officially canon silver was sort of semi-canon and bronze was kind of just there the equivalent of legends today um but I, I i've been ages since i read almost any of it though so i'd have to sort of go back to the caravan stuff but mm -hmm. i think you play through it in knights of the old republic um but you sort of have the option to bring that place down it depends on your moral decisions of character Palpatine is the culmination of that Sith working. Okay. Okay. Not only did they manipulate the government and the economics and everything else going on, mm. but they you they had to use the force. They had to use the dark side to help them get things done. Okay. You can't do that, that without the force. You can't so, manipulate what, governments without just, the force. Why, why are we even talking about this? I mean, I mean, what about all of the things that are happening in that universe that aren't those two? What about that? Is there anything interesting happening? Is it just like no, no none of that's interesting? That's boring. It's well, not Star Wars. A galaxy full of planets and civilizations and cultures and technologies and wars and conflicts and we. It has to be about these these fucking Sith people with their force whatevers making their even, silly noises. Many of Palpatine's most consequential actions did not require the Force. They were his political machinations. The reason that the Army of the Republic is created is because he and his bureaucrats Jar -Jar. play off of Jar Jar Binks' good intentions. They essentially just manipulate him based on his character to sign or to sign through uh, an incredibly short-sighted militaristic bill. Um, then he, you know, he manipulates the Senate. The reason he's not detected by the Jedi is the Force stuff, the dark side nebulously clouding their vision and all that. But his great skill isn't really using the Force to sway people's minds. It's his political machinations, because, of course, a politician is the person who brings an end to the glory days of the Republic. Yeah, I've, I've heard there's fighting over that for Star Wars fans as to whether or not how much Palpatine used the Force to, you know, like mind control his way, get into different parts. Because, like, I think a lot of people don't like the idea that he used the Force to do it because they like the idea that he was smart enough to manipulate, you know, a lot of different events to push things in place to get him to where he was, which. Again, I would I would have more respect for that kind of storytelling than every single time Palpatine had a problem politically. Went, let's have a meeting together, one on one in this room. But then he just holds up his arm and he's like, "You agree with me?" And they go, "Okay." And then it's like eventually becomes emperor. It's like, yeah, that's not really as interesting as he like actually did you know, different operations, move different pieces around the board, all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, part of what's annoying about about this is um, we follow so many characters in in the OT that are just non Force users that are pivotally important. Han Solo is the reason both Death Stars blow up. Uh, I, I'm not saying the only reason, but he's he's a huge portion for why both of them were destroyed. He doesn't yep. fucking use the Force. He thinks it's a joke. Like, why are we pretending like it's it's like this thing that just cannot be divorced from any moment of Star Wars? Totally can. I mean, the, I mean, the Force had nothing to do with the escape from Hoth. You know, with all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I don't know. I... I 
I guess it's a shame that you, you that that he is focused so hard on the force element when um yeah I uh it seems very limiting to what Star Wars is. The Empire probably wouldn't exist. There would be no Star Wars. You could you could write the story to where the force isn't necessary. It just happened this way because that, that's what the story is. But if you wanted to make a story like this where well, I mean, that's every other story about political subversion. It doesn't involve magic. It's about, like, what? Well, that's what, like, essentially Game of Thrones is almost, not what, 90 what percent? Just people Talking, getting yeah. alliances and backstabbing and creating treaties and defensive pacts and marriages and bloodlines and controlling this and that. It's like that. Let's not pretend it's some novel concept that you need to have these mystical elements to have political... Well, you do if you want it to be Star you know, Wars, right? See, when Tarkin is, like, making his political orders to, you know, crush rebellions and stuff, it's all, it's all about the Force, kind of. It totally is. It's not like the Death Star represents a really cold, mechanical, like, overthrowing of, or response almost to the power of nature. So, trying to keep the Jedi and the Sith and the Force out makes it not Star Wars. Uh-huh. That's what I got. That's, That's it. Nothing. Let the debate away. <laughs> We're going to talk about this in the comments, I'm sure. Oh, we've been debating for a while. It's all good. I mean, I, I guess. We've been, we've been pulling a bit of weight on this one, though. These were a lot of assertions made without any claims um just like this is how it is so that's why it is how it is that way it's just very compelling um no sure nothing into the true fan stuff nothing into you know I was expecting star more wars, star wars really yeah that's uh that was yeah 17 minutes and i mean well, well maybe he'll pull a real banger out here in the last minute but he's like know. quick fire round let me know Am I off my rocker? Yes. yes. Am I completely yes. miles away from the truth? Or yes. mm -hmm, are you guys with me? What's and to be I with? speaking truth and you see my point of view and you're like, yep, you know what? What, your point of view that if you remove you got it. like for the force from Star Wars, it's Star Trek. <laughs> There's not a lot. That, no, for you. This it's is not what I would call a very compelling video. Um, if expand. anyone... I can't imagine there's anyone who agrees with you who didn't already go in agreeing with you. Um, I have no idea how this would be convincing to anybody. If anything, it makes you think about why they wouldn't agree with you. On the head. Please let me know in the comments what you think. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers. I want to thank you guys. You guys are yeah. great. I appreciate every each and every one of you. Yay. We are growing this, this small little stuff. channel, and I'm happy... To be able to bring videos like this to you guys. Think how much better I'm, the video would I'm be if you'd you're... watched Andor. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you'd got some references and explained why, oh, well, this happened and this happened, so it's not real Star Wars. Because real Star Wars is this, 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 and this, and mm -hmm. it's this way because of these things. And if you take these parts away, it stops being Star Wars. Whereas I'm basically of the opinion that, well, I guess anything by definition that takes place in the Star Wars universe is Star Wars. Um... I, but mostly yeah uh, you know and it can even be begrudgingly Basically, right yeah. like the sequels are oh, they yeah. star wars like well yeah yeah there's yeah they're star wars they sure are. i don't want it to be Star Wars. Like, it's kind of it's no joy in it but, it feels like yeah. a sister argument to the what is canon like well any meaningful definition is probably going to involve who has the rights to the ip or what you consider in your own head and it's totally vi viable to choose either i suppose but you know, for example, if I said uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull can't count as Indiana Jones because it doesn't have... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like what element that almost comes across as superficial that is present in the first three, but not in that one. It's like a younger Indiana Jones. If you don't have that, you're not Indiana Jones. Like, oh. And then it, it makes you think, like, well, that could work, though. You could make that work. Um, and so I was like, why do you say it then? And it's like, well, because I just think it's so fucking awful. I wish it weren't. We don't. We don't say like this random fan fiction we found in the middle of the dark web made by you know John Smith three two one about Indiana Jones is not Indiana Jones. Like nobody says that. But you only say it about the stuff that is officially canon because of how fucking awful it is. You don't want it to be. Um. Obviously, the reason we break down a lot of the stuff like the sequels, or we're gonna we're gonna talk about Dial of Destiny. I can guarantee that shit. 
Why? Because that's the newest entry to who owns the IP to that wonderful franchise that's going down in flames. And so, uh, by that logic then, is Andor Star Wars? It's like, well, yeah, and it's good to be that that's Star Wars, because it's, it's like the closest thing we've gotten to substantive fucking content from the Star Wars IP in forever. Like, you know. I guess that closes out this video. What else we got? Uh, hopefully, this will be the last video I need to make about why Andor is in Star Wars. Dude, just watch it. <laughs> like, uh, like, I don't know, man. You're, this video is shit. I don't know what to say. It's There's nothing in here that even approaches compelling. Um, it probably damages your point of view more than anything if, like, else. Um, if he said he was making a follow-up video once he checks out a bunch of blah, blah, I'd just be like, please just watch it. I know that it's going to be a painful 12 hours because there's no force in it or however long it takes, but just watch it. I'd be, I, I would actually genuinely like to know what he thought if he was to watch it. Yeah, this, right, this video, if he actually had a bunch of references and things, could have been, while not correct, interesting. So, I don't know. This will be the video I refer everyone back to. Oh, yeah. When no. someone says Andor is Star Wars. Uh, so, you just said it isn't. If you're watching from the future. No, I, mean, I guess he refers to the people who say that to this. Yeah. Hello. Well, like, if someone well, says I'm Andor is Star Wars, he will refer them here. Yeah, but all he's saying is basically that it isn't, because, like, no force. And... Uh, he said there was no force, and he said that it has modern audience appealing some, writing. Some... That's what that's what kills it. From the past. If you're watching today, thank you for... Well, House of the... Like, we take a show like House of the Dragon, right? There's a mm -hmm. lot in there that appeals to modern audiences. Same thing with, um... Like know, what? Like Arcane. Well, using Arcane. his standard of um, there are lesbians. Bad. There are lesbians in both <laughs> Arcane and House of the Dragon. So. Lesbians. I was thinking his preferred tactic is I found an actor saying something which right. is arguably unwise. So House of the Dragon. I don't remember if it was one of the writers or one of the Sabotnik. actors who said of the um, the, it was sort of Miguel the, the, the baby scene it. that it's yeah it's it's kind of redolent of the current American issues around Roe versus Wade, for example. Uh, um, I have by, no by which... fucking idea how it does. <laughs> no, like, okay. it's the same situation where you're like, shut up. <laughs> Stop ruining the show. I was like, how? What? What? You made that up. You you just lied. You're a you liar. Made that up. You just it, you just lied. If you That's buy into the true. forced birth narrative, I guess you could. I you don't like it. It's, it's so it's such a bullshit lie. Like they made all of that shit. That would have been written well before the Roe v Wade stuff kicked up. It, they're mm -hmm. just like trying to adopt it and be like, see, we're relevant. We talk about it. it's like the show is good. Okay, you don't need to. Do all that shit. Just say the characters are great and the story is awesome and it's got good music and awesome sets and great acting. What I mean, boy, oh boy. We were talking about earlier, right? Like Patty talking about the character, his values, what he was going through and stuff. Like, oh, that's great. When the fucking director is like, you know, Roe v. Wade? <laughs> we we kind of covered that in the show. It's like, shh, 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 shh. Just that's don't. Uh, <laughs> I'll make you cry watching me walk to a chair. And he did. I, I did have a question that was sort of the back of my mind about House of the Dragon, which is that, you know, Game of Thrones, of course, famously does not end particularly well. Mm -hmm. House of the Dragon, I, I don't know if it was hotly anticipated, but it gained a huge viewership over time because people watched it, were pleasantly surprised and stuck with it. What yeah. is there the difference between that and Andor then? What, why, why did the audience I... latch onto one and not the other? Um, I think part of the reason is... So I, I, I think I alluded to it earlier, but I think that unfortunately, Disney has the audience they cultivated for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, if Disney makes a show that's really good and thoughtful and has good actors and neat themes and all that sort of thing, like that, like why would Star Wars, why would a modern Star Wars audience like that? It's not full of references. It's not full of stupid fucking dumb action. It's not like poorly paced. It's not, you know, it, it's Andor is like the antithesis of what, you know what what star wars is currently so yeah i can see why star wars audiences wouldn't like it and that's that's really unfortunate but the people who are interested in game of thrones and like fantasy dramas and you know political intrigue and that sort of thing they want what house of the dragon did and it executed it well um so i think that has a big i think it has a big uh, thing in it like if, if you're if you're the kind of person who sees star wars and goes like the like star wars written as a new show or you you hear about a new star wars show and you go "Ooh, a new star wars thing we're gonna have to see that then it's not gonna be like any star wars around it and you are not gonna like it very possibly 
But if you're into House of the Dragon stuff, and it, like, let's say you really liked Game of Thrones and you hated the ending, and you hear that there's a new Game of Thrones show, you're like, oh boy, I, I do like it when Game of Thrones was good. You know, I really, really liked it. So, you know, hopefully if it's like that, I'll really like House of the Dragon. And it seems that people really did. If after Game of Thrones... it was Thrones... very reminiscent of Game of Thrones in its heyday. If after Game of Thrones wrapped up, they had Book of uh, Duncan Egg or uh, Eddard Stark, the TV show, and they were both horrible, like everyone hated the fuck out of them. Yeah, I think then going like House of the Dragon is like... Because the thing about House of the Dragon is um, as Game of Thrones, like almost on a superficial level, fans, like what has it got? It's like, it's all about the Targaryens and dragons. It's like, ooh, I like Targaryens and dragons. It's got Matt Smith in it. Ooh, I like him from the Doctor Who and the other things that I have seen him in, in which, like, like Morbius. I'm a big fan of his work. I like Morbius is not a sentence I've heard. <laughs> um, and you know, and then you get the trailers, and you're like, you know, what? Yeah, I can give this a shot. Meanwhile, like, there's just no. We went over this. There's no hook for Andor, and the best time to have released it would have been right after Rogue One. That that was its slot, and it probably would have been way more successful and, and well received. But Star Wars is gas is at an all time low. Uh, and they're starting to realize that because he didn't even say the numbers for Mando were failing. It's like, oh shit! It's, it's it, didn't it not pull the numbers of Book of Boba Fett? That was the realization they had. They were like, oh, yeah, I, think, I yeah. believe it. It did worse than Obi Wan uh, and Book of Boba Fett. I think so. Like Star Wars is going the same way uh, as like, I guess, what, name another like Doctor Who. That you could argue Doctor Who is in serious trouble. It's on, um, it's on life support, it essentially. Like it, it, seems like it's it looks like it's it's too. about to get the defibrillator, and if it doesn't, you know, jump it back to life, it might just be proper dead. So you know, like Star Wars, if they make another Ray movie and it's awful, and then they release Mando season four and it's awful, it's like you you Marvel will be doing this eventually. They they need every last banger they can find, and they can't seem to produce any. Um, you know, like it, 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 audience uh, critical acclaim, at least Guardians got higher than they've had in, in forever, but that's not happening again. At least not anytime soon. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it, There's just different uh, sort of scenes that they've been released into. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the other thing I think House of the Dragon has that Andor didn't was um, uh, I think it hit the ground faster than Andor did. A lot of people gave Andor three episodes, and uh, that wasn't enough to hook him in. I guess it was a bit slow-paced. It took its time. I'm happy to concede that. It, but, it's uh, just... Uh, but yeah, it took its a time to get to where it needed to get to. If you do three for House of the Dragon, it's um, you've already got the uh, Stepstone yeah. Wars done at that point. For sticking around this long and, and watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, you bet. I will see you on the next video. <laughs> he oh, kept yeah, it for the it's outro, it's yeah. The loud music. I love it. Well, all right, yeah. That means if you watch a playlist, you get to hear it twice. I've got nothing that I really want to develop further than go watch it first. Uh, just go watch it. I don't care if yeah, you hate every episode. Yeah. Go watch it first. Like, it feels like uh, that was like a complete waste of time. Really, <laughs> like fucking hell. Like if I, I don't know. Like we achieved nothing. We got nowhere. Those, we achieved plenty. We got to discuss else. all kinds of we concepts. Had a, we had a great we, chat. We, sure, but I guess what I'm saying is if, like, you didn't have anybody to talk to about the video, what do you gain from that? Nothing. Oh, yeah, that video is extremely... <laughs> yeah, I think it, you lose it, information because it's, it's kind of I misleading. It's, I think it's... It's just, um, like, the argumentation was really vacuous and, like, not... It, it, it just didn't follow. Like, there were a lot of sweeping conclusions drawn based on limited information and, like, bizarre sort of non-sequitur arguments. Um, I did not like that. What I've got now for us to, to follow up is something that was shared a while back on the subreddit. That's how I was made aware of it. And I kept it, and I felt like this is the best time. It's, uh, it's, it's a video of Tony Gilroy being on a podcast called the X-Ray Vision Podcast. He talks about what he was doing with Andor. Now, considering everything you heard in those two videos, let's put it against what the man himself says about uh, the show after being asked questions about it. I reckon this should be relatively interesting. Let's see what we got. Mm -hmm. right. The great thing about this show is you can sort of needle drop and, and do a, I can take 
you know, we can take something from the Haitian Revolution. We can take something from here. Take something from the from the Russian Revolution. So that's all. That's the beauty of it, and that's, well, that's not very modern my politics, way is, is it? Really Haitian Revolution. That's relatively Haitian modern. Come on, nineteenth <laughs> century. That was nineteenth century, right? Yeah, he's you're asking me like I know. I don't know. I, know, I, you know, what? I hope you know. I I I just I hope everyone had a good time. Yeah. Your character. What happens next to the people you care about? I'm making you care. About. I think this is like a Tony Grillroy. If you're going on this X-ray Vision podcast with 28,000 subs, you know you should come talk to us. Come to EFAP. Oh. Come on to EFAP, and we'll we'll chat with you about Andor, and we'll explain to you why. Uh, we'll we'll tell you the top five things you could do for season two to make it true Star Wars. I don't we'll care if it's true right Star Wars. Path. I just want it to be actual Star Wars. Yeah, v verifiably Star Wars. Definitely okay. Star Wars. I have no idea what the copyright situation is here. I'm just going to be vaguely careful. Yeah, question mark. No clue. Yeah, yeah sure. This just sounds like non-copyrighted yeah. music. <laughs> do, 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 do. Dump, da, da, da. Just generic. Tony, thanks sort so much of, for joining us. Uh, I think one of the things that's really knocked Rosie and I out about your story is how it uh, shows how regular people. Not. That seems like a really odd place for a PlayStation Five. Oh, there it is. On yeah. bedside table? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's an odd place for a PlayStation 5. Now why I'm starting to think, like, why, where's why, the TV? Where's, is yeah, there... that's that's what I'm thinking. Where's the TV for this PlayStation 5 that's just sitting there by the bed on the, by the wall? Because I have, um, I have a clock on my bedside table. Alarm clock. I, yeah, I've got a little, yeah. Maybe she has a really, really long HDMI lead. <laughs> I, th that might be, I think that's it. Maybe. I think yeah, the the logic is I can replace table. the discs right here from my bed. Like yeah. Yeah, I don't even have to get up to change what game I'm playing, mm. which is I can't imagine doing that myself, but that's a really it's a modern world we you trying to, we live in. They trying to start up a meme there in chat with a little tweaking. It's a nice setup. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily better than this know, guy's Jedi, hotel room. space wizards etc uh, would get enmeshed in a fight like this would either rebel or decide to uh, join the forces that would oppress the rebellion what was the genesis of this story uh well i mean it, it started from uh you know the concept from uh from lucasfilm which was that they they were interested in doing a prequel from rogue one and doing uh you know the five years of cassian andor's story before rogue one and so that was that was the very first that was the that was the buy-in and then you know what's your version of that i think they tried they did try a couple of the versions of it with different approaches my attitude about it sort of from the sidelines along the way was it seems to me it's pretty obvious what you have to do if you have this incredibly accomplished uh character in rogue one who is you know the tactical leader the 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 the, the person that the alliance trusts to go on the most important mission possible and a guy who exhibits all these incredible leadership skills along the way tactically and he changes his mind and he lies and he does all the things that a leader has to do on a mission like that and then the guy gives his life for everybody mm. willingly it's a generous view of the characterization yeah i think but it's a bit generous. allow it like i get what you're trying to say you got to gas the, up uh cassian a little there. bit when you're talking about how you made a prequel yeah. show you know gassian andor <laughs> Yeah. Well, who who is that person? So my idea is, I said, well, you want to if you're going to do a show about that person, you know they're going to what's going to happen to them. You want to take them as far away from that as possible. Five years ago, mm. you want to have a show about becoming. Yeah. Well, our show, in many ways, is about becoming. It's a revolution becoming a revolution. It's about Cassian Andor becoming a revolutionary and then becoming a leader. It's about a lot of people becoming different things. So. And when it came to. You knew you were going to show the becoming. So when it came to building the world, one of the things that's kind of blown us away, Star Wars has always been analogous, but this feels like a show that has a lot of very radical things to say about building a rebellion and the becoming of a rebellion and the kind of world that encourages a rebellion, a world with horrific prison labor, you know, a world that oppresses the most vulnerable. Could you speak a little bit about building that world that would encourage Cassian to become the person that we see in, in Rogue One? Well, canonically, in Star Wars, in the five years, Ooh. I have a five-year tranche 
a writer talking about what's canon and trying to. He probably and, and read that, that off Wikipedia. That doesn't count. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was gonna um, say, doesn't he have care. more trouble? Because you know, talking about earlier about him, his characterization of the characterization of Andor in Rogue One being a bit generous. I was. He must have had quite a difficult job with Andor a character in in this show because Andor is so sort of lowly and, and non-present even in Rogue One. Like he's not really building a character toward a great moral height because that's the journey he has to start going on when Rogue One happens. And I, I sort of thought that might have been why they spent longer building up everything around him than really building up the character himself because they can't do too much work with him without treading on the toes of the film that comes after. I think that you're right, and I think that he has to talk around that because Andor, it, what he, what we're doing, it seems, is reducing him down to neutral man, and he's going to become guy who wants to take out the Empire by the time we hit Andor, uh, Rogue One. It's like, yeah, that shouldn't be too difficult to do. He's going to have a couple of experiences that get him there, but ultimately it's not going to be that complicated, at least not compared to someone like uh, Mon Mothma or Luthen, who've got a shit ton more going on, all these different networks, and like uh, the way that the struggles and weights of different pressures coming at them and going this way and the other, uh, Andor is like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say it. it's, it's not bad. It's just very straightforward what you have to do with him. Because, um, you know, the implication for what he said is like, we're going to see him learn to be like all leadership skills. We're going to see him learn to become a skilled uh, liar or a skilled blah, blah, blah. And it's like, not really. We, you know, he's, he's pretty okay at a lot of stuff because he's just a general handyman, but he's also just trying to survive the situations he's put in. And he's mostly a gunslinger, you know, in, in all of them. Which is okay. It's just that uh, it's going to motivate him to, you know, be in the position he is in Rogue One. But I don't think you can make... That doesn't sound that enticing compared to what he said, you know? Like I said, yeah. he, it's his job to make it sound a hell of a lot better than... Yeah, he's yeah. a guy who's going to become anti-Empire. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay. Five years. I have a five-year tranche of history to take care of. I have a five-year calendar. So I know what happens in those five years. I don't really have to spend very much time thinking about anything else. It's, and so I have to, those five years are canonically clear to me. Um, there's no question of the established atrocities and, and motivations of the empire, right? I mean, that's known. Yeah, man. Um, and we know, we know how, how bitter and horrifying and genocidal the battle will ultimately be. And how you know devastating it'll be to Alderaan and everything else. So you know all that. Um, but all that said, um, I do never start anything with an agenda. I start with characters and and I have my <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> well Isn't that brilliant? Now, now, if we had watched this yesterday, then I would have I wouldn't have known that he was a filthy liar, you see. Because I have it from the nerd way. I've heard I have a good on good authority. <laughs> You're not being true. <laughs> Oh, By the way, Tony, that oh, should be no. music to that other guy we covered's ears. The fact that he just said, <laughs> no, not interested in agenda, character first. Hmm. This quote didn't pop up anywhere. With an agenda. Hmm. I start with characters and, and I have my personal beliefs that I hope will, you know, in some way, uh, osmotically, you know, work their way through. But I don't ever think about, oh, I have an extra grind about this. I'm going to talk about this or... I didn't start Michael Clayton because I wanted to do a story about industrial, uh, <laughs> you know, industrial, uh, you know, atrocity. I started because I was like, oh, this guy was a fixer. And what happens to this guy? So I'm really interested in the characters. And, I, and I've learned over time that it works for me. And it's just what I'm interested in. I start very, very small. And I build my way out. Um, this is what we need. I'm <laughs> just saying. This is, this is a really good attitude. 100%. Not even just for Star Wars, just for, but, for but, writing. But, but Mola, how do you how do you respond to people who say like, but but no, but it is agenda informed. Even if he said this, well, th that's what we wanted. We wanted them to give examples. That was the mm. whole thing, and you can't do that. You fucking watched it. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult. <laughs> um, I know there's been a lot of you know there's a lot of political. I've been watching the you know the conversations. It's fascinating to watch all the conversations, but the show is you know engendered over the past couple months but um and i know the show there's all kinds of people that are trying to lay claim in different ways to the the politics of the show but you know to me i've been studying history just as an amateur as an idiot amateur you know a, a, a idiot a home a diy historian for years and you know 
there isn't anything in our show that hasn't been going on for 3,000 years. I mean, colonialism, yeah. slavery, oppression, mm -hmm. horror behavior, torture, whatever, it's all there. So the great thing about this show is you can sort of needle drop and, and do a, I could take, you know, we could take something from the Haitian Revolution, I could take something from here, take something from the, from the Russian Revolution. So that's all, that's the beauty of it. And that I think it's hilarious that he's pointed out that different people are trying to lay claim to it as like supporting their thing or whatever. That's it's just so fucking true with uh, any any story that is particularly well constructed. A lot of people will be like, don't you see? It proves my point. And you're like, no, it proves my point. But then you'll also get people being like, it supports like this it. awful thing that we hate, so we hate it. Like, oh. And meanwhile, it's just like, oh, yeah, I was just thinking about characters first and foremost. And yeah, and the, <laughs> sort of exploring their struggles. General explorations of different realities of human nature clashing is all you can ever really ask for. That's what we want from story. General Exploration was one of my favorite Star Wars characters. Yeah. Clone Wars. I really liked him. And that's, but my way in is really through character. What happens next to the people you care about and making you care about them? Um, thinking about your work, you know, from the cutting edge all the way up through uh, the board. I, I love the cutting edge. Just yeah, come FYI. on. Uh, that's a movie about revolution. But anyway, that's a great rom coms. I don't think that's been fully analyzed yet. I don't think there's I'm ready to write the piece. That's the episode. But but you know, like thinking about your work in that way, it's often these characters who find themselves for one reason or another in a context that they were not necessarily prepared for and now they have to make do with what they have you have the ice skater the you know the hockey player who now can no longer play hockey now has to do figure skating uh you have the spy who uh it, you know was brainwashed but now has their agency back and they're cut loose in the world uh in michael clayton you have a guy who's uh, you know the scales fall from his eyes he's a fixer for uh, much bigger figures and realizes he's caught between these two worlds of power and powerlessness and his morality. Um, looking at looking at Andor in that in that kind of context, I'm really struck by how it's uh, it, it seems like. And I know you say you don't you don't start with uh, you know with an age, with any kind of like agenda, but I wonder if you might say if you might talk about how you build a character and you know where this kind of character falls and the kind of characters that you've that you've that you've built in the past. I love cutting edge again. It's a great movie. <laughs> no, I mean, hopefully they're all unique. Say? I mean, every single one of them wants to be, you know, bespoke and and they want to be their own thing. I mean, I think that uh, I think I've come to believe over time that uh, that uh, the single most important part of this is empathy, and you really you have to be ridiculously em empathetic to all of the people that you're building. Um, mm -hmm. And very and really care about them. Doesn't matter if they're like Modoc, uh, Orson <laughs> Krennic, or 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 you know, or Doug Dorsey in the in in the cutting <laughs> you, gotta, like, you gotta get in there. You know, you gotta really live it with them, and you gotta really. So, um, I, I I don't have a holistic answer to that. I have a very personal. Every one of them is a little temple and they're all, you know, that makes it sound pretentious and bullshitty, but like, they're all, they're all real. To <laughs> I like him. <laughs> I kind of like him. Yeah. What, what's going to piss me off is if like you get all the people who make this shitty stuff, who get more and more and more jobs and this guy doesn't get anything else. That's going to piss me off, man. I mean, he's going to get season two, but who knows what that'll look like. And then who knows what happens after that. Um, I mean, hopefully it ends up. Be I mean, goddamn! I really hope it's good. It'd be nice to have like a a good complete a little oasis a yeah, storytelling. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Because Andor right now, it's like it's a little oasis, but it's incomplete, right? In a certain sense. Yeah, there's still a story pending. Yeah, and, and I'm sure he's fucking depressed about the fact that it's like, oh, my show's gonna be going down while Mando's already on its fourth season. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure, isn't it? Isn't Gilroy the one that said something along the lines of like you wanted to focus? I, there was another quote people were sending around where you wanted to focus on the characters rather than the recognizable aspects of things and stuff. Like I'm sure there was a quote from him, and there's ones from like James Gunn about how things have become really shit with how it's like recognizing elements instead of you know the heart, the character. It's really cool that he basically just said like. No matter what character he's dealing with, he's got to understand them. He's got to be like yeah. 
you know, work with them, walk with them, understand them, and put the work according to that. Because you know, I think that really comes across with the villains as well in Andor. So, you know, Partagas is probably one of the better yeah. recent villains, not just in Star Wars, but you know, across a lot of media. Partagas is. You, know, you you can tell that he's not just been put on screen because the screen needs a generic bad guy. This is a guy who is, you know, he's competent, intelligent. He has a goal. He has self-fulfillment. He has his own personal wants. He has his own ideological convictions and commitment. And that, that all comes across in his character, who is also, you know, very well performed. But you don't get that unless you're very committed to having empathy with all of your characters and not just, you know the conventional heroes of the piece otherwise you, you're just given stock villains and no one there's the problem with the recognizable aspects part versus the formation of new character if everyone just keeps making references back to recognizable things you're not going to get the next great villain in star wars because everyone is just sitting on the sofa drooling waiting for darth vader's next cameo it's about time somebody actually took the time to say yeah is... who would be the kind of person to head the isb this guy sounds interesting what can we do with him did, uh, i think that's did... one of the big problems that uh, Disney's kind of running into is that they're sort of they, they they're really getting to the end of all the fuel they can burn yeah with these live action sequels or remakes with the Star Wars shows they have they have created such so so little of actual value or merit or anything that's worth watching and they have constantly been roasting for fuel all of the old stuff that people really like that got them here um and I just don't, it just, it doesn't seem to be a sustainable thing. Um, it's, well, I, mean, I mean, you see it with the like MCU, told, like what do we have left from the golden age, so to speak? It's, it's, it's all gone, basically. I think that's a good point, because if you told somebody, you know, like, oh, uh, there's going to be Boba Fett season two, it's like, uh, you know, like, it's like, oh, shit, you've, you've kind of like, you've spent that card, Boba yeah, Fett, Fett is not mean useful anything to anymore. you anymore. On that, make a bunch of money. on that note, if I could just read this quickly, because I knew I'd read this somewhere, because you, uh, especially with Platoon, just mentioning um, Vader, right? It's like article Star Wars. How much will Hayden Christensen be in the Ahsoka show? Like, wait, fuck, what? What? Really? And then you're like, uh, with the uh, the announced cast including Rosario Dawson, Natasha, Louis Bordizo. I don't know. This is fine. Um, Dawson let it slip last year that Hayden Christensen would be reprising his role as Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker yet again. The question on fans' minds then is how much will we see him appear? Just like, fuck off. Man, I just don't care. Don't care. So done. Leave Vader alone. After Kenobi, it was, it was already way too much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it's Filoni! It's like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's Filoni, yeah. <laughs> I like the idea that they offered Vader to Gilroy, and he was like, nah, I'm alright, don't need it. God, do, you think, do you think that would piss everyone off, or do you think it would uh, play well? I don't know, at this point. Well, it would sure, play the nerd well way wasn't said. very. Uh, it would play well with it. us to know that he was offered to have Vader in the show, and he could have had whole scenes where Vader's like, hey, Partagaz, you'll do as I say, because I'm big and scary, and then Partagaz goes, yes, Mr. Vader, oh my jeez. But he, he well, turned it's kind it of down. interesting when people make that choice because that was James Gunn got offered everything and he chose to Suicide Squad, right? He could have done anything, but he got that one or he chose that one. It's like, huh, it's kind of interesting. Like that you would choose something that doesn't seem like the obvious choice, you know, like Superman or, or in the case of Star Wars, like, yeah, Darth Vader or Boba Fett or, you know, Obi Wan. Well, yeah, and we've talked about how it's funny how it gets you to a point of would you prefer to take it so that you can at least kind of do something with it where everyone else is doing bullshit but simultaneously it's like no just do whatever you want also i see chat like froze for a long time there i don't know if i was uh everything's still running everything okay um where is chat no, is he safe is, is it in right? chat all right <laughs> seems think, to be working okay i think yeah, we're okay yeah i okay. just pulled up yeah it looks like it's fine all righty just checking to me and and uh and they all, they couldn't sound like anybody other than themselves. And I think you can always tell that when you read someone's writing, you know, if you read a writer and mm. if the, all the characters sort of sound the same, or if someone's IQ goes up and down based on what the, they want the story to do or whatever. You know, oh, yes. Really Thank like you so guys, much for guys that. come on. Jeez. This is, look at that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. It's, man, you're preaching to the choir here at EFAP, man. <laughs> oh, geez. Thank you. Oh. Whoa. 
Like, that's the entirety of some television It's shows. funny, because we'll be like, well, that's just basic, isn't it? It's like, when do you ever hear this from anyone? <laughs> Who's, like, like, higher up in fucking any of these things? Do all the characters sort of sound the same? Or if someone's IQ goes up and down based on what the, they want the story to do or whatever, then you know you're with somebody who's not maybe... Maybe not, uh, uh, not, not sticking to the rigor of that. Good writing. Oh, that's, that's very Not sticking to the rigor of that. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> diplomatic answer. They're not that's one okay. of them rigor stickers. Oh. That's a way to put it. Where the writers are invested in the people so much that they could only do what they do. Yeah, and something oh. that I found like really unique as from a writing standpoint of Andrew is this choice of the arcs. And kind of telling these small stories within the... You just wish you could be there to ask a question, don't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. It's like, shut the fuck up. I want to ask proper questions. <laughs> Bigger kind of... You know, uh, what, Mr. Gilroy, when you said uh, lacking vigor, or, or, or can we can we expand? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Did you have somebody in mind? What do you think is examples. the... <laughs> yeah, what names. do you think is like the biggest problem facing writing today? Or what do you think is the worst element of writing and storytelling that seems to be pervasive within the uh, the, the general storytelling community, let's call it? Uh, you know, like, come on, man. I feel like there's there's a part of Tony that wants to be like, oh, they all suck. They're terrible. We almost want to bait him and be like, the one thing I think your show really is missing is uh, good old Vader. Are you going to bring him in? <laughs> About time, don't you think? When are we? Yeah, when are we seeing Darth Vader? Are we gonna see his red lightsaber? Is it gonna glow? Is it gonna go? Well, <laughs> Mandalorian crossover. We all want that. Season. Could you talk a little bit about that choice and kind of the why that felt like the best route to go? Well, a lot of people do. You know, I mean, when we started out there with people. I remember, you know, it used to be a. I, I, I dip my toe into television over the last 20, 30 years and network television a couple of times, tried to do things. And the, the, the dictum always was, oh, your first episode has to be your 20th episode. Or your first episode has to be your fifth episode. <laughs> I mean, that was really what the, the old system was. And then, you know, and then you move into a more, you know, as the stories have gotten more uh, uh, long term and, and, you know, and, 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 and more complicated, there's a different kind of structure for how they work. Um, but I don't think that there's any clear... I think everybody's doing everything for the first time now in, in many ways. I think we're just at the frontier of streaming and we're watching these huge shows. I mean, these are the beginning of something really new. Um, I don't think there's any rule um, about what to do. And the way our show laid out, it was like, well, coincidentally, directors direct three episodes for us. The directors come in and they direct a block of three. So it sort of became a weird organizing principle in its own way. Mm. And you kind of lean into it a little bit. We're not perfect because you see in seven we drop, but seven is a standalone mm -hmm. episode, mm -hmm. and then eight, nine, and ten, and then our last two episodes will be sort of of a piece a little bit, I guess. I did think that was weird because I was told it was three, 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 but it's three, three, one, three, four, two. two. If it, yeah, because right. the thing about it is I consider it three, three, four, two, but you, I could, I could see the argument for how because like uh, seven ends with them going to the prison, like well, it's kind of like the prison yeah, often, and yeah. it's like yeah, leads into it. We're not, I don't think we're like, we're not, you know, it's not, it's not this rigorous, strict thing. It's kind of the way it laid out and kind of the way it worked for the directors. And, um, and I think that there are no rules. I think the main rule is, do you want to see what happens next? That's really, yeah. yeah. That's the only rule that matters, right? Yeah. I, I, well, you you mentioned dipping your toe in TV before. Obviously, this is a, a, a TV uh, property. You've moved from screenwriting to directing, and now you're a showrunner working with directors. What's that transition been like, and how does it change your perspective? I want to ask you more writing questions. Yeah, <laughs> I, the, uh, yeah. Interesting. What does it What does it mean to shift from uh, like strictly writing to basically running like a whole production with mm -hmm. a bunch of different people? Active as a person who's telling stories. Yeah, I'll talk about that. I want to talk about the directing thing because that's an old story for yeah. me, but. The show yeah. running thing is fascinating because I was going to direct the first three episodes of this and I was like, okay, that's what I'm here for and I'll do this yeah. and then I'll get them. And then, you know, you realize what the gig is and it was just incredibly naive and, and COVID really saved our show because we got, we got completely shut down and just everything just went on hold for six or seven months and then I couldn't come back to London. I didn't want to come back to London and direct in the midst there was no vaccine or anything like that at that point. 
And uh, it just turned into like, okay, let's, and I started rewriting my episodes and rewriting everybody else's episodes and tuning everything up and, and um, came time to hire directors. And it's, I've never. I don't understand how that happened when Michael Waldron said in the behind the scenes for Doctor Strange 2 that COVID made them throw out the script. I've but heard he, so many times uh, that COVID is an excuse for bad productions throughout well, 2022. I think, uh, I'm guessing that in his case, what's happened is like it it happened, production got delayed, that gave us more time to write. Well, yeah, no, that's Whereas what he said. Imagine, it's just the. I guess what I imagine is the case for like other productions is it happened and then the production shifted dramatically to where like certain things became uh, less feasible to impossible. Mm hmm. That would be my guess. Um, that like the script can't work because there's locations that you don't have access to anymore or the schedules of actors have changed to a point that's really disruptive, maybe? Maybe that'd be what they'd be appealing to? If you remember the, um, the quote directly, and it was really funny because it, it's the way I delivered it in the uh, Doctor Strange 2 video as well, and like I remember chat being like shocked at the first piece of information that it kept getting worse, so Michael Waldron says he was phoned and he had three weeks to make the script. Which is already just like already, fucking hell. Already three weeks. You when know, they're enough time, three weeks to write a whole screenplay. Fuck. Yeah. Then and he, he was found like, out. Fuck it. I'll just use. I'll just take an afternoon. Whatever. Our Hot Fuzz, by the way. I'm pretty sure Hot Fuzz took 18 months to write. By it comparison. Shows. It shows. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. Th th then he goes on to say, uh, the he got cut down by a week. He only had two. It wasn't three in reality. And it's just like fucking hell. Then you find out that he completes it in the two, whatever the hell it was. And uh, COVID hit, and then everything got thrown out. Everything was on pause, and that script got thrown out. And he said that that script was definitely worse than the one that I came up with once I came well, back, and I they mean, were he already has to filming. Say that, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But he came up with a script while they were filming, and it feels like, in retrospect, it's like, are you are you not telling me the truth? Which is that your script prior was useless because they weren't going to build the film based on it. They were instead going to build something. And then they needed you to bind it all together into some kind of story when you get here. Like in terms of Which sets, of course, costumes, like... and events. They just knew stuff was going to happen. They didn't. It's not their job to be concerned with how they connect. It's that's your job. Which, is that uh, wild? yeah, which is a fucking that's like insane. that just seems like a really shit way to do it. Especially Absolutely. when you consider all the hundreds of millions of dollars that will go into the production, and they're just like, uh, just figure it out. You just kind of make it all work together. And I'm like, holy shit! Like none of you, like it's the attitude of no, no one who makes these decisions. I'm like, yeah, this is just this is Disney's money. It's not my money. Fuck it, it is. It's it's just kind of uh, it's kind of gross, isn't it? The lack of respect for writing that is on display with that kind of approach. Yeah, this to, is like like filmmaking of it's art. It's just, I think writing's super important, and so it's just really lame when it's that sort of attitude seems to be saying, well, ah, fuck it, you know, we'll fucking figure it out. Like, that, it's not like that's the most, it's not like we need the fucking scripts to, like, even know what the story is, because the story boiled down to its basics is the shit you write down on the page that people say and do. Yeah, and, and you have this unprecedented position in human civilization with your level of you know, the power <laughs> yeah, that you life. have to create not just the kind of art that you can create with the technology and the budget but how instantly it can catch on in culture and expand is like it's just it's never been like this before and you're essentially the you are the the wet dream of anybody who just aspires to create you know influential cultural iconography or just just is anything really and they're just pissing it away no one respects what they have um from what i gather quantum mania had the same thing as uh mom in terms of it was written as it was being filmed and the one thing i still don't quite grasp right i get how difficult it would be to even have a good you know quote unquote screenplay when you're coming in as it's being filmed you have to bind everything together but the thing i don't get and some people mentioned this in chat is like Whenever there's jokes, or at least you you know that broadly the film is going to have, let's say, for example, Kang and Ant-Man are going to fight, or that Doctor Strange will give some kind of speech to America Chavez that's going to, like, you know something broad like that, you can work on that while you're out, while you're waiting, you know? You can yeah, tool away with it. Yeah, you have an idea, you could write it down, you could sit down with someone, and they're like, back and forth, like, I'll be her, and yeah, you, I'll be me, and we'll, let's have a conference back and forth, and we'll we'll tighten this up. Like, you could... Like, you could give a shit. It's not you can't work on... Like, that moment where he was sent away for two weeks or whatever until he was asked to come back and then restart. Like, you could still have had, like, my note sheet and it has a bunch of, you know, generic jokes that apply to Doctor Strange or... Because um, 
he must have known broadly what was going to happen. It, Michael Waldron claims that he's the reason why w w uh, Wanda's the villain in that film. Apparently that was yeah. what he wanted. So it's like, so you must, that's a lot of control. That's not, that's not nothing. That changes everything. So yeah, um, it, it, you know, it's interesting to compare that then to this, where he's like, COVID hits, and I took the time to just rewrite and retool and tweak all the scripts to better be tighter. It's just like, wow. I mean, as you would write instead of just sitting on your ass. As like, you would hope people would do. The story. Yeah. We've, we've talked about it before, but it's just one of the easiest things. If you have all of them lined up, all 12 episodes, then you're like, oh man, when this part happens in episode 12, it would mean a lot more if maybe a character mentions this sort of concept back in episode 1. Is there anywhere I can put that? It's like, oh, kind of here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Now it's this yeah. big callback that means a lot more and shows what I'm trying to say. It's like, oh wow, look at that. Redrafting everybody. The funny thing is, of course, it's like, what's the point in extolling the virtue of fucking redrafting if you don't even draft? Well, or I guess if you have to redraft 33 times. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't even see no, that I point. don't even think that constitutes redrafting that feels like it's not it's not like re it's like the script there's not one full script at that point it's not like a document beginning to end it's like some segmented like set of notes at that point it seems back as before and that's a really that's a really fascinating I, I didn't take it quite as seriously in the beginning as I, I think I thought it would be easier it's very very difficult you have to watch lots of stuff incredible amount of stuff you have to find a way to parse your way through it um there's an incredible amount of competition between shows because there's so many shows it's really, yeah. really hard to get directors and it's really there's a limited is the implication there that he was watching other shows to find directors because that's interesting as well Maybe? probably a, in mm -hmm. the plus column again it getting familiar with the means, people who yeah. make the thing you're going to be writing or he hard might to find be, directors might i better be watch shows to find directors it might be the sheer amount of footage he had to review as well, maybe, like on any given day, right? Yeah. After you shoot, you review what you've done, figure out what you keep, in, and, then, and then, like, going through the editing process, maybe that. That's what the number of directors about. who have, you know, we need directors who have a certain amount of flight time. You know, you can't, it's, this is like flying a 747, you can't just get to it. So we have a different criteria than they had to be. Fuck it, just give it to anyone at this point. Was, just it's like, shit. very... <laughs> Things are so bad. Unanticipatedly Steve, difficult. you do it. We lucked out the first time around. I think we've lucked out this time around. We have uh, we have three new directors that are coming back for this for this uh, the second half. We start shooting in November. But, um, man, it's... it's. I'll tell you one thing. It's it, The competition is really, really tough mm -hmm. to find people that... Not to find... If you have a smaller show... Well, you could swing away and be loose, you yeah. know, kind of thing, but you can't figure out how to do this show on the job. Not, not <laughs> I love that. It's so weird. <laughs> it's yeah. It's so funny. Like, We've got to organize like everything and get it all scheduled to make sure everything's right. Then there's fucking cloud marvel over there just being like, wow, well, let's just do it all as we go. And I say that as if it's not applicable to Star Wars shows, too. That's obviously what Boba Fett and Kenobi did. On the fly, do whatever. Yeah, just scraping it together. Yeah. Yeah, right, it's just, it's just it's yeah. just like too yeah. many people have just drowned. So the 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 Venn diagram of what you're looking for, it's a very and then everybody's after the same people. So it's very tricky that. And it was the such a like long like you talked about, you know, being shut down by COVID, this new experience of a showrunner searching for these directors. How did it, and obviously the nature of filming a show like this is very different to a smaller film or a smaller show. How did it feel? once you started to see the fully finished episodes and kind of see the end of that first part of the journey of making the first season? Well, I mean, quite honestly, I have to, I mean, I've been on it for three years now and in the middle of it, you know, I, I'll be honest, you're just wondering what did I do to my life? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, and I mean, seriously, is it worth it? I mean, waking mm -hmm. up many, many days going like, what have I done? I could be doing anything I want to do. I mm -hmm. could be doing a bright and a play. I could make a movie. Yeah. I could, what am I doing? What did I do to my life? Is it worth it? And it really, really wasn't until, you know, about a year ago. Yeah, I wonder how much like Michael Waldron and people like that, like really look back at their work and go, man, that's something to be proud of. I made Multiverse of Mad. I wrote Multiverse of Madness. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? I wrote Loki. These are just such incredible, you know, stories. And I really was able to, I show my talent. This is some really good stuff here, and I can be proud of this for years to come. I, was, I don't know, or, or do they just treat it like, yeah, it's a job. You know, I got paid. I showed up. I did the work, and 
you know, the movie got made and, you know, I'm still here. So, you know, that's good. Yeah. How much do you really care? You know, how much really goes Wait, into it? It's kind of interesting. If I were the interviewers here, um, the two that he's repeated this what like three times like is it worth it i uh i would not be laughing at this point i'd be waiting for him to finish and then i'd be like um you know is that something that you consider to be integral to when yeah. you choose a project it has to mean something it has to become something and you have to see that that you know is a potential because it sounds very serious to him and it's funny you bring up michael waldron i was going to do it in a different way i was going to be like do you think he's ever had the thought like oh look at all this time and effort that i've put into this is it going to be worth it it's like i doubt it right because he's brought on They'll be filming, and you'll be fucking around, maybe write some jokes here and there, but briefly write some form of a connecting scene. It's like, yeah, Doctor Strange, he falls into a portal, and now he's in New York City, but it's not the same one, it's got flowers. And then he goes to the Sanctum Sanctorum, and then he gets captured, now he's in the Illuminati. That's the next set they're doing. I have no idea what's going to happen in the third act, they just have to tell me what sets we've got, and then I'll figure something out. You know, and, and how long does that even take as a process? Is it? It's done so quickly, yeah, it would be stressful. But it's going to be done relatively quick compared to this guy who's spending three years doing a season of TV when he could have done, theoretically, like several, maybe episodes of different TV shows or a film or, you know, and, and it's like, oh, wow, that's so much more interesting to explore compared to Michael, who probably, be like, I feel bad shit on him so much, but like, it's, I mean, is it, he made one of the worst scripts in history, but theoretically, it's not even a script. It's just, a, you know, a bunch of random thoughts trying to piece something together. The uh, the disparate nature of the approach of the work ethic here is insane, and um, they're under the umbrella, both of them, of Disney. He sounds like he actually cares about the creative process and making something that you know he could be proud of, and that means something. And it's like, yeah, it's like a night and day difference. Go uh, when we really did start to put the episodes together in a, in a kind of way that we could actually sort of and solve some of the you know really. Some of the visual effects started coming in. We started to do stuff. And my brother, John, is sort of the over the post-production overlord. And he was, <laughs> and so, you know, once the show started to come together and we could look at them in a whole piece and have other people outside of our little tiny community look at them, it started to be like, oh, my God, maybe this was really worth it. And yeah. uh, that that's the feeling more than anything else of like, oh, my God, I haven't wasted the last three years. Because it really, there's times along the way where you, you could get on a movie you could be on a movie and you could hate the people that you're in business with, or you could, whatever, you could survive it. Now, there's so many questions I want to ask this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, so you, like we got to this because it's, um, it's just interesting to hear him basically be this honest about the amount of doubt that he had in, in yeah. the thing that he was creating, of like earnestly, seriously wondering, like, what the fuck am I making here? Like, what am I doing? What's the point of all this? Only to eventually come out on the other side with something that's super worthwhile and valuable. Now it seems making a movie seems like nothing to me now. Mm -hmm. This is like you're just oh my god I'm on a whaling version a, a whaling <laughs> mission <laughs> I'm in Papa Eighty and how am I ever going to get back to to Nantucket you know yeah <laughs> well Tony you've, you've, uh, you've made something really well, really what's, what's up Rags how you doing uh, we're big fans nothing, of your work funny. and congratulations <laughs> on the show uh, we can't wait to see how it ends all right man. Thank, thank, so so thank you so much this was cool thank, thank yeah, you yeah. thank you. Well, God, go. if I could get him yep. on or like a writer or something like this on, I'd be like, oh, shit, like, guys, we're going to have to like, we got to think of some really like what questions has easy probably sick of answering. We're not going to answer him. Ask him those. Where do you get your yeah, ideas kinda, from? Where do you get your ideas from? So this thing you're making is like it's a TV show, right? What's that like? What, is, what <laughs> does television mean to you? What do you uh, do? Are we gonna see any voodoo hide in season two? I certainly <laughs> hope so. More? Oh man! But yeah, I just uh... man, that was interesting. It was. Yeah, what a really what a, what a cool dude! I hope. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I hope he gets something really cool to work on next. Because obviously, um, I mean, cross the fingers that Andor season two is good, and when it ends, everybody's like, "Wow, that's an you know incredible." Oh, and it, oh, has this legacy, oh, but uh, you gotta put that up. I'm you, me. I get the thing. <laughs> 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 Crack a pizza. Look, look at look at him. Okay. Oh, I got, I got a little. They don't put the crack. Let's be clear. They don't put the crackers <laughs> on the pizza. 
<laughs> the crackers are in a separate pack. They're like saltine, little square saltines that are often brought with or given freely to people, like on the side. Just so we're clear, like a little plastic packet. Like the kind of thing they'd give you at like, you know, like a pizza place that also makes salads. Like they would they would give you those and they just get they just hand them out. They just hand out crackers. It's just so at, weird. We don't that get that. We get dip at best and that's it. You have to order chips separately. Uh, I like how mad Rags is like mad both in terms of anger and losing his mind. I, like, I, I like am drinker. not losing my mind. My mind is secure. I am stalwart <laughs> in my in my grasp on reality. Okay. All right, what I think Fringy saying? looks the most stalwart in this. You know, he's got it. He knows what's up. He's determined I, I the up. truth. Yeah. Where um, where in, in that very far, accurate right? artist depiction of the scene? Where in that pizza box are the chips? Oh, they're, they're on the. You say they're on the, the pizza. crackers. See, the crackers, the crackers even. Sorry, yes. Pizza. Yeah, you can see them. Yeah, they are. They're on yeah, the they're pizza. on the pizza. What I do you think, though? A, I thought they were in a separate box. You said that's what I'm. No, they're not that's in what a he's separate saying, box. We're making they're in, fun of them. <laughs> listen, they're not on the pizza. They come with it, but not on it in their own little little plastic, you know, packaging like you, you know, like saltines do. No, but okay. <laughs> Look, Drinker's convinced, I think. Yeah, Drinker's buying it. It's a little tipsy, that's all. He knows what's up. Um, and there. so, I guess closes our wonderful adventure through Andor. That, that was uh, not exactly 100% expected, but I was always interested in talking about, um, you know, its, its role in the middle of Star Wars, and this will be a nice run-up to when we eventually get Season 2. Hopefully, yeah. it'll be good. Fingers crossed. I hope Fingers so too. Fingers crossed. Was, really it, was, be... was what he was saying in that interview regarding season two? Because he said the second it's half. Part two, didn't he? Yeah. I'm guessing it's season two. Yeah. So yeah, I hope so. And uh, I hope that what was implied by what he said was that he got. He said he got lucky again with the the teams he's managed to draw together for it. So. Though I guess he won't have as much time to do the script this time. Maybe. Uh, Unless unless we get the another COVID. What the, yeah, who knows what the process will be for that. I don't know. Um, How do yeah. we get to that end point that we want if, you know, we don't have as many seasons to do it? What do we leave behind? What and when when will we get Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 2 and Book of Boba Fett Season 2? We have to, we gotta see Boba Fett and lightsabers and flashbacks with Hayden Christensen and, uh, we got to see Pooh Kloon uh, and Yaddle jumping around. Uh, this is drawn by Beowin, yeah. by the way. Frank is curious. Yeah. The style right. is very clear and gorgeous. Pizza, mm -hmm. pizza. I um, like pizza. On that note, that draws us to the end of this wonderful oh EFAB. Uh, as as is the now going to be the style going forward. I've mentioned it a couple of times, but it's pretty much going to be the way that we do it is the. Wednesdays will just be the episode or an episode super chats, and I'm thinking we might even be able to maybe combo up the episodes memes into that as well. That might actually sort out our hmm. problem of running behind okay. on memes. That would make some sense because most of the memes will have come out by then, so that when we record, you know, I was thinking eh, we're kind of breaks it up, and um, it gives us more time to uh, be able to cool down and recharge between each of everything that happens. Um, yep, because we're still. Four hours is still a long podcast, damn you. It is. It, <laughs> it is, is a four-hour podcast. That was, that was four hours. And you're here like, it's short. It needs to be ten. We did that. That was very long. How long have you guys been doing those B-Sup episodes? What's your average on them? Um, uh, I don't know. I think the average is probably between three and four. The longest is five. The mm. shortest is probably three. I was not on the longest, sad face. Sad, no. I think that it did prove to be the longest, but we just ended up going off the rails with Super Chats after you left, so that was the longest episode. You were on the longest episode, but you were not present for the long part of it. Yeah, oh. I think that, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm figuring it out still in my head, I think. Sorry, I was vaguely distracted by it. Gilroy said he stepped away from Handel because of the strike. It's like, that wouldn't surprise me. He'd probably stand with the strike and stuff. Uh, I mean, he's clearly very writing-focused, so. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. 
he's gonna talk about how they need to, you know, get better pay and all that sort of stuff. Like, like I said, I don't know the exact specifics of how much each person is being paid or whether or not there's right things going on, but I know that the actors are considering or have gotten involved in striking as well. Hollywood's a bit of a mess. So, um, yeah, Andor's probably on pause Pick for now. Pick it up. Do something. You gotta do better, it. as Falcon would tell them. You gotta do better, Hollywood. Um, but yeah, by the way, I, I, I don't know enough about Tony Gilroy to say how much I, you know, like him as not only from his work or everything that he says, I'm just saying from what we've seen in that interview, he seemed pretty cool. And yeah, he seemed like a cool Andor guy. Well. I'd have a, I think there's a lot of cool questions you could ask him, and he seems like the kind of person where you'd really want to see what he thinks behind clothes, you know, like private conversation, like, man, like, between you and me, like, just tell me everything that I think, that I suspect you want to get off your chest. God, yeah. You can imagine some of the stuff you might be able to uh, get out of him. You don't have to name names, Tony. <laughs> Just name say. Names. Name names and shows. Name them. Uh, all right. Do it. So, before we head out, Little Platoon, thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell chat what you've been up to? What have, what have you been making lately? I know what you've been making lately because I've watched it. It's your uh, uh, Peter Pan video where you savaged that innocent film. <laughs> yeah yeah oh god that was an absolute nightmare with copyright that that should have been out two weeks before it was out oh, i spent god. two weeks trying to get past copyright it claimed four second clips and blocked them it claimed two three second clips as one full clip and blocked those and in the end i thought sorry i'd appealed the weeks before and so that went up in the end um so that was an adventure it was only supposed to be a short little side thing but um you know yeah the next one is going to be i've been on a disney binge so the little mermaid has come out i saw that yesterday mm. um which meant I had to rewatch the original, which I don't really like a huge amount anyway. But I also got to reread the fairy tale, which I do like. Uh, so um, well, that it, is it's not up for release, I think, next Monday. Um, and then I have a huge backlog of stuff because I still need to do Guardians at some point and Mando Part Two as well at some point. So there's a lot of stuff coming. Uh -oh. And then we do Beast Up live every Monday night. So plenty of stuff coming. But thank you for having me on again. It's always great fun. Always a pleasure to have you. Well, uh, what was mm -hmm. um. I remember you, you had one of the more controversial Guardians takes, didn't you? Is that going to reflect the video? I think so. I mean, it's... it's. I, I want to re-watch it just to confirm a few things, but essentially that film is that there's one very strong arc within it. The rest of the film is just a hodgepodge mess of various things that should probably have been separated out into at least one or two more films. And it felt a bit sort of perfunctory and played as safely as possible, really. Like... This has happened before. This is a Guardian's bit. This bit must be in because, hey, why the hell not? Um, so I like the Rocket stuff, but the rest of it is, yeah, subpar. Alrighty. Uh, well, again, thank you so much for, for joining us and for giving your insights on all thank things you. and or and otherwise. Um, Rags, Fringy, anything you wanted to say before we close out? Um, suppose not. Just kind of working on some stuff in the back. Hopefully I'll have some things out soon. Smaller things, uh, probably before the big thing. And then we'll see what happens after that. But, uh, yeah, progress is getting made. So every day is a day closer to when it's finished. Um. Yeah, you, you know the deal. I'm just working. <laughs> yeah, I like to try and find something to give as a form of an update. But the, the, the grand update is just, you'll like it when it's done. And uh, it, it's it's be there's a thing being worked on, and it's it's long and takes a lot. It's just every day at this point, uh, and the so grind. the grind indeed. Um, you know, and we love doing uh, EFAP related things, and you're going to be getting a lot more of them as time goes on as well. Uh, yeah. The it's a fucking horror right now. There are because I, I don't mind saying this, totally fine. There are four EFAP movies and. Um, the supercut of Mando. I'm cycling them all. I put them in. YouTube says, no, I don't like this part. And I'm like, cool. Sort out. Put it back in. Then it's like, no, I don't like this part. Literally rendering, uploading, back and forth, over and over and over again. And some of them, oh, do I love it when they, they say, it's fine. It's good. And then a week later, they're like, I don't like this part. And it's like, oh, cool. Now, these are videos, uh. some of them, that you might not even see for a fucking year. But this is happening. It's annoying as hell. And I'm just working while it's getting done. There's so much EFAP content you would have seen by now if, you know, not for the copyright system, as uh, Platoon was just saying. It's a fucking nightmare. Mm. And it's almost randomly a nightmare. You can't fully learn it. 
you'll always get caught up with random shit where it's just like, oh, we've it's changed our like, minds. This is a rule now. And it's like, yeah, oh. like, tell me what the fucking rules are. I was like, I might obey them if I knew <laughs> what they were. So, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the hope was to get the supercut out before starting to release Gotham Knights, which, uh, frankly, will just give more time to the editor to be able to get them done as well. So there's more stuff that's on the way, but it's starting to look like this year will be more of a prep year for a lot of stuff while I'm getting copyright sorted, and then everything will be ready to shoot out to you guys in a more consistent way. And we'll be looking back at now being maybe a time where less, you know, things came out in terms of uh, frequency, but that plenty of fun, because they did get the Wings Boogie thing, all right? That, that, that was the thing that happened, and all of Mandalorian. That was, that, that was a historic occasion, yeah. So, um, like I said, work is constantly being done to try and get stuff done. Um, the, the famed war movie arc, it's happening. It's getting there. And the part of what I'm referring to in terms of this copyright stuff is all of that. We're getting there, folks. And what a wonderful time it'll be when I can release to you perhaps a trailer that will show you everything that we've got coming. But it's, it's really funny because I can't imagine what it would be like to be a viewer sometimes with, like, they'll hear from Gary or from Drinker, or from Az, or from J Longbone, or whatever. It's like, oh yeah, I watched Thingy last night with the EFAP guys recorded. It's like, Jesus Christ, how many fucking EFAP movies have been recorded? It's like, you don't want to know. But they're coming. They're all coming. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a thing to enjoy, I am certain of it. And meanwhile, of course, mainline stuff is gonna be happening too. So, hang in there, and uh, I suppose we'll see you in the next EFAP-related thing, if not other streams. Who knows yeah. what will happen next? Yeah. How um, exciting. Yes. On that note, everyone, we shall see you next time. Toodle peep. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. See you later. Boy.